One fine day in the train station, citizens were busy on their own. Some are waiting for their stop and some just wanted to cross the train trail. The lights turn green. It's a cue for the people to cross the train trail and the first one to cross is the woman with her baby. As they crossed, the train suddenly had a malfunction on its brakes so that it wouldn't stop running. The train lost its controls that the passengers start jumping off the train and screams for help. People cannot hear the train engineer but observe that the train won't stop. They panicked and immediately ran away from the trail, and everyone yelled and screamed to run so that people near the trail were aware of the danger. The woman panics while pulling her baby's stroll as hard as she can, she begs for help. But people can't do anything about it but yell that she must get away. They want to help the mother but seemed like they don't want to die from a horrendous accident. Then a mysterious man behind the crowd instantly disappeared out of nowhere. The mysterious man surprisingly stood on the trail to save the crying mother trying her best to protect her baby. The mysterious man blocked the train with his bare hands. That the cars start crashing each other from the mysterious man's unbelievable strength. The mother heard a crash and felt a strong wind while holding her baby thinking that this could be the last breath of her and her child. The mother peeked and was speechless to see that she and her baby is okay and was saved from a horrible accident. He saw a man standing in front of her. The mysterious man helped the mother to stand up and check up on her if she's alright. The mother was mesmerized and thankful. As the mother stands up while holding her baby, both the mother and child backs down like they saw something horrifying. Turns out the mysterious man has a face of a skull. The mother and child were terrified thinking that death has come for them. If you found this video interesting don't forget to like comment and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. In the mysterious man's place, he woke up to start his daily routine. His name is Zombie. Zom from Zombie and Bai from Zombie. Apparently, he doesn't know his real name. He doesn't know how old he is nor when did he die. But even though he looks scary and looked like death, he has a dream. He dreamed that he could become friends with the humans. He dreamed that one day he wouldn't be discriminated against and ostracized by people. With his dream in mind, Zombie continued to improve himself although it is impossible with his appearance. But Zombie believed that as long as he works hard, he will succeed. He believes that to make his dreams possible he has to help countless humans just by doing a lot of heroic acts like he did on the train trail. Like one time when a plane was about to crash a football stadium, he carries the weight of the plane on his shoulders to avoid crash, but people was distracted to see Zombie's good deed because of his looks. And also, that one time when a fire occurs in a condominium. Parents were crying for help that her children are still inside the building. Zombie saved the kids and as for the firefighter, and the parents, they had the same reaction as the people in the football stadium because of Zombie's looks. Back to Zombie's daily routine. He isn't actually originally strong as he remembers. Before Zombie became the way he is, on one summer a zombie outbreak caused an apocalypse and the city looks severely polluted. Zombie was studying in school at that time. But since the outbreak happened too suddenly, Zombie didn't get the chance to escape and got bitten. Zombie then became an ordinary zombie. A completely ordinary zombie. The ones people see in the mob, wandering around and don't have a mind of its own and are always hungry for human meat and blood. Until one day, humans began to appear. The humans didn't talk reason. It appears that an army and survivalist pointed a bunch of guns and missiles to a mob of zombies. Not only did the humans burn the zombies for fuel, but the Humas also created a perpetual energy machine by exploiting the zombies. The zombies became the source of electricity. Zombie didn't know why the zombies want to eat humans or why do humans want to kill zombie. Back then, in order for zombie to survive he must change his lifestyle. Zombie began training from that day on. He lifted weights, ran, swam and jumped around every day. An independent life starts with their own efforts. Zombie didn't eat meat and only ate protein powder for three meals a day. Although Zombie was tired, he continued to train even at night. Until one day, Zombie became strong and buffed, he was almost invincible. After Zombie obtained both power and knowledge, he decided to live in the budding human society. He continuously helped them to change humans' perception of Zombie. Zombie wanted to live as a civilized, law-abiding, and good Zombie. Back to Zombie's daily routine. It appears that he ran out of food as he opened the fridge and thought of shopping to stack his fridge. One sunny day, in Yi Hao's supermarket where Zombie buys his food. The nice, lovely cashier asks Zombie if he's uncomfortable wearing a mask all day. It seems like they have no idea with Zombie's identity. The cashier ordered the employees to help Zombie move items onto the truck. It appears that Zombie didn't just buy dozens of eggs but a whole stock like he owns an egg market. Zombie's minding his own lovely day buying a large number of eggs while being stalked by two guys behind the bush. The two men sulks with their intention to take Zombie's mask off out of their curiosity to see who's under it. 
The stalkers observed Zombie thoroughly even after Zombie finished his errands. Zombie frowns as he stares at the piece of paper he's holding. It appears that the wanted man in the poster is someone he knew named Agu. The poster indicates that Agu's danger level is SSS it means he's somewhat an S-tier zombie or should we say a boss level zombie. His bounty is 9,999,226 yen. Back at the stalkers, it looks like they started searching and stalked zombie when he lifted an entire airplane in the football field before. The cameraman had doubts that they might have been scammed by the media. The other guy with a mustache just agrees with the cameraman although he's still focused on zombie like he couldn't get his eyes off him. But the guy with the mustache acknowledged the cameraman all of a sudden and thought of the possibility that the media might be overhyping it. So even if the chances were wrong or not, the stalkers took a risk and followed zombie to find out and feed their curiosity. The stalkers distracted by talking to each other, and when they get back on their job, their eyes were about to pop in shock. Witnessing zombie's super strength as he lifts up the truck so easily. The ground cracked as he lifts off flying with the truck like he's Superman. The stalker stares at the blue sky in shock and confused at the same time when Zombie flew away with the truck. Zombie flew so high that he went outer space and even the astronauts inside the spaceship were confused. In an abandoned place somewhat restricted, has a citizen of zombies that lives there. But it appears that they have a mind of their own, they're not a typical brain-dead zombie. They have feelings and they don't speak gibberish. In the abandoned city, the zombies were hungry so that a child zombie complained about his hunger to his mother but the mother had no choice but to tell her son to endure it for a while. That night, Zombie appears in the night sky of the abandoned city all of a sudden with the truck he bought earlier in the supermarket. Zombie landed on his feet with the truck. The citizen of Zombies got his attention and calls him the king of their own kind. A child nervously suggests that their majesty Zombie should have just drove the truck to their abandoned city just like how the humans do. But Zombie replied that he doesn't have a driver's license, and the kids looked like they just gained knowledge about the outside world. The abandoned place is a city that Zombie conquered. It's far far away from the prying eyes of the humans. Zombie ordered all of his kind in the abandoned place to use egg to replace the protein they get from eating human flesh. The citizens of Zombies began to feast on the eggs that Zombie bought. Then Zombie asked the child about Agu and the rest's whereabouts. The child pointed at the hotel's main of the abandoned city. Zombie then went inside the hotel's main to meet the rest of the zombies who appeared to be powerful like Zombie. The zombie met with his kind who seems to be one of the leaders in their town. They look like mythical high-level and intimidating creatures. They are Lang, Fur, Agan, Agu the guy in the wanted poster that zombie saw earlier, Varmint and Blackie. They equally have a boss-level zombie with a danger level of SSS. A level considered to be an S-tier level, or should we say they are seen as the boss zombie. Zombie entered the room. He appeared to be the smallest kind among them but he was treated with respect as they call him their majesty. Zombie then walked past them with disappointment for Agu who committed a heinous crime against human. Agu apologizes since he loses his control whenever he sees a human being like a predator hunting its prey. Zombie sat on the couch but looked like a king who sat on their throne casually. Zombie's intention for his arrival is to not only feed his people but to also hear some reports from his henchmen. Blackie then comes forward to report some issues he gathered that they are steadily increasing their numbers but to hide from the humans, they had to change their base multiple times. Varmint cuts the conversation and adds his vicious determinate intention to just battle the humans then reasoned out that his chainsaw has begun to rust from not having fresh blood for so long. Zombie lectures Varmint to not be naive since humans can be terrifying. The boss zombies were busy with their meeting until they heard a plane flying near their place. The plane appears to be an air force, with a hot lady waiting inside who has motives for the abandoned city. Meanwhile in the air force plane, the woman who gives the impression of a leader in their political organization observes their data statistics. As she looked at the data board, her colleagues informed her that all signals are normal and clear and for the equipment, it's ready to go. She then asked for the payload. The payload appears to be a huge bomb. The armed nuclear warhead set to donate in 20 minutes that's going to be dropped in the abandoned city. The woman seemed satisfied to think they're about to bomb the abandoned city. And at the same, she's furious and races towards every zombie looking like she has traumatic experience with it. While the Air Force waits for the huge nuclear warhead to donate, the boss zombies already sense their appearance above. Varmint being naive suggests that he'll go and cut the humans up. But Zombie acts like a leader and doesn't let Varmint go because he's aware that Varmint will lose control as soon as he has contact with the human. Instead, he ordered the other boss zombies to evacuate. Zombie being a robust leader insists that he'll take care of the humans for his own kind. 
It happens to be that not only a plane plans to wipe out the citizens of the abandoned city, but there are also ground units who's about to fire their guns at every zombie they see. While the armies were coming closer to the abandoned city, Zombie ordered his henchmen that they must evacuate and save the civilians for 20 minutes like he's aware and seen the chaos before. The organization looks really prepared. They sent not only a plane and a ground unit but also a skilled person who seemed to be professional in combat. The highly skilled person is hungry to annihilate every zombie he sees. He has confidence to cut down on everyone who goes in his way. The expression of the zombie citizen is not like the other or is usually seen because instead, the zombies feared the humans. Even though they're all rotting and physically dead that became mutant monsters, they still want to live and run as fast as they can to evacuate the place. Meanwhile in the plane, there are also a guy who looks like a mad scientist observing the data statistics. The mad scientist who appears to be named Fei was informed by his colleague that the Extraordinaries Academy found the zombies first. The Extraordinaries Academy are the people who shows up with an air force and ground unit. With that information, Fei smirks and rapidly pushes the red button and turns out that he has an inhumane experiment to use human beings as bait to the zombies. The humans inside the cage were screaming for help with terror and their eyes trying to be heard that they never signed up in that situation. The cage full of human beings was dropped and the zombies ambushed the cage. As the humans were being ambushed, the ground unit Tima was informed that the other team had detected a human life and ordered Tima to proceed to the mark location to save the caged humans. The armies placed their machine gun on ends of the road in places where the zombies could escape and began shooting at the zombies. But as they shoot, they realize that the zombies can't die. The zombie child held his sibling tight as they were being killed. But their majesty and leader zombie blocked the bullets to save the zombie child and his sibling. But one soldier believes that there's no such thing as an unkillable zombie, and even as there is one, that is only because they aren't using enough firepower. He did not hesitate to shoot his rocket launcher to kill the zombie. As he launched the weapon he used, it creates an explosion. But then interrupted with his fellow man that the zombie he shoots was actually seen by the human society as the extraordinary who has been helping people. He looked at the paper with information about the extraordinary and it was zombie who's famous for always wearing a zombie mask. The soldier who uses the rocket launcher was too stunned that he shoots the wrong target out of his anger towards zombie. Zombie was even after the explosion and stands perfectly still and awaits to save everyone he can. Back in the Air Force, where the skilled man is about to dive in the sky was informed that a boss zombie has been detected in Zone B. He instantly dives from the plane without hesitation and fearless. Back to the mad scientist. Faye and his colleague backed up the army. Both of the scientists noticed that the zombie bosses saved almost all the zombie civilians as they looked at the data of the abandoned city. They realized they might have underestimated the zombies who had a mind of their own. That's when Faye cues his colleague to commit an inhumane act. To drop a bunch of humans in a cage to use as a bait. The zombie civilians ambushed the caged humans since they hadn't consumed human protein for a long time. It's like they relapsed as soon as they sensed a human being. One zombie was so deprived and craves for human flesh for a long time that he began to be transformed into a huge mutant zombie. The mutant zombie growls so loud that zombie got his attention. It turns out, the mutant zombie was the boss zombie the army detected in Zone B. While the skilled combat man dove into the Zone B, the other team who felt dumbfounded after wrongfully shot zombie who humans recognized as the extraordinary was also informed of the situation as Zone B. They immediately responded that they're on their way. But their squad leader who shot Zombie carries the weight of shooting the wrong target that he panics and ran fast to Zombie. The squad leader thought he severely injured Zombie that he carries Zombie and thought of saving his life. The squad leader's team thinks he's making another idiotic move. The squad leader rushly threw Zombie in their vehicle and ordered his team to drive as fast as they can with his conscience of almost killing an innocent person bothers his mind. The squad leader's team just went with the flow and followed their squad leader's order since they have no other choice. The red-haired girl still thinks Zombie's wearing a mask and began to be curious about Zombie's identity. She's curious on what could be the reason for Zombie wearing a mask every day. Zombie just nervously laughed since he wasn't really wearing a mask, it's just his bare face. In Zone B, a soldier team fighting the boss Zombie kept thinking on how they could defeat it with the Zombie who suddenly became a mutant and insanely strong. The boss zombie lifts a bus while growling like a homicidal monster who craves for the soldier team's flesh. The boss monster then threw the bus. But as the bus flew, the academy's swordsmanship clubs named Marshall, the skilled man in combat arrived and sliced the bus in half. The soldier team cheered for Marshall and felt certain that they will win with Marshall on their side. Marshall is in his position waiting for the boss zombie's next attack. And as he waits, he ordered the soldier team to save the human civilians and immediately evacuate. 
Marshall is confident to defeat the boss zombie. On the other side were the squad leader and his team were helping the human civilians to evacuate. While they were saving the human civilians they also talked about the other team's situation. The squad leader asked the boss zombie's whereabouts and his team mentioned that Marhal already arrived and intercepted it. They were all calmed when they heard Marshall is already fighting the boss zombie since he's the kind of person who shouldn't be underestimated. Zombie appears to be with them since he was dragged by the squad leader. He cannot stay still because the boss zombie everyone they're talking about seems to be someone he also knew named Little Nine. The red-haired girl who's busy with her task helping people sense that zombie already left the place and wondered where he could have gone. Back in zone B where Marshall fights a boss zombie, he stares at the zombie and empathizes with it. He looked them in the eye and what Marshall saw was a human being trapped in a rotting body. He then asked the zombie if they were hurt. The terrifying boss zombie growls again. The boss zombie proceeds to attack Marshall like a predator. As for Marshall who's known as a skilled swordsman, he opened his katana and slid through the boss zombie. It was so fast that no human being could see that Marshall swung his sword. As he sliced through the boss zombie, he didn't just think of just killing it, but rather helped them escape their rotting bodies. The boss zombie didn't move for a second then its body began to spread apart in pieces since he was sliced by a very skilled swordsman Marshall. Marshall packs up and before he walks away, he respectfully prays for his opponent to rest in peace. Marshall was about to go until he notices another zombie. It was zombie, grieving to a zombie that Marshall killed. Zombie was staring at the sliced dead corpse speechless. Back in the Air Force, they received a report that Marshall already defeated the boss zombie. They all cheered for Marshall. Their president in the Air Force ordered her team to record the event as part of the contribution. Back in Zone B, Zombie who griefs for his friend apologizes that they cannot control themselves and it's no one's fault. Marshall then realized that Zombie is one of the zombies. He immediately swung his sword while yelling that all zombies must die. Back in the Air Force while Marshall picks a fight with Zombie, the team detected another boss-level zombie. They were so calm and overestimated Marshall that they thought Marshall will kill the boss zombie in a second. The girl who's observing the data felt uneasy as the data showed that the fight between Marshall and Zombie is already done in a second, but Marshall is the one who's already gone. Back in Zone B where Marshall is hanging on the pole and severely injured because of Zombie. Zombie may seem calm, but he still grieves for his friend that was sliced into pieces. Zombie didn't immediately kill Marshall but puts him in a very critical condition. The team on the Air Force began to panic as soon as they saw their data showing Marshall's life signal is almost completely gone by suffering a critical damage. On the other hand, they were worried that they haven't evacuated all the human civilians yet. The president in the team was pissed off that she couldn't even say one word to what happened on Marshall. The event was too stressful for her especially her racism towards the zombie. She then disappeared on the plane and immediately jumped off to help the ground units to defeat the zombie. The team on the plane warns their president that they must observe how strong the zombie was first as she rushes down to fight a boss-level zombie. The president who jumped off carries her sword with her. As she goes down, she chants the name of her move called White Blade Cleave while zombies all confused that a woman suddenly appeared on the sky like a shooting star. When the president swung her sword, it completely broke into pieces as soon as it hits zombie. The president was in awe to witness zombie's invincibility. While the president attempted to fight zombie, she was being constantly warned by her team that she can't just charge without telling them. They won't be able to send support to their president who acts reckless. The president stands on her feet as she observes her opponent, and it seems that she must not underestimate it, or she'll end up like Marshall. Zombie apologized for putting Marshall in a very critical condition. Zombie was worried to be hated by humans since he worked so hard to be loved and accepted by the human society. The president then realized that Zombie must be some kind of mutant or a variant. She reaches her other sword to fight him once again with her heart filled with hatred for the zombie. The president chants her move again with her powerful sword named Enhanced Blade. But zombie just wanted to talk first and wanted to clear things up. The president ran through to hit zombie, but zombie dodged it. The president instantly backs away to do her next move called Red Blade Cleave. When the president made her move, the poles and other infrastructure was cut in half and as for zombie, he just bends over to dodge the powerful attack of the president. The president was so stressed and irritated with zombie's skill and ability. She badly wanted to kill him by her hands, but she can't. The other team saved Marshall. Due to his critical condition he began to speak gibberish while the soldier was trying his best to comfort him. The other team on the Air Force were concerned for their president that they repeatedly warned her that the human civilians have been evacuated and she must retreat in an instant. Meanwhile on Zone B, both zombie and the president are running around. Zombie seems to be not wasting his time since he must save others before the organization bombed the city. 
The president, on the other hand, forgot the main mission to evacuate the civilians because of her severe hatred of the zombie. She wanted to kill zombie so bad not just because zombie gave an injury to one of her team, it's just pure hatred. The president then asked why Zombie would run away in the middle of their battle that she craves so much. Zombie who has other important things to do be chilling fly and swinging around away from the president. He responded that there's no way he would stop running away since the president's murderous intention is to cut him in half. The president intends her power by using Lado Level 2. A Lado Level 2 is inspired by the Japanese art of drawing, attack, then sheathing the blade again in successive order. With her Lado level 2, she was also assisted by her boots with advanced technology that has the same power of a rocket. She then launched herself to caught up with Zombie. As the president finally caught up with Zombie, she swung her sword and successfully hit Zombie and knocked him on the ground. The president believes that she successfully eliminated her target with satisfaction on her face. The president is now content that she finally eliminates Zombie and proceeds to order her team to lower the plane's altitude to pick her up. Back at the mad scientist, Fei was informed by his partner that the human civilians they purr in a cage to be eaten alive were all safe. Fei then remembered that they have a spy who works with the organization that Fei plans to sabotage. The human civilians cheered and jumped around to be saved by the soldiers. The Air Force who carries a nuke, one of their pilots who works with Fei Ak. Uh, the spy was seen by the co-pilot that he looks unusual with the handles and button of the plane. The spy pushes the red button all of a sudden that it triggers the nuke to launch at the civilians. The nuke that could explode and destroy the whole city was then released. The whole team who has no idea that they have been sabotaged celebrates hopes to see their family and home after they saved all the human civilians as their main mission. The pilots yelled and instantly warned everyone to not celebrate yet for the reason that there's a traitor among them and the nuke has already been dropped. Everyone's bewildered and as they realized what's going on they panicked at once. Just when the president thought that there's nothing to worry about anymore, stress spread all over her mind when she heard the appalling news and her team reported that an enemy spy has infiltrated them and has dropped the nuclear warhead. The president at the moment gazes at the sky as she perceived the situation. And what the president saw is a nuke that no less a minute will explode the entire city. The president's team was alerted to prepare for the turbulence. They are going to open the cabin doors and will lower the altitude so the president could get in. But to make it possible for them to escape the explosion, the president must jump by using Booster, the one she used to catch Zombie. The president tried her best to escape, while her team kept warning her that she must be on board in an instant. But the president's leg booster did not work and had regrets in her eyes as she realized the time she wasted when she jumped off the plane and ran around to chase Zombie when she could have just stayed on the plane and stick with giving orders to her team. She has no idea what to do after using all the leg booster's power. She then felt like an idiot for not charging the leg booster before she even headed out for the mission. She turned on her left side when she sensed like she's being watched. She saw a zombie staring directly at her and seemed to be eavesdropping the whole time she's talking to herself. Zombie grabbed her and spins the president all around but not for a sweet revenge but to help her get on a plane. By tossing her, the president screamed as she was thrown like a baseball. She luckily got inside the plane and landed on her feet. The president's team was worried and assisted her while she took a deep breath. Instead of being thankful, she was still pissed off by the fact that Zombie's still alive. The nuke is about to land on the city while Zombie on the ground thought of stopping it before it destroys the abandoned city that could possibly kill all the Zombie civilians. Zombie huffed and broke the ground as he blasts off. He flew as fast as a rocket. He launched himself to stop the nuke. When he finally approached the nuke, he used only his bare hand. He called his attack the barehanded nuclear warhead catch like he invented it not long ago. Everyone in the organization including the mad scientist witnessed Zombie's heroic act, and it creates a huge explosion in the sky. The president couldn't believe her eyes as she witnessed that a mutant could possibly be that strong and barehandedly stopped the nuke to explode in the city. Zombie stood on the ground after that, he was not harmed nor injured. The only thing that ripped apart from him were his clothes and made his butt itchy. Meanwhile in the mad scientist's plane after the explosion, Fei made up his mind to pack things up and leave for now. His partner resists by analyzing the data that there is still a life signature in the area of the explosion. This is not the first for Fei to sabotage the organization named Bayonder's Academy, but Fei also believed that it wouldn't be their last also. He will make sure to get to the Bayonder's Academy next time and both the mad scientists proceed to leave the area. Currently on the Bayonder's Academy's plane, the president felt embarrassed like her dignity was crushed that she couldn't even speak and kept her head low. Two of her team is worried for her since she looks all dejected, but one of her team understood her situation that the president has spent her life fighting against zombie, only to be saved by one in the end. 
The girl approached the president to clear things up about Zombie's identity. Even with all the high-tech equipment they had, they still thought Zombie is a human being. What they thought about Zombie's identity is that he is a masked hero who has become rather famous lately. The team confirmed that Zombies have lived in the city for a while and just like to hide his identity. The president gripped the tablet looking so hard that it cracked feeling dumbfounded like the squad leader before. After the incident there was a fine afternoon and people were terrified at Zombie as he passes by looking like a hobo. Zombie went inside to the payphone to call his friends and Varmint enthusiastically replied that there's no need for Zombie to worry and they all got out safely. Most of them were fine and are looking for a new place to stay. Zombie's relieved and he promised that he'll find them again if they found a new place to settle down. Back in Zombie's home. After a long stressful day, Zombie finally went home to relax for a bit. As he was about to enter his apartment, the Bayonders Academy tracked him down by hacking Zombie's apartment's security footage camera. They saw Zombie who's about to enter his place, but Zombie sensed that he's being watched and stared back at them. The president and her team were startled. Zombie who's minding his own business by working out while playing face-off by Tech 9 and E featuring The Rock to boost himself up. Zombie's friends whom he treats as his family crossed his mind when he saw their picture together. He wonders if his family already settled down and thought of visiting them soon. Zombie was surprised by the president of Bayonders Academy made an unexpected visit by barging herself to Zombie's place. The president ordered his securities to take everything from the kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, pots, bowls, and ladles in Zombie's place. The security spreads to follow the president's order while Zombie being on the ground disturbed and thinking of calling the police from the unwanted visitors. The president brought out a legal document to introduce her organization called the Bayonders Academy. She informed Zombie that he has been accepted into the academy. Therefore, Zombie is now a member of the Bayonders Academy without his consent while the president acts as if it's so casual to just barged into someone's home. The president then ordered the security to grab Zombie to drag him out of his home. But Zombie resists since he can't recall joining into some organization he has never heard about. Zombie kept on resisting fighting the securities that Zombies can't go to school but the Bayonders Academy still thinks he's a human being. The security guards were all injured for fighting Zombie while carrying him out of his own home. The Bayonders Academy put Zombie inside their vehicle while one of the Bayonders Academy's team. The red-headed girl has doubts with the president's decision that she believes it's a little inappropriate since the academy has strict criteria for recruitment. She asked if it's okay to just enlist Zombie on the president's command. The red-headed girl also mentioned that every dormitory in the academy is specially planned out. If the president really wants to take Zombie back to their place, then Zombie has nowhere to stay. But the president insists that Zombie could stay with her like she desperately wants to recruit Zombie because of his potential that could help the academy. Meanwhile, the securities followed the president's order by taking all Zombie's essentials until they were done unpacking all Zombie's stuff in the president's place. Zombie was still confused by the president's sudden bargaining. The two of them looked at each other like they were waiting to see who'd explain their side first. Zombie who looked intimidated by the president and asked if he'll be staying at her place. The president answered Zombie's question with common sense. The president became scary to assume that Zombie might want to sleep with her. Zombie panicked for a brief moment because of the president's awkward conclusion. But in Zombie's mind, he pictures a situation of a human fornicating with a zombie, but he thought it would be impossible. The president informed Zombie that he'll be sleeping on her guest room, but Zombie was shy at that moment and attempted to confess that he's not really a human at all. The president doesn't seem interested on listening as she pulls her boots. Zombie was agitated, until the president revealed that her boots were a robot leg attached to her lower knee. The president revealed that she amputated herself. The president was speechless when she had a flashback. The president's racism against zombies started when a zombie outbreak occurred in her village when she was a kid. The president's parents became zombies and bit her legs. In order for the president to survive, she had to cut her own legs. She also had no choice but to kill her parents who turned into a zombie. Ever since then, the president has a bloodthirsty hatred against zombies that she vowed to kill every zombie she'll meet. After zombie heard the president's backstory, he chose to shut his mouth. But good thing for Zombie, the president didn't hear his confession about his identity. Zombie didn't bother to tell the president the truth while acting awkwardly. Zombie changed the topic by asking the president about the Bayonders Academy. The president answered the question that the Bayonders Academy is an organization that specializes in coming up with ways to fight zombies. The president gave a background history that it all started 1000 years ago when the zombie outbreak occurred. And in order for the society to survive, the humanity's ancestors established the academy two centuries after the first outbreak, and that the academy's only purpose was to fight against zombies. 
Through the years, the Bayonders Academy had nurtured countless talents to help fight against zombie outbreaks. Zombie tried to remember the first time he became a zombie. But all he remembered was the start of the first outbreak which he became a zombie instantly. Zombie acts like he's not aware of the history. But the president was too busy to chat with Zombie. Instead, she reminded Zombie to report to the academy on the next day since she already enlisted him through a back channel. But Zombie doesn't want to go since he was just dragged in the academy against his will. The president threatened Zombie to not run away or else the academy's high-level expertise will investigate Zombie's motives. The president finally introduced herself. Her name was Violet. Violet Aka the president informed Zombie that one of her team named Dawn will bring him to the academy. Violet was positive that Zombie already met Dawn. But Zombie doesn't have any clue who Dawn was. The next day, a red-headed girl appeared. The next day at the Bayonders Academy, Zombie arrived in front of the academy with Dawn who seemed to be delighted. But Zombie still couldn't remember Dawn. Dawn was dismayed since her and Zombie were together for a brief time back in the armored personnel carrier. Zombie finally remembered her Dawn and teases her that she was just small when they met. Dawn was offended when Zombie made a comment about her tiny height, but she chose to ignore since Zombie will be her future schoolmate. Dawn moved along and told Zombie to come with her for their entrance exam. After a while, Zombie wondered if he needed to take an entrance exam, but for Dawn, it's mandatory to take an entrance exam especially in the academy to test the applicants both physical abilities as well as the skills of killing Zombie. Dawn gave an example on how to pass the entrance exam like when the world record for the 100 meters sprint was 9.58 seconds. Then a Bayonders Academy applicant must surpass even if it's just a second ahead. Zombie felt a little pressured by the standard of the academy, and he finally understood why it was named the Bayonders Academy. Dawn wondered what could Zombie be thinking. In Zombie's mind, he actually thought that the Bayonders Academy is an insane asylum with a bunch of lunatics. Few minutes have passed. People have gathered for their entrance exam. Everyone was fierce and ready. The crowd was full waiting for their guidance for the exam. In the crowd, Zombie carried Dawn by his shoulders since Dawn was so small, she couldn't see anything from all the way back. But the bald man was so annoyed and cursed at Dawn for being too annoying. But Dawn tries to yell back. And for Zombie, he asked a theoretical question even though he meant himself, that maybe a person who lifted an entire in a human city doesn't need to take an entrance exam. Dawn explained that the Academy has no favoritism since she's aware that the Academy has plenty of people who can lift planes and that the Academy was regulated by the old government, and every student has some sort of secrets. And for obvious reasons, no one actually watches a news in the Bayonders Academy. Until a man with a peg leg arrived. He seemed to be a middle-aged man who'll be in charge of the entrance exam. The examiner that day was the sports department's president named Chen. Before the entrance exam starts, Chen gave a brief background of the prestigious academy about how the academy was established by their ancestors. Chen tries to be an inspiring teacher, but in the middle of his speech he was cut off. When someone called out Chen's name in the crowd, it was Zombie who called out Chen. Zombie was a little shy to be the center of attention as he asked Chen about what will happen to the zombies if they were found in the academy. Chen answered the question so casual that they will tear a zombie limb from limb and hang its corpse by the academy's gate for everyone to see. He also confirmed that they'll neuter the zombie if ever they detected one in the school. Zombie gave an expressionless face after hearing all the horrifying procedures. Chen looked directly at Zombie while he was smirking. The neuter he was trying to say was a procedure on beheading the zombie's penis. Zombie only heard all the worst possibilities yet he already felt the pain from his private part. After Chen's introduction, the entrance exam finally began. All applicants were on their mark being totally focused, until the referee gave the cue for the applicants to start sprinting. Since most of the applicants has a powerful ability, the referee felt a strong wind as they sprint. Zombie was startled by the orange-headed guy. They all dashed so fast that their movements weren't seen by the naked eye. And the first one to reach the finish line was the orange-headed guy named Wu Chengsu who finished the race within three seconds. Zombie was speechless to see himself still running to the goal. The next test was shooting. The applicants tried their best to focus on their aim while Chen on the background educates them that shooting is the most basic skill to fight against Zombie. In Zombie's mind, he felt forced by being dragged to a so-called asylum and was taught how to fight zombies instead of learning a theoretical knowledge about his kind. While Zombie was trying to focus, he looked on his side to see another strong applicant. It was Dawn who just fired her gun so basic. Dawn draws four bullets, and by just one trigger, Dawn beheaded all the targets. Dawn passed the shooting test while she looked so proud of her ability. 
Zombie felt like he was being humiliated by the strong applicants. Some applicants failed the test and starts to vent their rage on the straw figure. Zombie felt nervous throughout his experience. They all moved along with their next test called the shot put. The shot put was explained by Chen that they will need to hit 80 meters to pass and 100 meters to be qualified. They start throwing the heavy ball while Chen observes them. And one by one, Chen called out those who were qualified and failed. Chen called the next group to do the test. And after a while, it turns out that Zombie was just trying to control his strength to avoid suspicion and believe that he's trapped with lunatics. Chen took a peek on his data. He analyzes Zombie's portfolio that Zombie has a height of 182 centimeters and a weight of 72 kilograms that Violet sent. Violet recommended Zombie because of his unbelievable strength. But Chen couldn't believe it since Zombie only got a passing score through put the test. Chen had his suspicion that Zombie might be acting weak. Later that day, they were still not done with their entrance exam and proceeds with another throwing range test. Cheng Su threw the spear with his might. The spear was stable as it was charged in the air. And Cheng Su's target was the mannequin's private part. Zombie squints like he was in the mannequin's position. But with Cheng Su's strength, not only one but three mannequins were pierced by the spear and went flying outside the stadium. Until it hits a sign on the street. Cheng Su got the citizen's attention with his monstrous throw. In Chen's stopwatch, Cheng Su got 32 kilometers and the targets were hit. Cheng Su was automatically qualified and the next one to throw was Zombie. While Cheng Su walked past to Zombie, he gave Zombie an intimidating impression. Zombie finally grabbed his spear. Zombie was about to throw the spear, but he was stopped by Chen. Everyone was curious about the sudden called out. Chen asked if Zombie was really recommended by Violet. Chen received Violet's report that Zombie was really strong but based on his observation, Zombie only got an average result throughout. He suspected that Zombie might be holding back his strength. Zombie became the center of attention because of Chen's suspicion. Chen also remembered that Zombie was the one who asked him a question before the entrance exam started. Chen dared Zombie to not hold back since it's a bit insulting for those who tries their best to be accepted in the academy. Chen was sharp and thought that maybe Zombie isn't really a human. Zombie denied the allegations while he panicked and trying to convince Chen that he's really a human. Chen believed Zombie and hoped that he could show everyone his true powers. But Chen made a condition that Zombie must surpass Cheng Su in order to pass the test. Chen threatened Zombie thinking that if Zombie couldn't prove that he's strong then he might have pulled a scam in Violet. And in return, Chen will punish Zombie. Zombie was frightened by Chen's scary impression. Zombie starts to think of his own actions. But even though he couldn't remember his past he knew that the people who was chasing him around to be used as an endless power generator came from the academy. Zombie doesn't want to be someone's fuel. Zombie decided to not hold back because in that moment, his life was on the line. Shang Tzu and Don was looking forward to see Zombie's real strength. Zombie's in his position, leaning backwards to throw perfectly. He concentrates and, in his mind, he remembered all the trainings he did. Until his left eye turned red as a symbol that he's going to use his full potential. He knew that he was not training and working out for nothing. He was so serious that his face turned into someone who shouldn't be messed with. Zombie finally threw the spear and made Cheng Su's face flaps. Zombie's aim was so strong that he demolished the ground. The spear went to the outer space and bounced around the space shuttles until the spear went to the moon. Because of Zombie's unbelievable strength, everyone went flying. While Zombie was on his feet being unbothered, Chen was left aghast who seemed like he didn't expect Zombie to be so monstrous. Meanwhile on the outer space, where the spear hits the moon, Zombie actually managed to pierce the moon. At that moment, Zombie went beast mode using his real strength. After Zombie's throwing range test, everyone was still in the air. Zombie looked up, like he was trying to find where he aimed at. He was standing still like nothing happened, and even made the ground demolished. Because of Zombie's performance, everyone was left speechless. Dawn quickly approaches Zombie expressing her astonishment towards Zombie. Dawn was curious where did Zombie threw his spear, but Zombie doesn't have any idea and just did his best to show his real strength. The missing piece of the moon became an asteroid, wandering around in outer space, when Zombie pierced the moon. And just like that, Zombie automatically became qualified. After Zombie received his certificate, he just wanted to go home. But in Dawn's perspective, Zombie is someone who's qualified to be one of the presidents in their academy. Dawn tried to convince Zombie that he could have the authority if ever he became the president. But Zombie doesn't care. Dawn was persistent and even made Violet as her example. And since Violet is a president not only she command an army of troops, tanks, aircraft, and long-range cannons, Violet also has the access to nuclear weapons. Dawn also mentioned that Violet has the highest authority over a city of 30 million people. 
and their mayor is just someone who helped Violet manage the city but she still has the final say. Zombie still wasn't interested despite all the privilege Don just mentioned. Later then, inside the academy, Don gave Zombie a tour around their campus. Don showed the biotech department where all of the weapons are made and it could also be called the logistics department. While looking around, Zombie has noticed a picture. A picture of a happy family and a guy who looked like the mad scientist from before. Don introduces the man in the picture named Jamie. Jamie was the former biotech department president. But Jamie's backstory before he became an ant scientist was that he became obsessed with crazy experiments after his wife died. In his experiment he involved both humans and zombies. Don heard a rumor that Jamie's goal was to fulfill his late wife's dream. After Jamie went crazy, the academy dismissed him and even ordered everyone to kill Jamie on sight. While Don and Zombie were talking, a scientist appeared asking if they're finished with the exam. Don gave a confirmation response while Zombie was familiarized with the woman. Zombie asked Dawn about the scientist's identity and Dawn revealed that the scientist was the adopted daughter of Jamie and the current biotech department president. The scientist made Dawn and Zombie to approach her if they need an equipment. Dawn looked so excited to make a request to the scientist about her desire to have something that could easily carry weapons. Dawn wanted a pair of trousers that could hide her gatling gun that looks like bigger than her size. The scientist already guessed that Dawn might be joining the gunner department. Dawn actually wanted to join the academy to fulfill her desire to shoot things. The scientist was busy with her work, until she saw what Zombie looks like when she was called. She yelled out of being terrified of Zombie's appearance. But Dawn defended Zombie to the scientist named Kin that he's just wearing a zombie mask. But Kin isn't dumb enough to misunderstood. She knew that Zombie is in fact a zombie. But Dawn made her defense that Zombie is really just a human since she witnessed how powerful Zombie was. But Kin went along with Dawn and thought that Zombie would have attacked her instantly if he really was a zombie. Kin continued with her job and asked Zombie about his needs. But Zombie doesn't have anything in his mind but he remembered that every time he goes home, he always ends up being naked. He then requests Kin to make him clothes that's impossible to be ripped. Kin was weirded out to hear Zombie's reason. Kin accepted their request that seemed impossible to make. Meanwhile at the swordsmanship department, Marshall appeared looking like he was ashamed. And in front of Marshall is a woman who seemed to be just chilling. Marshall's presence in the swordsmanship department was to make a report regarding his loss in the battle. On Marshall's point of view, he remembered that as soon as he charged over, his entire vision turned dark. And the very next second, Marshall became naked hanging on top of a lamp post. The woman replied like she was certain that zombies no match to her. But Marshall's positive that zombies freakishly stronger than her. The president stood up and approaches Marshall and asked him so intimidatingly about Zombie's name. The president kept glaring at Marshall, and she decided to let Marshall go. The sword department president's name was Zhang Lanky. Lanky's just like Violet, but Violet was in a blade department. In the academy, there always had been a competition between the sword and the blade department that has been passed down for generations. Both sides would use unscrupulous means to poach people from the other. The competition has gotten so fierce that if the other side has even one or more member than their own, they would rather give birth to the extra member themselves than be weaker than their opponent. Back to present, Marshall wishes his best for Mr. Zombie knowing that Lanky's also strong like Violet. Later that day, a teacher starts his lesson about the habits of a zombie. He lectures his class that other than zombies eating human flesh, they had researched that zombies love eating eggs. The teacher told the class to learn to use the zombies' likes to their advantage and their weakness which was their heads when setting a trap. Zombie was a good student in class taking notes to every word the teacher said. Don noticed how serious Zombie was. Zombie's reason was that he's willing to share his knowledge to his family act. Of the zombie citizens, Don thinks Zombie was weird for wanting to share his knowledge to his family. Until an announcement occurred in the middle of their lecture, telling everyone to gather at the gymnasium immediately. Don was curious since they just had an assembly earlier. After the announcement, at the gymnasium, students have gathered around. Zombie was busy eating a popsicle while Don's curious about the sudden announcement. Violet arrived at the gymnasium telling Zombie and Don to be quiet and avoid causing trouble since the two of them was recommended by Violet. Don asked a random question if Zombie could eat under his mask. Zombie awkwardly explained himself until Lanky arrived at the gymnasium. A boy next to Kin pointed at Zombie informing her that Zombie's their target. But they seemed to underestimate him since Zombie looked slow-witted. The boy suggested to test Zombie and Lanky allowed him to see Zombie's capabilities. Moments later, another person arrived. A man with robot assistance on his sides. A man with a big scar on his face arrived at the assembly. Everyone bowed their heads because he seemed to be one of the most important men in the academy. The man was the chief. 
Don pulled down Zombie's head since Zombie couldn't read the room that the chief is the mechanical life form department's president. The students showed respect to the chief while Zombie looked empty-headed. But out of all the people who respects the chief, Lanky's the only one who's not intimidated. The chief warned her to not cause trouble. Lanky didn't care and decided to take her leave. The boy was curious about Lanky leaving all of a sudden when their target was literally in front of them. But in Lanky's case, the chief was more important than Zombie since the only people she could respect was the strong one. But unlike Violet, the chief praised Violet for her hard works. Violet humbly accepted the praise and told the chief that she's just doing her work. Zombie noticed how weird was the atmosphere between the department presidents while Don was acting like a kid asking Zombie on what flavor of popsicle he has. And without hesitation, Zombie told Don that he like eggs. Zombie asked Don about how powerful the chief was. Don told Zombie that the chief was connected to Jamie. Don revealed that chief is Jamie's masterpiece that was made by an evolved version of humans. And chief was the only one who survived among the thousands of Jamie's test experiments. And after Jamie was expelled in the academy, Chief formed the Mechanical Life Form Department and the city his department controls have over 50 million people. And during 10 years of Chief's presidency, not a single zombie appeared in the city he controls. The reason why the Chief's city is a safe place was because even if a single hair was detected he will immediately exterminate the entire R until it's sanitized. Zombie seemed to be intimidated by Chief while Dawn on the side was mesmerized. Chief went on stage to tell the students despite they're just freshmen, the academy needed them. The students wondered how could they help. Chief ordered one of his robot assistants to play a projection to make it more concise for the students. The robot assistant played a project through its eyes and showed an image of a guy sitting. Chief revealed that the guy showed in the projection was the spy that was caught months ago that made the nuclear warhead almost drop to kill some students from the Bayonders Academy. Zombie was mad to realize that he just saw the image of a guy who dropped a bomb on him. Chief followed up his report that the spy deserves to be killed immediately but the Academy realized the spy might have information about Jamie. While Zombie in his mind felt like Jamie was such an important mission than targeting a zombie, Zombie realized that since the threat of the zombies has long since passed, most of the main conflicts are because of infighting. Dawn agreed with Zombie's conclusion. She frowns a bit as she tells the truth of some people just wanted to watch the world burn. Back to Chief, he informed the students that he and the rest tried countless of methods to get the spy to talk, but nothing worked. Even the senior students attempted to make the spy talk, yet they also failed. Chief disturbingly told everyone the methods they used such as tiger bench, needles, castration, and trying to make him drown. All of the torture methods didn't work on the spy and it left the chief no choice but to rely on the freshman. The freshman's mission was a bit difficult, and that's when chief made a deal that whoever made the spy talk could be the vice president. And all of a sudden, everyone was pumped up to hear an offer once in a lifetime. Everyone raises their hand and was willing to volunteer for the mission. First guy was picked and Chief wishes him the best luck. The guy was excited that he starts running to the spy's whereabouts. Two hours later, the guy failed to break the spy to talk. And for after two hours of fruitless efforts, the freshman began to turn desperate. At first, the methods were normal, but slowly turned much more unorthodox. Like one guy starts praying, the next guy annoyed the spy childishly and the next one tried to pull his Buddha skills. At that moment, Violet felt embarrassed for them. Meanwhile, Zombie and Dawn were chilling at the moment while eating their popsicles. Dawn asked Zombie if he could manage to make the spy talk. But Zombie was so confident and even bragged to Dawn that he could even make the spy sing. Dawn was so excited to see Zombie attempt to break the spy. She was so supportive that she called Chief's attention to choose Zombie to be next online. Chief allowed them to do so and showed the path to the spy. In Dawn's mind, she wondered why Zombie suddenly wants to step out when she thought Zombie's someone who likes to keep a low profile. While Zombie was walking forward, Lanky was glaring at him. In Zombie's mind, he thought of his subordinates as someone obedient but for some reason, he noticed for the past few weeks that his subordinates were randomly losing control. He took advantage of the chance that maybe the spy could explain something. Zombie went in to face the spy, but the spy thought that no one will ever break him. The two of them faced each other. Zombie glares at the spy to analyze him. The spy spoke to insult the academy for running out of people and decided to send a zombie-looking person. The spy seemed to be a die-hard loyal underling of Jamie. Zombie slashed the spy and gave him a tiny scar. The spy was confused. The spy laughed hysterically thinking that scathing him was the only thing Zombie could do. Zombie was dead serious and commanded him to stand up. And just like that, the spy immediately did what Zombie told him so. Violet, Dawn, and Chief was shocked to see Zombie just easily commanded the unbreakable spy. It turns out, the scar that Zombie gave the spy, 
was some sort of virus flowing around the spy's veins until it reached his brains. With that virus, Zombie could control the spy's mind. Zombie asked the spy's name. The spy responded in an instant that his name was Sayo Kai. The people outside were speechless to see Zombie's new ability of controlling people's mind. Zombie tried to ask a personal question about Kai being connected to Jamie. Kai didn't hesitate to answer the question and told Zombie that he knew lots of things. Zombie asked why was the zombies being randomly going berserk. Kai answered the question that they dropped a medicine created by Jamie onto the city that causes the zombies to go crazy. And because of the medicine, Jamie controls the zombies by certain extent. Jamie's team used to order the berserk zombies to attack the humans and through their battles, Jamie's team collected data on the Beyonders Academy. Zombie asked another question about their reason on being a rebellion. But Kai doesn't know Jamie's reasons and all he knows was that Jamie's going to do something great. Kai's only mission was to gather the data of the members of the Beyonders Academy by controlling the zombies to attack the students. Zombie asked Jamie's whereabouts. Kai answered that question without hesitation that Jamie's in a secret base about 500 meters below the city. At that moment Lanky was amazed and speechless to witness that Zombie's not a weakling. Zombie commands Kai to turn around. Before Zombie walks away, he became scary while leaving a message to Kai how hateful the humans were. He also told Kai that he placed a virus inside his brain and he could trigger it to commit suicide. He then told Kai to take care. Kai was still being controlled staring at a blank space and told Zombie that he understood. Meanwhile at Jamie's side, on 500 meters beneath the city, they were already alerted that Kai has snitched on them and now that the Beyonders Academy knew their hideout. Jamie thinks of his next move, but it was a good thing for Jamie that the Academy's about to come to him. But Jamie's assistant was worried since he's aware of the Academy's capabilities. But Jamie's just chilling because in his defense, his experiment's almost over. For him, it was a great timing for the Academy to barge in. For them to witness a historical moment of his invention of the birth of a complete life form. Back to the Academy, Zombie just left the room. People were all intimidated by him, but they were also terrified of Zombie. Students started to gossip around to see Zombie with his mind control ability. Violet was also intimidated. And for Lanky, she realized how strong Zombie could be. Students began to realize that Zombie shouldn't be messed with. But one person applauded Zombie. It was the chief. He was proud to see that someone in the freshman has an amazing hidden talent. And after witnessing Zombie's hidden ability, chief fulfilled his promise to make Zombie the next vice president. But for Zombie, he's more focused on Jamie but chief knew that Jamie won't run away. Lanky was a bit bored now. While Chief guides Zombie to the registration process, the boy on Lanky's side found it weird that there was a registration process to become a vice president. Lanky finds the situation a bit fishy and decided to follow Chief and Zombie. At the abandoned industrial area, it seemed like the place was quiet. Zombie felt off. Zombie was curious if the abandoned place will be under him. He remembered that he should be getting registered and go after Jamie. But Chief was really sharp and asked Zombie when did he learn to speak human language like he instantly detected Zombie's true nature. Zombie acts dumb when Chief asked him a question. Chief instantly pulled his guns and fires at Zombie. But behind Zombie was Lanky and her assistant. The assistant was worried of Lanky but Lanky immediately recognized that it was the Chief's weapon that has the ability to disintegrate all matter. Chief was someone who couldn't be fooled when he recognized Zombie's true nature. He called out the Academy for being idiots to just let Zombie slip inside the Academy. Zombie looked like he was beheaded and made the chief thought he took care of everything since the zombie's weakness was their head. Chief apologized to kill off Zombie, but he has no choice since Zombie just entered a restricted academy. But the chief noticed that Zombie wasn't stumbled, and he was attacked with no trace of Zombie seen on his naked eye. He was smashed on the building and made him scathed. All of a sudden, chief's robot assistants arrived at the scene and fired their lasers at Zombie. That causes explosion at the abandoned place. But Zombie grabbed the robots and was thrown away. The high intelligent robots were destroyed. Chief felt unsettled to see Zombie fighting back. Chief wondered how Zombie could still move despite being headless. Zombie was headless while holding one of the robot assistants. Lanky and her subordinate was amazed by Zombie fighting back. Zombie charged his attack against Chief. But Chief managed to dodge the attack. Zombie continuously smacks the Chief while Chief kept dodging. Until the Chief pulled his weapon. But Zombie managed to dodge it. Chief began to be irritated at Zombie being fast despite with no head. Zombie kept trying to punch the Chief, but the Chief jumped backwards so he could make his next move. Lanky's subordinate thought the Chief was in trouble but Lanky doesn't want to bother knowing that Chief began to get serious. 
Lanky knew Chief well that men like him likes to show off with big and flashy moves. Lanky advises her subordinate to move a bit further so they won't get caught up in the area of effect. Meanwhile, Zombie's head goes spiral. Until his head was formed to its original, Lanky and her subordinate was aghast to witness Zombie's head grew back. Zombie just wanted to talk because he never intended to hurt Chief. But Chief doesn't underestimate Zombie. He thought that Zombie might control his mind. Chief still wanted the fight to continue and made one of his robot suits named Model 1 to be summoned. All the fragments went to the area and was instantly attached to Chief's body. Zombie was confused, while Lanky and her subordinate was amazed. Chief was wearing all the fragments and made him look like a robot. The Chief called himself the mechanical life form. He acts and talks like a robot as he charged his attack. Chief successfully hits Zombie with its kneecap. Zombie went flying while Chief was ready to make his next move. Zombie was about to fall on the ground. Chief gave Zombie a big punch in the gut and made Zombie fly off the ground. Lanky and her subordinate was amazed as they watched the battle. Chief doesn't want to stop and kept charging his attack and went after Zombie. He consistently fights Zombie. While Zombie was hit mutinously, he couldn't fight back. The Chief made his final blow and smacked Zombie to the ground. Zombie's body hits the ground. The Chief landed on his feet. While reciting that all zombies must be killed and must die, he uses his one final attack, using a laser coming out of his chest. Lanky was terrified, while Chief was using his big disintegrator laser against Zombie, and the dark alley went bright. Chief huffs and catches a breath. He assumed that Zombie should be annihilated at that moment, until Zombie walked in, and Chief was felt dumb to see Zombie walking. Zombie stands perfectly still and screamed on top of his lungs. The scream was so loud that made Lanky and her subordinate to flinch. Even Chief was affected by Zombie's scream despite wearing a highly developed suit. Zombie was dead serious at that moment, and even grew a hair. Lanky and her subordinate was horrified of Zombie. Zombie walks forward to Chief, while Chief began to be a little scared. But Zombie seemed like he doesn't want to play anymore. The sky starts to go spiral, while Zombie was standing still on the ground. The spiral went bigger that became the size of the city. The sky got Dawn's attention. And even Lanky who was just chill a while ago began to panic. And for the citizens, they felt off to see the big spiral in the sky. Chief was speechless and intimidated. But Zombie meant what he said and even gave Chief a chance to settle the situation peacefully. But the Chief doesn't want to hear him out. Chief was confused. Zombie scarily asked Chief if what ways does he want to die. Lanky and her subordinate noticed that Zombie's personality took a 180 degree change and gave Lanky an ominous feeling. Lanky and her subordinate left the place immediately, or else they'll get caught. Chief had never felt threatened by another being since he was born. He acts tough like he wasn't scared of Zombie. Chief didn't stop to provoke Zombie and even dared him to come at him, while Lanky and her subordinate was running away. Lanky's subordinate informed her that he had gone through Zombie's database, but he had never seen a creature like Zombie to be so strong. The two of them hoped to be safe from Zombie and Chief's duel, until the two of them was caught up. The two of them was alerted by the danger that the battle might get into the new city. Chief's limbs were missing while being smashed on the ground. Zombie approaches him, but the chief summoned his robot assistants the Model 2, 3, and 4, and it created a huge explosion. Lanky was caught up beside Chief. At that moment, Chief asked Lanky to help him knowing that Zombie's dangerous. But Lanky was deeply scared and called Chief insane for provoking Zombie in the first place. Lanky advises her subordinate and Chief to split up and escape while Zombie on the ground, was about to charge his next attack. But Lanky noticed that Zombie won't just let them get away. Zombie smacked the ground. That causes an earthquake. Lanky loses her balance and made her fall. Lanky was deeply horrified and confused. But Zombie was holding the ground and lifts it up. That made the half of the city to float. The citizens began to panic. They're all terrified of the situation. Even Dawn was mesmerized with what she saw. That the new city was floating. Meanwhile on Zombie's side, Chief fell from the ground and bumped his head so hard. Zombie immediately went after Chief. He smirked while holding the Chief on his head with missing limbs and asked if Chief felt more threatened at that moment. Zombie held Chief's limbless body. With a villainous look on his face, Zombie was positive that he couldn't control a robot's mind. But Chief wasn't a pure robot. Even though his limbs were all mechanics, Chirf still has human brain. Zombie griped Chief's head tighter. He did the same technique to Chief like he did to the spy earlier until the virus finally reached Chief's brain. Zombie saw Chief's memory starting with two adults in a silhouette figure. He then saw Chief in his childhood days being an orphan with two deceased parents in front of him. The memory shifts to a doctor performing an underwent body modification surgery. 
In Chief's memory, there was a part when his human parts were all removed and was replaced by irons. After Zombie took a glimpse of Chief's memory, he insulted Chief for being miserable and for being more undead than a zombie. Zombie decided to spare Chief since he believed that Chief will suffer more if he's alive than being dead. Zombie got bored and tossed Chief on top of the cliff. But luckily, Lanky was able to catch Chief. With horrified looks, Lanky was aghast to see one of the abilities Zombie has was reading memory. All of a sudden, Zombie disappeared. Later that night, Zombie was back to his normal self. He packed all his stuff to run away for feeling ashamed of losing control over his emotions. Even Zombie was scared of himself. He kept convincing himself that he's a friendly and nice zombie. But he was really ashamed to face humanity as he walked out the door. But Violet caught him sneaking out. But he had no choice but to make his witness go silent. Zombie apologized for the thing he's about to do. But he was cut off when Violet showed him a document. Violet showed the paper documents for Zombie that states that he is an official vice president of the Beyonders Academy from then on. Zombie was confused that no one reacted violently from his berserk earlier. He was even more confused when he saw that Chief consented him to be the vice president. Zombie asked Violet if ever Chief mentioned anything about him. Violet answered the question when she heard that Chief thought of Zombie as a good human. Violet didn't react violently. She even congratulated Zombie for his recent accomplishments. Meanwhile, Chief was bedridden with Lanky on his side. Lanky thought it was a terrible mistake when Chief made Zombie to stay despite him knowing the truth of Zombie's real nature. But Chief looked on the other side. It didn't matter whether Zombie was a human or not. Chief looked more on the opportunity and advantages if Zombie was on their side. But Lanky was more concerned if Zombie goes berserk again. But Chief was still willing to take the risk. He changed the topic when he asked Lanky about the arrangements. Even though Chief was absolutely defeated, he still thought of Professor Jamie. He promised himself that he will erase all traces of Professor Jamie for good. Somewhere in the sea, the zombie society was all alerted by a news that Zombie was being held hostage inside a human city. Varmint who's a loyal family, asked the rest of his companions on what could he do to save their boss. The zombie society were all protesting to kill all the humans in order to save their king zombie. Blackie thought it was stupid for Varmint to protest, and be worried since Blackie and Agu was totally aware of Zombie's unbelievable and monstrous power. Back to the Bayonders Academy. Chief was now perfectly fine with limbs. He then made an announcement for everyone to get ready since it's finally their chance to catch Professor Jamie. Meanwhile, somewhere in the land city, Zombie and Don were strolling around while Don was fascinated with how people have maintained the abandoned place for so long, until a soldier stopped and a group of military blocked Zombie and Don's way. Zombie was deeply confused, but the soldiers were actually formally greeting Zombie to welcome him to his new city that's going to be under his rules. And the soldier informed Zombie that they will be following Zombie's orders from then on. Zombie was still in shock that things went so fast, he didn't even ask for his achievements in the first place. All of the soldiers formally stood on the city to greet their newest vice president Zombie. The zombie asked the soldier if he really listened to anything he said, and what if he told her to kill himself. The soldier pulled out a bomb from his pocket. The zombie was trying to stop him because he was kidding, but the soldier didn't stop. He continued to throw the bomb. They looked at each other. So, it turns out it's just a significant side character, and here he thought they would send someone strong. They saw the man sitting at the top, and they were wondering about that. He didn't understand why they would send a weakling like him to guard such an important location. The two men were standing they were from the Stainless Steel Academy and next to the Bayonders Academy. They were sent to help her catch the target. The red hair shocked the two men, the heads of the Steel Blade Department at the Stainless Steel Academy. They are President Bang and Vice President Chewie. The original was an internal affair of the Academy, so he wonders why the higher-ups made him come help him, but so be it. Helping others is normal. He doesn't understand why he would suddenly promote a newbie to Vice President and even have him guard such an important strategic location. She ordered her to come here to help us and not to pry into affairs, but Chief Gang said that as outsiders, they have no authority to question the decisions of her chief. The novice is blocking the exits while he tells them the important part of their mission, which is to attack. He asked him to explain to her why he assigned just a newbie vice president to monitor such a crucial spot given the extensive roadways and several exits in the north of the city, because he is capable of beating him until he pees out of his pants. The man said that he was stronger than him, and it's fine either way. He recruited two members from his academy to help him secure the exits, so there's nothing for him to do anyway. The scientist said to Brother Faye that they have the entire city surrounded. He replied to him, release the zombies. He clicked the red bottom, and he said that he was something weird that got mixed in with them. The two chiefs shot the zombies. When they started firing on the zombie, 
they faced no challenges. He held the zombies, and they weren't from his tribe. She signs, and she doesn't hear anything at all. He says that he needed to leave that place because they could do that. He called him a weakling, and he said that he should go back and play with children's toys. She was annoyed at the chief. They are catching their attention. The little varmint is there, and Zombie asked him what he was doing to that place. The scientist was laughing, and he declared to him, give him a good show. Two hours ago, a little varmint faced the zombie, and he challenged it. He took out the gallon of gasoline, and he was wondering about that. The zombie had run away, and he declared that he didn't dare go against the king's orders, so he would be returning first, and he wished him luck. A little varmint was crazy. He asked if they needed him and if he could kill the human by himself. He was wondering about what he smelled. The scientist was watching and had a new subject recorded. They are watching what the little varmints do. The zombie asked if he was a little varmint, and the red-haired was weird at what he was doing. The little varmint opened the gallon, and he drank the gasoline. She was wondering because he drank the gasoline. After he drank it, his body grew stronger. He screamed it, causing the ear to become irritated, and the window broke. Zombie was standing while the red hair was flying, and the chief behind him was irritated by those sounds. After that she asked, what is that? The little varmint challenged the chief to come play with him. The chief was crazy because he thought the battle was interesting to him, and he declared to him that his ears almost popped from that roar. He pulled her hand, and he ordered him to run. While they were running, she asked why they needed to run, and they still had those two department heads. He replied that they couldn't kill him. She said it again, and he said that he was not a joke. The little varmint was crazy while he was holding his armor. President Bang called them trash because they were running at the first sight of a stronger enemy. His comrade said that he would take care of it. He agreed to it. Something happened behind him, and he immediately turned his back. His comrade died, and he was shocked about that. The little varmint asked him how he wanted to die. Zombie, Red Hair and Soldier continued to run, and they went up to the top of the building. President Bang and Little Varmint was attacking each other. The scientist was crazy while watching them. He bullied President Bang and punched him. President Bang declared that he was not a weakling. He turned it round and round, and he threw it. The Little Varmint didn't stop bullying the president. He kicked it, and his comrades sympathized with it. He put his foot on the chest of the president. The president is trying to stop him. Zombie and Red Hair were using the telescope to watch them and she saw that he was looking bad because he doesn't think that President Bang can hold on much longer. The little varmint was laughing because the president said that he wouldn't lose his president. The president was trying not to cry, but he couldn't stop his tears, and he was already leaking them, and he was shouting mommy. He didn't want to die and save him. While the two were watching them, the scientist called the president stupid human academy, and he was laughing. On top of the building, they are talking and the soldier asks what they do. The red hair said that they couldn't send the ordinary soldier, and they would all die. Zombie was wondering because he didn't recognize him. He looked at the red hair and he had planned to use her to recognize him. The red hair was annoyed, and she asked if he wanted her to become his food. He took her hand, and he bit him. The red hair was hurting. She was looking at his arm, which had a trace of teeth. She asked if he was taking advantage of the situation to control her mind. He replied that he was not like that. The president was scared of the varmint. He called his mom and said that he was wrong and shouldn't have made fun of her. He was pleased not to kill him. Variant just laughs. Someone was shouting, and he called him. Variant was wondering about that. She walked with his gun, and she challenged the Variant to play with her. The zombie bit the red hair, and his cells spewing out genetic nucleotides and supplanting them were spread to his blood. The red hair was a zombie holding the gun. They are wondering about that girl. Varmint asked if he wanted to play with him. She replied that he was a bragger, and she asked what makes him think he is special. She pointed the gun at the varmint and rained bullets on it. She was laughing while the gun was firing. The president was startled, which caused him to start crying. The little varmint moved quickly to avoid being shot at. He approached the president and told him to run fast. The red hair was running fast to the varmint, and she put the bomb in the mouth of the varmint. After she dropped the bomb, she moved fast to run away, and the bomb boomed. Varmint doesn't hurt what she's doing. She rained bullets on it. The soldier asked the vice president of zombies what he had to do. He replied that he just modified Don's genes a little bit, and that's all. The Don should still be able to become more powerful. There is smoke that caused the bomb. The red hair was laughing at him and she liked that feeling. While the two chiefs were hugging each other because they were scared by what happened, Varmint asked her if she really thought that she could defeat him with such puny strength. He used his armor, but the red hair countered his attack. She kicked him, so he splattered on the ground. When he kicked, he was hurt. The chief believed in the red hair. He declared that she was so powerful, and he asked why she had been pretending to be weak before. She said that it's time for Bang Bang. Zombie was shocked by her. 
He was hurt, and he saw a tank, and he drank it. He challenged the red hair to continue the war. She used the gun to shoot a varmint. Varmint had strength because he drank gasoline. The chief was shocked and scared. The varmint was undead and couldn't kill him, and he declared that she was wasting her energy. The varmint was wandering. Red hair asked what he was saying about the undead, and she declared that she was also one. She let the game continue. The president and vice president asked what kind of lunatics they were. They have run away, and he is pleased to save them. The little varmint was wondering about the two and who the real zombies were. Zombie and the soldier were watching them. He didn't expect Dawn to become so powerful after a genetic mutation, but all her bones are shattered and all her muscles are torn apart. Although he can use genetic recombination, the pain of being dismembered is real. Since he disobeyed his orders and didn't stay at home, he was disciplining the little variant. She faced the little varmint, and she punched his face. She kicked her and hit her with something. The little varmint was hurting. He was prone on the ground. She didn't stop bullying the little varmint. He was pleased to stop hitting him, and he declared that he was surrendering. He will leave, and he will return to his home immediately. Zombie and scientists were watching them. The red hair was stopped from attacking. She didn't know this was the prank of a varmint. Varmint was sneak attacking her, and she could not move. They are shocked by what happened. Zombie asked why she was letting her guard down, and he declared to her that once he relaxed her vigilance, things would revert to their original state. She was hurting, and she replied that she didn't know that. The little varmint declared to her that it turns out she has taken some stimulants, but the effects have worn off. He was taken care of in the next life. He asked what kind of zombie she was while laughing at her. Zombie was disappointed. He then continued laughing. The two chiefs were asking for help. He then shouted, Mommy, and told them that they didn't want to die. The scientist was stopping to laugh when he saw another one had arrived. Zombie was trying to save them. The scientist wasn't worried because his strength is quite formidable and unmatched, and he cheered for his varmint. A little varmint was looking at Zombie. Zombie asked if he remembered him. They are scared, and they are wondering what would have happened to them if he hadn't gone down Zombie. The scientist was worried because the variant was stopping to move. Zombie said to him that he told him to stay at home, and he asked him for an explanation. He remembered when Varmint faced him last time. Last time, he called him weak and feeble. She asked what they were discussing, and he replied that he doesn't know, but it seems he peed his pants. In panic, he peed on it. The scientist asked what he was doing, and he declared to him to attack him. Zombie was standing, and Varmint didn't talk. He flashed to his mind what happened last time. He asked him what he was doing and why he was scared of Zombie. The little four eyes didn't know that the Varmint was remembering that because he had an undying body. He was ripped into shreds, turned into sashimi, and left to dry on a tree for over a hundred years. He told him that he needed to attack him, but he said that he didn't want to fight him. He told the scientist that if he wanted to attack him, he should fight him by himself. They were shocked by what he said, and they didn't talk. This was the first time such a thing had happened to him. He asked how he got rid of his control. He says that he has given up on that route, and he needed to come down. It was cloudy, and there were several sounds that might have come from the air or a helicopter. He declared that the president was here. President Lanky asked if he was sure if her brother Faye was down there. He said yes, and there are six floors, and the total area is over 11,000 square meters. President Lanky was shocked by the 11,000 square meters, and President Lanky asked how long they would have to search the damn place for. The mass was standing while holding his sword, and he declared that the problems could be solved using absolute and insurmountable amounts of strength. President Lanky was trying to stop him from going as planned, but he continued. Blue hair was shouted because he was reckless. He threw something that caused an explosion. The city had an explosion, and he asked, isn't it faster than taking an elevator? The President Lanky was annoyed with him and she told him that he wasn't using his brain. She then asked if that was a trap and what they would have done. The man said that in front of absolute power, all schemes are useless. He was leaving, and he was jumping into the helicopter. The soldiers were checking the area. The soldier was ordered to report to Chief Gang that there is no one in Area 1 and to Chief Kin that there is no one in Area 2. The man was annoyed because they escaped, but he replied to him that he sealed all routes in and out of the city, be they land, water, or air not even a mosquito can get past. One sunny day. He asked why they needed to wait while they got to go down and catch the bad guys. She was annoyed because if they worked together, they were not any weaker than them. She tried to stop President Lanky from becoming irritated. She said that they were superiors after all, but she cursed them. At the same time, on top of the building somewhere, the scientists were busy planning, and Brother Fay ordered that plan to be executed. The man was standing in front of the notes that were written in Zombie King inside. 
He was wondering about that. He got the notes. He read the notes and there was a zombie king inside. It's extremely dangerous. He was thinking about the last sentence. Open it if you're a man. He ordered the soldier to blow it up for him. They are here to catch people. There's no need to take any other risks. He said that they didn't fall for it. But Brother Fay ordered that plan B be executed. Brother Fay clicked the red button. The alarm went off and they ran quickly. This is what we called the trap. He said the laboratory had been opened. Brother Fay was laughing when he declared that it was time to welcome the dawn of a new great species. He ordered the elimination of all human life, including himself. They are watching to see what happens after the explosion. They are shocked and he asks if it was the zombie king. The baby zombie. He tells his comrade to be careful. It wouldn't have been a problem if it looked ferocious from the start. He thought that it's problematic only when they look weak and harmless, like a child. And he told him, don't underestimate the baby zombie. The baby zombie landed on his head. He shouted that all members must retreat immediately. The soldiers were busy running fast. While the man was attacking the baby zombie, the baby zombie was divided in the middle and they multiplied. They don't know what to do. The baby zombie was standing in the middle of the circle. The scientists said that the zombies were released while they were distracted. The zombie attack started when they attacked the city. It's far away and they can already see the zombie and there are too many of them. The man was scared and had plans to set up a defensive line. But President Lanky said that he didn't need that because her warm-up and expert work should just be left to the professionals. In an exciting scene, he used her sword to attack the zombies. President Lanky moves fast. President Lanky kicked the face of a zombie. The zombies were flying through the air. President Lanky is so strong because she can attack the zombies. The man who is eating pudding believes in President Lanky. President Lanky showed her fast-moving moves. Something dropped, and he was amazed at President Lanky. She said, if they think they can escape by causing chaos, they better think again. The scientist was surprised because she killed all the zombies that he released. He declared that if he still had the zombie with the chainsaw, the zombies spread out on the road. The man was watching while the zombies were panicking. They wear masks to prevent the virus. He was holding a photo of a varmint, and he asked if he knew him, but the zombie got angry, so he denied the paper that he was holding, and the paper was splattered. He was afraid that if they couldn't bring back the varmint in time, the king would punish all of them. He replied, don't panic because they will definitely find him. Back in the zombie's laboratory, the zombie was still standing in the middle of the circle. The two men were walking when they met a zombie and wanted to play with him. He thinks he's taunting him. The two men attacked the baby zombies. The zombies ran away. He yelled for him not to run away from him. Be a man and fight him for real. The zombie was standing in front of him. He removed his pacifier from his mouth. A female zombie came and they were surprised by it. They don't know what to do. The female zombie was sitting at the table and she was looking at the two men. The female zombie told them that they should play with her. He said that he would cut her into shreds. He tried to attack the female zombie, but she held the end of the sword. He panicked, so he called his companion and asked for help. But his companion was hurting. The man who was standing and wearing full gear was kicked with the knees of a zombie, so it made a loud sound. They are wondering about those loud sounds. They saw the top of the building explode. With the force of his kick, it splashed into them. He asked if he could help him. Blackie replied to him that he was a zombie. The Stainless Steel Academy chief, she asked what happened down there. He was hurt by hitting the zombie. He asked what he was talking about, and they looked at it. They saw the female zombie sitting in the glass. Meanwhile, on the other side of the city, they cooked chicken wings and ate them together. President Zombie liked eggs, and the red-haired girl had seen barbecued chicken and duck before, but this was the first time that she saw barbecue and egg. He handed Zombie a cup of tea. He tasted the tea, and it was a little dry for him. He was shocked by President Zombie. He declared to go call in an aircraft to deliver the best Xijing tea. President Zombie heard something, and he asked what it was. Back in the female zombie a female zombie was standing on top of the bridge. She thought that female zombies looked different from the ones we normally fight and might have a problem. She ordered her to call a truce and they need to work together to fight the female zombie. There have been explosions coming from underground, but the last one sounded a lot closer. President Zombie will look. As it soon as the female zombie appeared, Lanky immediately threw something at the female zombie. But the female zombie easily dodges it as she slowly approaches Lanky and Violet. Violet sprint against the female zombie. Even though Violet attacked from the blind spot, the female zombie had advanced fast reflexes. Violet stumbled, while the female zombie makes fun of Violet's slow response. But Violet didn't let herself fall so she instead kicked the female zombie as a defense. The kick was so fast that the female zombie only saw a silhouette. Violet successfully hits the female zombie. 
Unfortunately, Violet's strength wasn't enough for the female zombie. Violet immediately backs away to think of another defense. Lanky then swooped in to use her weapon against the female zombie. But from every single spot and angle, the female zombie could still dodge all of the attacks. The chief saw the ruckus the female zombie was making from afar. He hoped for Violet and Lanky could stall a bit of time. He only needed two minutes. As he prepared for his backup suit. As he summoned the suit, his whole body was covered with steel. The female zombie saw the chief's transformation that she thought it would be more interesting to fight him instead. His transformation was instantly completed. He called his transformation as the Heart of Steel, Mark I. Meanwhile, Violet was infuriated with the way the female zombie was looking down on them. The female zombie stood still in between as Lanky and Violet attempts to counterattack at once. The two of them felt insulted since the female zombie was just chilling. By their surprise, the female zombie suddenly showed her long tongue. Lanky and Violet was left speechless, but the truth was, the female zombie also transformed into a gigantic buffed form. As the female zombie smacked the ground, the force made Lanky and Violet flew away near the female zombie. The female zombie turns into a giant devilish man, but the chief even dared the giant zombie to come at him. Meanwhile, Violet and Lanky felt so weird towards the zombie that Professor Jamie just made. Even Violet was too speechless by the overpowered creature, until the giant zombie and the chief had a face off. The two of them slowly approaches each other. The two of them declared a battle with pride in their soul as an opposite entity. The two of them instantly clenched their fists to give S mighty punch. Despite the size differences the chief doesn't wish to give up. Their fist clashes to each other. That it created a massive explosion which also affected Violet and Lanky. Zombie and Dawn also saw the explosion from their whereabouts. After their counterattack, a silhouette of a man appeared in the thick smoke. After their collision, the chief lost an arm even some part of hit ribs. The giant zombie declared his opponent's defeat. But despite trembling from extreme pain, he still doesn't want to admit his loss. The giant zombie laughed that it seemed like their battle will continue unless one of them sees the doors from hell. Zombie and the rest went where the ruckus was at. But the first thing that zombie noticed as they arrived was a familiar smell. He still couldn't name it as he gazes at the city. Back to the giant zombie. He revealed that he still got more transformation he could show for the chief to give up. The man was in shock. All of a sudden, the giant zombie grew a hair, and his muscles shrinks. On his transformation, he turned into a man in his adolescence with dark stones on his left arm. Even the scientist was concerned that their creation was uncontrollable, but for Professor Jamie, it was perfect. The man was overly confident that he doesn't think it would be necessary to continue the fight. The chief curses at the zombie and still uses his remaining energy to fight. Luckily, Violet and Lanky also gave him a hand to defeat the Zombie King. But terrifyingly, the Zombie King with advanced analysation could see their moves and tactics. And with a one single flick, everyone who's near the Zombie King got swayed by the strong forces of the wind. The three of them was affected especially for the chief who lost a limb. Even the windows from every buildings got shattered by the single flick. Lanky and Violet couldn't stop coughing. The force was too strong that it sent them flying until the two of them landed in front of Zombie and the rest. Zombie immediately picked the injured presidents, while Don panicked for their state. And for President Bang and Vice President Chewie, they their chief being defeated. The chief who lies in the demolished ground still got pride and willing to continue the fight. The Zombie King finds it funny that his opponents still got guts to fight against him. As Zombie analyzes the situation, he immediately warned everyone to leave. Even Don got scared by Zombie suddenly being too serious. Until the Zombie King pointed at his opponents as he ordered his comrades to attack Zombie, and the rest. All of a sudden, multiple of Zombies appeared in the sight. Bang and Chewie starts to panic. While Lanky favored Zombie to declare a retreat or else they'll all be dead. Multiple Zombies dashes to attack the human civilization. While Professor Jamie laughed hysterically to present his creations. Until Zombie got mad and dropped the two presidents. Lanky who witnessed Zombie gone berserk felt like she knew what's gonna happen next. Zombie only uses one word with a high tone for the multiple zombies to scram. The zombies were all confused, yet they all listened to Zombie in a single order. The multiple zombies wait for Zombie to speak up, while the Zombie King was deeply confused on why his subordinates would listen to the enemy's order. The Zombie King couldn't figure out what was happening, but he sure was mad that their plan was interrupted. Zombie calls out for the Zombie King as he approached him by stepping on the multiple zombies to get in his mind that he is the real Zombie King. In the large city, all the zombies served Zombie like a king. They all rushes over to kneel for Zombie to step on. Violet and Rest followed Zombie's instruction to retreat while the Chief of Steel Academy was in shock of Zombie's capability. 
Zombie then grew a hair that symbolizes that he's going berserk against the so-called Zombie King. Zombie looked down at the zombie while standing on the pile of zombies. The Zombie King was too stunned to speak that Zombie just made all the zombies his slave. The chief of the Steel Academy was shocked. Especially Dawn, since it was her for time to see Zombie with hair. The Zombie King realized that he just faced his match. He even made fun of the Bayonders Academy for letting a literal zombie be their vice president. The two of them had a face-off and declared that whoever won the battle will be entitled as the king of the zombies. The zombie king dares to approach. While zombie was just waiting for the battle to start, the zombie king instantly punches zombie on the cheeks. But for zombie, he felt like he just got his cheeks poked and teased the zombie king for not eating yet. The zombie king was triggered. Until Zombie gave him a punch with strong force that even the pile of zombies flew away. Dawn screamed and still couldn't move after witnessing a shocking revelation. On that moment, the city reigns with zombies. While the zombie king flew away, Zombie's punch was too strong that he sent his opponent flying past the city. But not just a single city the zombie king had passed through. Until his body got sent on the sea. The zombie king hits a submarine that caused chaos to the people in the sub. The ship wobbled like there's a tsunami. And for the first time, the zombie king felt a pain. Even Professor Jamie couldn't comprehend how another zombie could match his masterpiece. The two evil scientists couldn't do anything but to watch the intense battle. But the zombie king was like a masochist. He enjoyed the battle despite getting his body thrown away. The two evil scientists began to panic that they couldn't analyze zombie until the zombie king swam under the submarine and carried upon his shoulders. Until Dawn and Violet looked up the sky only to see their submarine flying and about to land on the city. The zombie king smacked the submarine on zombie. He even made a clapback joke that he's already full. The submarine undemolished one-fourth of the city. But Dawn thought it would be best if they all changed their location first. Meanwhile on Agu and Blackie's side, the two of them was wielding the mechanical body parts of Chief. Chief once again lies limbless on the ground. But something had caught Blackie's attention. The chief was annoyed and thought of how idiotic Blackie and Agu for cutting the pieces that needed to be wielded and wielded the pieces that needed to be cut. Blackie and Agu stopped their business for a while as soon as they felt the presence of their king. After the zombie king hits zombie with a submarine, zombie was able to pierce through it. Zombie aims for the zombie king, and with him was a thick rope he got inside the submarine. Dawn was too intrigued that she forgot their agenda to retreat, while the zombie king enjoys his time with his match. The zombie king dared zombie to fight more. Zombie was delighted as he holds the rope. As zombie threw the rope against the zombie king, it perfectly aimed at his neck. From a tall height distance, zombie pulled the rope. While the chief of Steel Academy wasn't sure if the Bayonders Academy really recruited a zombie or a super entity, zombie sarcastically teased the zombie king for running away. The zombie king couldn't make a comeback since zombie strangling him. As zombie pulled the zombie king closer, he instantly kicked him in the face. The kick was too strong that the zombie king's face turned into a butthole. He then flew away. But he was struggling to defend himself since zombie tied a thick wire on his neck. The zombie king tried to pull the thick wire. He desperately wanted to fight back until zombie cuts the wire and made the zombie king fall from the sky like a shooting star. As the zombie king hits the ground, it made the submarine jump due to the strong force. Even Bang and Chewie forgot that they also must retreat, but they were too intrigued. The zombie king also seemed like he doesn't want to give up as he goes on top of the submarine. Even zombie was impressed with his opponent's determination. The zombie king lifts the submarine and threw zombie away to change their location. Zombie was thrown to the sea, like he was a rock being thrown. But zombie managed to land gracefully on a ship. The soldiers on the deck noticed zombie's presence, but he was mistaken as a person. Zombie waits for his opponent's arrival. He even got more serious after he was thrown away. The soldiers realized that the overpowered person who arrived was a zombie. They all panicked and decided to abandon the ship. The zombie king teases zombie that he could also throw things if he has the ability, as if like he was stronger than zombie. Agu carried Chief by holding his head. Chief panicked when he realized that every chaos that happened on that day was Professor Jamie's doing. He warned Blackie and Agu to immediately retreat. But for Blackie, there's they should be afraid of. He dared to make Chief watch the fight. Because Blackie believed that no one are able to defeat their one and only king. Not even a god has the capabilities to defeat Zombie. Back on the ship, Zombie suddenly disappeared. And by the Zombie King's surprise, all of a sudden Zombie appeared on top of him. The Zombie King lets his guard down that he didn't realize Zombie has a speed faster than him. Until he got punched in the face. And again, the Zombie King was sent flying. But this time, he was sent outer space. He couldn't tell where he was. Until he saw the ship being thrown at him. It was like Zombie just proved him that he could also throw things. 
The zombie king couldn't fight back nor move, until he was smashed on the moon with a ship on his face, and the audience got their jaws dropped. Zombie was deeply satisfied as he threw the ship at the zombie king, while the soldier behind him was already terrified of his presence. The ship perfectly pierced on the moon like it was a dart. Meanwhile, Dawn and the rest felt like it would be useless to run away no matter where they'll go. But then, the zombie king is alive, and he wasn't done yet. He yelled with all of his might, and threw the ship back on Earth. He dared to continue the battle as he returned on land. Zombie smirked as he looked up the sky. He waited for the zombie king, but he got short-tempered and decided to meet his opponent instead. Zombie jumped to outer space without noticing the innocent soldier with him on a boat. Zombie landed on the ship in outer space. He sprints to attack the zombie king as it declared for another round. But then the ship fired a weapon. The nuclear reactor explodes, while the zombie king ripped every parts of the ship, until the ship fell back on Earth. The ship turned into an asteroid falling in Earth. Everyone panicked since they're aware of the possible disaster. As the ship hits the city, the city looked like a nuclear bomb was being dropped in it. Even the boats and ships flipped over, until it causes a huge explosion. Dawn and the rest immediately hide behind a rock, until the sky became clear. Zombie landed on Earth gracefully, and same goes for the zombie king. He was mad furious since the battle goes on and yet no one was still defeated. Zombie laughed at his opponents who seemed to be struggling already. Zombie even indicated that the zombie king's injury was just an itch for him. The zombie king was offended. The two of them had a face-off and waits who will attack first. Back on Dawn and the rest, they were a bit affected by the massive explosion. Dawn hoped the battle to end, until the zombie king appeared in front of Zombie. As he attempted to counterattack Zombie, he thought of making a proposal. The zombie king thought of their battle to be endless since they're a total match. He then tried to convince Zombie to cooperate with him instead, to destroy the world together. As he pushed Zombie away, the zombie king compromised that the two of them will get a 50-50 benefit. The top of the building where Zombie landed exploded. Dawn became worried for Zombie's state, while the Zombie King waits for Zombie's response to his proposal. But then, Zombie declined the offer in an instant. Zombie has no interest in ruling nor destroying the world. Back to Blackie's side. Chief think it would be too dangerous to stay. He begged for Agu and Blackie to run away immediately. Chief even convinced the two that he already saw Zombie transform and that there's no need for him to watch further since the Zombie King and Zombie had the same level of strength. But Blackie finds the Chief to be annoying. Blackie smirked and revealed that Zombie doesn't only transform once. Chief was suddenly petrified like he just heard a revelation. Zombie looked directly at the Zombie King to make sure he got it in his head and straightforwardly told him that working with the Zombie King isn't worthy at all. Zombie couldn't believe the King Zombie has the audacity to try and convince him by offering his half, while Chief still couldn't get over with what Blackie had said. Zombie looked down on the Zombie King and assured that only the weaklings has the desire to rule and destroy the world. Zombie made a logical and humane speech, yet he wasn't heard since he's on top of the building. The Zombie King was disappointed to be turned down by Zombie, while Zombie just made a promise to teach him a lesson for at least the Zombie King could have humanity in him. Zombie then revealed his transformation when his zombie skin shreds, until his skin turned into a human. He screamed on top of his lungs with his final transformation. The shocking revelation made everyone speechless and couldn't even get their eyes off on Zombie, until Zombie became a human with deep and dark eyes. Dawn and the rest just yelled and was deeply overwhelmed to witness the full transformation. Zombie didn't say a word and stood still on top of the building. With his human eyes, he glared at the Zombie King with full disgust and waits for his turn to attack. But with just a glare, the Zombie King felt intimidated even though Zombie only stared at him. Even the Zombie King was deeply confused on that point. Back to Blackie's side. Chief was too overwhelmed at the situation that he fell asleep. But then Agu slapped him to get a grip of reality, and also, for him to witness Zombie going God mode. Agu puts Chief in a position for him to witness clearly with his eyes. Agu was just too proud of their king that they all considered Zombie as a god. Zombie still hasn't said a single word. All of them couldn't get their eyes off from Zombie as he transformed into a human. No one could even comprehend how it happened nor how it was possible. Until the weather turned dark and rains. But Violet felt like the rain wasn't normal at all. The Zombie King was furious with his fragile ego. He instantly went to counterattack Zombie while asking him if he's whether a human or a zombie. As the Zombie King attempted to land his fist on Zombie's face, Zombie only glared at him. Until the raindrop stopped in mid-air, Zombie raises his hands. Until every limbs of the Zombie King was horrifyingly torn apart that he screamed as he felt all the agony and trauma. But Zombie still doesn't stop when the rain suddenly goes back up. It was like Zombie manipulated the gravity that every living things went floating. 
Dawn was terrified that even her and the rest was affected by Zombie's power. Even the ship started to float. But Zombie goes beyond with his power that even all the sea creatures started to float out of their home. Until Zombie stopped manipulating the gravity and ended up making everyone fall from mid-air. The Zombie King lays on the ground with only his torso. He felt the amount of pain Zombie just gave him. With a terrifying look on Zombie's face, he assured that he's not just a king, but a god. After their long fight at the city, a giant cyclone built up at their location. Dawn was so shocked after seeing the giant cyclone and some of the sea creature falls down at the city. On the other side, President and Lanky falls from the ground after gravitational effect worn off. Zombie was calmly standing in front of them while he's trying to figure out some things. President was struggled to get herself up while asking Zombie. All of a sudden a whale falls from the sky that landed at Hobson Building. Both of the professor was so shocked as they saw a whale fall from the sky. The zombie king can't believe that this was possible while his limbs are gone. The professor asks Faye if he's seen a zombie king like this but he refuses to seen anything like this before. Because of zombie king's physique, he manages to stand up without using his hands. He then used his regeneration skill. His hands simultaneously regeneration after all. He was so mad while he's trying to be little zombie. He said that zombie can't kill him since the zombie kings are basically unkillable life forms and even if zombie tries to cut him into pieces, his regeneration can help him up. Zombie made a pale reaction after hearing those words. He then cast again his gravitational manipulation. Then zombie king flew close to zombie after being manipulated him. Zombie chokes him after pulling him up. Zombie lifts him up while choking after saying that zombie king might misunderstanding the meaning of death. Zombie King struggles to get out from Zombie's hand while being choked. He keeps trying to pull out himself while Zombie asking him if he need to physically destroy someone for them to die. Then Zombie glared at him while pale reaction. Zombie King screams in agony after Zombie doing something at him. However, ships have been moving to take their position to target the city. Cyclones had been rampaging the sea due to Zombie's doing. Zombie King struggling while screaming ancient out of nowhere. Somehow a robotic figure was planning into something. He orders to shoot the ship that Faye was using. He called this as 1351 encirclement of the sixth time at ending human civilization. Going back at Zombie, he's still casting an eminent energy at Zombie King to kill him from his inner soul. Zombie King was almost losing his conscience. The ships also successfully destroyed to avoid bombing the area. Meanwhile, Zombie looks different from Zombie King's perspective and sees him like a god after being beaten up by Zombie. Zombie King slowly losing his grip for his life and struggling so hard from Zombie's power. Snaps happen. After this, Zombie King suddenly stops on moving that probably shows losing his life. And turns out that Zombie didn't kill him physically indeed internally killed his soul since he was immortal. Zombie was holding the Zombie King on top of a building. Dawn and President Violet were shocked and wondering if it was over. Zombie lets go of him, and the Zombie King starts falling at a high distance. Zombie King's fall impact can be seen. The ground was cracked, and the Zombie King was not moving. Chief was shocked and wondering what was happening, seeing the Zombie King was not moving. Blackie said that he must have been scared to death by the third form of their king. Faye can't believe what he's seeing. The helicopter arrives. The boy is pulling Faye, saying all their coastal air defense boats are gone. So they should leave while they can because if they don't leave now, they might not be able to leave. He suddenly saw a man standing before him. He immediately stays away from Faye, a zombie. He was shocked to see zombies in front of them as they never showed themselves. Zombie stares at them seriously. They fall to the ground while trembling from fear. Zombie asks them if they will surrender by themselves or if they want to meet the zombie king. Zombie gives them one second to decide. The boy immediately surrendered. Faye trembles in annoyance while the zombie stares at him with seriousness. Just like that, Professor Jamie, who was supposed to be killed on sight, was captured alive by a zombie. President Violet wonders what's wrong with him, but Don doesn't know either. Zombie said that turning into that is too scary as he is a kind of zombie. President Violet tells Don to go and ask him, but Don refuses as she sees how scary he is. President Violet pushes her to go, and they will go to make her zombies vice president later. Dawn stutters while asking Zombie if he's alright, as they are about to leave now. She jumps and screams in surprise when the zombie stands and says he is hungry. Zombie said he really wants a tear-resistant shirt. Dawn sighed and saw that Zombie's completely passive again. Dawn asks him if he remembers what he did just now, so Zombie answers that he does, but it's just a little blurry. He explained that he had already lost his sense of time, but he knew that he had beaten up many weird zombies like him. But they were all too weak, so Zombies didn't bother to remember them. The boy asks Faye what's wrong when he sees him laughing by himself. 
He is laughing as he didn't expect that there was a being as strong as Zombie. Faye said that he would obtain a sample of the zombie's genes and create a being even stronger than him. Just like that, the zombie king created by Professor Jamie was scared to death by Zombie, and the incident with Professor Jamie finally ended. Someone asks Zombie if he has any problems becoming a president, and Zombie says none. They told him to remember that being a president isn't only about being strong, but you must also be able to maintain and protect your cities. They also reminded him that his title would be revoked if he could get the city's population to be at most 10 million within the time limit. They asked the zombie which city he would like, so the zombie asks if he can have the city where he caught Professor Jamie. The H-City They argued that the H-City I a deserted city, a no-man's land. If he wanted to raise chickens, you must first have eggs to hatch. They nagged that even if you have eggs, you must at least have a cell, but that place doesn't have a single human hair. So how will zombies develop it? They told Zombie if his population did not meet the requirements, his position as a president will also be taken from him. But Zombie still wants that town, so they seem to agree. They have already stamped the official letter of appointment of Zombie as president. She was annoyed when she asked them where did the Bayonders Academy find this idiot as there were so many perfectly good cities, and yet the Zombie chose a deserted one. President Violet just sighed from the stress of the commotion. After becoming president, Zombie's single regiment army was expanded to four regiments to help protect his city. On that day, a landmark moment in history was realized. The zombie children told their mom that their new home was so grand, and they also saw a human. It is a unique sight where human soldiers assist zombies in moving into their new homes. Zombie is watching from afar. Blackie reported that all their citizens had been moved into the city as per his order. Zombie said that it was good. The zombie child was surprised when the soldiers moved upon the order of attention. The zombie kid asks his mommy if they will use the smoking metal sticks on them. The soldier announces that President Zombie's orders are equal to the orders of God and President Zombie's people are equal to their people, so the soldiers will safely escort them to their new homes. The zombie child seems to understand. They are glad to have their own city finally. Zombie said that sometimes, for a race to prosper, you don't necessarily need to wage war on others. Blackie smiles as he hears Zombie's words. He asks Zombie what they should do with Varmint as he's been hanging there for a few months. Zombie told them to leave him hanging. That day on the Zombie Town Municipal Council, Varmint is still hanging at the top of the building. He cries as he admits he was wrong. He said he would be obedient from now on and didn't want to turn into a zombie jerky. President Violet is leaning on the cracked wall with bruises on her face as she says that her enemy feels like she has two completely different personalities. Dawn, with the monster's eyes, is laughing. She told President Violet that she can still fight. President Violet gets angry and immediately disappears from her current position. She sneaks behind Dawn's back. Dawn's head suddenly twisted 360 degrees behind, and they saw President Violet. President Violet got startled in surprise. She lost her focus and stumbles in the air. She landed on her hands and asked Dawn if she was still a human. President Violet's eyes widened when she saw Dawn charging an attack toward her. President Violet jumps backward away from Dawn. Dawn shoots Violet with her gatling gun. She bursts into laughter and asks Violet if she thinks she can become a president now while firing her gun. She is laughing devil while showering Violet with bullets. President Violet dodges the bullets. She moves swiftly to avoid every bullet that is aimed at her. She is irked and glances at Dawn. She charged at a fast pace towards Dawn and told her that he better show her strongest skill. Dawn roars like a monster. Her cells are improved. President Violet attacks her with horizontal slashes. Dawn asks Violet if she's even trying and mocks her about how she can use her strongest skill when she acts like this. Violet appears on top of Dawn with her sword aimed at her. President Violet managed to cut through her shoulder down her body. Dawn seems not to feel anything as she smirks. Violet wonders why Dawn didn't dodge. Violet saw her getting regenerated as her body got pulled together again. Dawn's body regenerated completely with no scratches. President Violet jumps back away from her. She thinks this is too exaggerated and wonders what zombies did to her. Dawn asks Violet now if she's worthy of being a president yet. Dawn suddenly charges towards Violet. Dawn hits President Violet and comes flying toward the wall. Violet told Dawn they should stop there. Dawn emits a smoke after hearing Violet. She asks if Violet is okay and explains that she didn't do it on purpose. President Violet asks Dawn if she's sure she is really not a zombie even after the zombie bit her. Dawn said she was not and asked Violet if she did undergo a full body examination in the lab yesterday as everything down to the cells in her body was normal and there was no change to her body. 
President Violet asks her how she explains being able to turn her head 360 degrees and regenerate herself. Dawn said that she didn't know either, but that she feels like she can transform as long as she wants to, but she doesn't feel any different. Dawn said when she's feeling down, she can give herself some stimulants and even get stronger. Moreover, she doesn't feel any side effects despite using it for so long. Dawn calls Violet and asks if something is wrong with her seeing her get quiet. President Violet gets up and tells Dawn to move aside, so Dawn asks where she is going. But Violet tells her it is none of her business as she runs away at full speed. He asks President Violet where she is going, and she says she's going to H-City with annoyance on her face. President Violet runs so fast to the airplane. They fly towards their desired destination. The plane landed in the H-City. President Violet comes out of the airplane immediately while her assistant calls to wait for him. That day at the Zombie Town Municipal Council, Zombie appointed Fur to be responsible for the Azure Flower District, while Gan will be the head of the city's police department and Lang will be the head of civil administration. Zombie called on Blackie and he immediately stood up. Blackie will be responsible for the treasury of their city and from now on, all their money will be under his management and he must take account of every single cent in the zombie city treasury. President Violet suddenly barged into their meeting. She enters the room while gasping for air. Zombie asks what brings her here. Violet runs towards the zombie. Zombie said it was perfect timing as he was just about to find her to report the current situation in the city. Violet held the zombie's head and told him to open his mouth. She placed her arm in the zombie's mouth to be bitten. President Violet thanked him and said to do whatever he wished as she ran away from the room. President Violet comes out of the building. Her assistant said she was too fast. He asks President Violet if she has forgotten about that spy and reminds her not to forget that he can control people's minds seeing Violet let a zombie bite her like that. President Violet was irked as she desired a ridiculous increase in strength and the ability to reattach body parts and never die. That's why she doesn't care what Zombie wants to do, even if he wants her to strip dance in the middle of the square. Meanwhile, Zombie seems confused about what happened. And so Zombie began to reform and develop the city he received, and after assigning work to his subordinates, the city slowly began to function. At the Zombie Fashion Store, the Zombie Lady is welcoming customers. The Zombie Hairdresser is giving a service to his customer. Zombie Realtors are doing their job on a skyscraper. Another Zombie invites everyone to look at the new houses at the real estate opening. In the zombie driving school, zombies are learning to drive cars. Zombie examinee number 54 is being called and asks what he is doing in the passenger seat. Zombie is gazing at the town from his office. He felt at peace while sipping his coffee as he began his slow life. The paper contains zombie information. She learned that his personality was a pushover, completely without any outstanding personality traits, as if he were just another passerby. So she didn't understand why the Bayonders Academy would appoint him as a city president. He asks Inspector Chen if she has heard what the chief of the Stainless Steel Academy said and explains that he was telling the Bayonders Academy to invite Zombie to become president. Inspector Chen said that it's normal for there to be competition between Academy, and it's not as if they have never seen them slander each other. Inspector Chen explained that even without his slandering, she doesn't like this zombie person either, as he doesn't have the personality of a leader, whether he is a zombie or not. She wonders if she will know as long as she takes a look at herself. That day at the North Pole, a helicopter is flying over. A cruise landed in the place. He welcomed Professor Strange upon their arrival. Professor Strange asks if he heard that they discovered the corpse of the ancient people here. So the boy says yes, and it's a dried corpse estimated to be thousands of years old. He also said that they found it while conducting some experiments, and it's buried 500 meters into the ice, but they're trying to extract it using a crane. Professor told them to be careful not to damage the body. If it is ancient, this might be the greatest discovery in all of human civilization. The man told them to be careful and bring it up slowly. Professor Strange hopes that this will allow them to have a breakthrough in their research of the ancient ones. The other people seem like they are just watching them. As the president of the archaeological department of the academy, it is Professor Strange's first time being this nervous. They are lifting it with the crane and putting it down slowly. The ice is really big while being held by a crane. A body inside the ice can be seen. It seems like a body of an ancient woman. Professor asks if it is the real thing. Someone suddenly apprehended him. His mouth was covered, and he got his neck bitten. Professor Strange gets startled and asks who they are, as they are not part of his team. People screamed for help that day. Professor Strange fell to the ground when he was kicked. 
the person told them to use Professor Strange as a sacrifice. They told him to stop struggling as they only needed some blood. The man is on his serious face while the girl laughs at them. They put down the giant ice on the ground. They started to crash it, and it revealed the ancient body of the woman. The woman's naked body has started to slowly show, and the girl puts on clothes all over her. They all hail the Blood Queen. They wish the Queen a long life and everlasting youth. The Blood Queen asks if the moron zombie is still alive. The Blood Queen stands in front of them. The man told her that the zombie was still alive even after a thousand years. He was still as lively as ever. But for some reason, after he wiped out human civilization last time, he mingled with the humans and even began rebuilding his clan. The girl told the Blood Queen to be careful while she assisted her. The Blood Queen's eyes got serious as she recalled Zombie. She is sure that she will not lose to him again. It is a sunny day at the Guangzhou Province Academy headquarter. Zombie is sipping his delicious coffee when someone calls for him. Several people are gathering inside the headquarters. A man is screaming while doctors assist him. President Violet asks what that thing is as she has never seen anything like it while the woman says it doesn't look like a zombie either. According to the database, he is a member of the exploration team from the next province. He was found waiting in the North Pole, and their province's archaeology head, who was with him, is now missing. The database said he was an ordinary person, but he injured two of their presidents when they tried to catch him. President Violet thought that they needed to invite a professional. The car arrives at the destination. Zombie comes out of the vehicle. They greet him as their president, Zombie. Inside the office, a zombie comes in as he is called to. Several people are glancing at him. Someone greets him and stretches his hand. He introduces himself as President Ying from the Iron Club Academy. President Ying asks if he was the one who caught Professor Jamie, so Zombie says yes and says hello to him. Zombie walks past him. Ying smirks, thinking that Zombie is just another psychic, while Zombie is happy that he can now shake hands with humans and is halfway to his goal. The man said that just by looking at him, he could tell he was a weakling and wondered why anyone would make him president, while the other seemed scared. The man asks where did Chief Gang go? Chief Gang trembles, thinking that if he had known the zombie was coming, he would have just stayed at home. They are discussing something at the lab. The doctor asks Zombie to look at him and asks if he recognizes what kind of monster he is. Zombie doesn't know how old he is. The doctor expects him to know this. Zombie saw that the man had bite marks on his neck, and he got startled. President Violet asks Zombie what did he find out. The man suddenly growled and gets quiet upon seeing the zombie. Zombie said it was interesting as he found out it was the doing of the blood tribe. Light suddenly flashes before the zombie, and the people around were winded away by a strong wind. The man trembles while the zombie is beside him. Zombie could have sworn that his kind, the blood people were extinct already. The people flew when a strong wind from a zombie winded them. President Ying bumps into the wall and groans from the pain. They ask what happened and why President Zombie exploded. President Violet and Dawn are quiet while ducking on the ground. Zombie could have sworn he killed every one of the blood people already. But now he understood and asked the man to tell him where Little Red was, the little girl who liked to poison him. The man burst into tears and said he didn't know anything and only became a vampire yesterday. Zombie emanates steam from his body. President Ying is sweating profusely and wondering if a zombie is an insignificant psychic. Chief Gang was startled as he knew he should have stayed home. Zombie walks away from the lab. They ask him what's wrong and what did he find out. President Violet asks what blood tribe he was talking about just now, but Zombie tells them everyone should be more careful these next few days. He is on his serious face as he thinks of the blood tribe. President Violet and Dawn are shocked to see him being serious. Zombie told them he forgot what he was about to say, and everyone fell on the ground feeling ridiculed. President Violet aggravates and asks if can Zombie's brain not function normally after he reverts to his normal estate. Zombie told them he would be sure to remember next time. While President Ying still thinks that, in the end, the zombie is a psychic. Zombie glances at his back, and they got startled when they saw him look at them. On the other hand, the Blood People told the Blood Queen that this was their home. They ask what does she think. The Blood Queen seems to be annoyed. They sat on the ground when suddenly a coin rolled towards them. The man asks if they didn't say that the cities under the government are all managed very well and wonders why beggars are still in the streets. The man picks up the coin while his eyes sparkle from seeing the money. The Blood Queen got annoyed and aggravates why they even bother reviving her when they have already fallen to this level. 
The girl burst into tears and said she didn't know how hard their lives have been in the past 1,000 years. Back when the Blood Queen turned into a dried corpse by a zombie, all of them could do nothing but watch from afar. After that, he began exterminating their tribe, and to survive and escape from his clutches, they had to play dead. And then, they didn't dare expose themselves for 1,000 years under the threat of zombies. No matter where they were, they hid as far as they could from humans and zombies. She told the queen while crying that they hadn't left this tiny alley for 1,000 years, and Lantling had even turned into an idiot. The Blood Queen said that it was useless even if they revived her. She wasn't a zombie's opponent back then. Now, she can't even touch a single hair on his body. Landling told her that she was wrong, and they revived her because they had obtained a critical piece of information recently. They found someone that could help her turn invincible. The girl said it was true that the person could help her become invincible. The Blood Queen asks who it is. The man showed her a picture of a man. Several people gathered in the headquarter. The scientists are being held so that they will not be able to escape. Zombie asks why don't they just kill him. President Violet explains that they can't yet as first. They need to find all the hidden experiments and research he planned to use against them. Second, he has a lot of spies planted among them, and they want to use him to root them all out. Zombie asks what if he escapes. President Young burst into laughter and said it was impossible. How could he run when he was already locked up like that? Ying told Zombie that since he was the one who caught him, he can bring him to take a look. This is a state-of-art prison specially constructed for him. They dug up an entire mountain, and the depth alone is over 3,000 meters. There are 1,500 floors and 100,000 armed guards. Even using an elevator would take 30 minutes from top to bottom. Then there are the rocket launchers, anti-aircraft guns, laser cannons, and as long as you can name it, they have it. And this is just the appetizer. A president is guarding every 100 floors. 30 presidents and two chiefs are watching over this place. Ying smirks and asks them how can the prisoner escapes with this level of security. They have also installed a bomb, and Professor Jamie is currently strapped to the bomb's detonator. The power of the explosion is more than 10,000 tons of TNT. As long as someone approaches him, the bomb will go off. Ying boasts that even if someone manages to free him, they die in the explosion. Even if a god descends, all he can bring back is a corpse which makes the zombie sweat in nervousness. Zombie, in his basic state, felt secondhand shame from seeing the deranged actions of the humans. Meanwhile, they are watching Ying via a smartphone in an alley far away. The Blood Queen and her people are shocked to hear all those tight securities. The Blood Queen got annoyed to know that humans tied the man to a self-detonating bomb. Ying told President Violet that Inspector Chen had gone to President Zhang's city for an inspection and asked if she wouldn't warn his little boyfriend. President Violet gets annoyed and asks why he is even telling her this. Ying said that Chief Gang told Inspector Chen that President Zombie built a city for Zombie. Whether President Zombie is a zombie or not, he doesn't care. Since Ying only recognizes the straw, President Violet seems annoyed at him. On a warm day in town, the zombie is happy that human cities are so prosperous as he walks along the street. Professor Jamie is tied to a self-detonating bomb. A food server is walking outside of their prison. He bursts into tears thinking it's all over for them. Faye is determined that he will obtain the zombie's genes. He asks what Faye is talking about, as they are going to get executed soon. Faye said no since before they obtain all of his research, they will never kill him as before they were caught. He has already instructed people to send his research data to a place that even he doesn't know. Faye is planning to make them regret keeping him alive. He explained that the zombie was too strong and stopped talking about how to get his genes, and even if they had his genes, it would still be nearly impossible to create something stronger than him. Faye said it's simple as long as they can obtain a strong enough vessel to carry the zombie's genome, it will be much easier. He told Faye not to talk about that at first since this place has the highest security, they are just ordinary people and ask how to escape. Faye seems to be in deep thought about what he said. The food server is walking outside their prison cell. The food delivery robot is set to go. The robot is coming towards him. It is feeding Faye with the food it is carrying. He was startled to see Faye's action. Faye chews on his food. He continues to chew it while inside his mouth cavity. There is a wiretap behind his tooth. Faye is quiet and serious for a moment. He asks someone where is the zombie king's corpse being kept right now. The man answered that it was being held in Dr. Yin's lab on the 200th floor. Two chiefs are guarding it right now. Faye said it was good and ordered him to follow his instructions and guard their vessels properly. Meanwhile, the zombie is walking in the street. He notices someone is calling on his phone. President Violet told Zombie that there was something he should know. She said Chief Gang from before ratted out him to Inspector Chen, and he said Zombies created a city for zombies. 
Right now, Inspector Chen is heading toward the zombie city to take a look and should already be on her way. Inspector Chen is the auditor of President Violet's province, and her job is to keep a watch on the president's lifestyle and behaviors. If she finds out a zombie is a zombie, he will immediately be fired. Zombie is sweating profusely as he wonders if Inspector Chen would believe if he said he was a human. President Violet yells at him not to act like she didn't go to his city and see all the zombies running around. She told Zombie that he knows better than anyone else what he is. Zombie got quiet for a moment. He screams, saying it's over. He wonders what he should do now and what he can do. He notices something. He saw some makeup by the window. That sunny day, Inspector Chen arrived. The plane heading to the city H has been prepared for her. Inspector Chen said that someone with such a weak personality is unsuitable to be a president, and she would find a reason to fire this zombie person. Several large vehicles fall in the sky like it is raining. Blackie saw it and was in shock. The vehicles all fell in front of the building. Zombie arrives as the vehicles continue to fall. Blackie asks him what is wrong, and Zombie says that Inspector Chen is coming to their city for an inspection and orders Blackie to distribute the makeup and have everyone disguise themselves quickly. Because if Inspector Chen finds out they are zombies, they will take the city back. Blackie was startled and immediately ordered Otako to Area D and Lang to Area C. He told them that if they didn't want to return to living in ruins, they should watch their facial expressions while their comrade lifted the large vehicle. They lift all the fallen vehicles as they are ordered to go to their zone quickly. He asks Blackie if it will work while he pounds himself with a face powder. Blackie said that the king, zombie, must have his reasons for making them do this as he puts on the contact lens. It is a sunny day in town. The zombie citizens shout under his majesty's order, zombie, to come over here and claim a set if they don't want to go back to living under the bridge. The zombie kid asks his mom what they are doing. The mom explains that the king wants them to disguise themselves as humans. The mother zombie asks to give her a set and tries the makeup on herself. The zombie kid tells his mom that he also wants to. The zombie mother told him to wait as she still put her mind on, while the child was shocked to see his mom looking like a beautiful human. Their comrades are back in the office. Agu has put on lipstick on top of his mask while Blackie is looking good in his disguise. They were shocked to see them done and thought that Agu's disguise was too absurd, but he told them it was none of their business. They ask what about them as they look like a real monster. Blackie wonders, as Inspector Chen should be here by now, but he doesn't see anyone. The two said they were all working for his majesty and wondered why they must act as pets. Blackie wonders why they are talking about as they were pets back when they were alive. They saw a plane flying in the sky. The man praises Inspector Chen for being wise, as taking the train here was brilliant. Inspector Chen said that there are only so many presidents in the Guangzhou province, so they must be close as it's very unlikely that their trip here was already leaked. She added that the best way to investigate properly is to avoid those people at the top and directly inspect the civilian. This way, they can see the true face of the president of Zombie City. He whispers and asks him why Inspector Chen hates President Zombie so much, so he answers that President Zombie is weak and a pushover. He said that other than the overseer, has Inspector Chen ever had a good impression of anyone else? She is biased against everyone except the overseer. The man told him to talk softer as Inspector Chen might hear him. Inspector Chen said that she had already heard him and said that, so what if she is biased? She explains that ever since the overseer delegated his authority away, every random cat or dog from the street could become a president, and only someone like the Lord Overseer is suitable for leading humanity and bringing them back to their former glory. Inspector Chen believes that domineering heir is only someone with an aura of dignity can be their leader. On the other hand, Zombie is in his office eating. Inspector Chen told them it was time to start working as they walked to Zombie's headquarters. The man said it's been so long since he last saw the Lord Overseer. The other man answered that the Lord Overseer had gone out exploring and he should be back soon. The plane landed while Blackie and his comrades waited for Inspector Chen to come. Blackie said that it was weird and wondered why they were not here yet as, logically speaking, Inspector Chen should have arrived by now. Agu said they must have been delayed, so they should wait a bit. They went to a store and asked someone about some things. The man asks the old man why all his products here are made of eggs. The old wonders what the man is talking about and says he can't even see him while feeling nervous. The man thought that the old man was a deaf and blind person. The other guy asks another citizen about how he did anything to oppress him after President Zombie took over the city. The man never answers as their king is super good to them, and not only do they have free houses to live in and get free eggs every month while feeling nervous. The man's arm suddenly dropped to the ground, and he was speechless. The interviewer was confused and seemed shocked as he saw the arm on the floor. In his surprise, he told the man that his arm had fallen off. 
The man picks up his arm and immediately runs away, saying he thinks his mom is calling him to eat dinner. He explained that his arm was just a prosthetic and told the man not to mind. The man left dumbfounded and confused at what had just happened. Inspector Chen nags that there's not a single sane person in this entire city as this is the first time she sees humans as retarded as zombies. She is really angry and wonders if that zombie bastard built a city for weirdos and lunatics. Inspector Chen told them to record all of this as they could use it to remove zombie from his position, so they immediately wrote it down on the paper. In the middle of a sunny day, President Zombie seems down as he gazes out the window, so someone asks him what is wrong. Ah Gu asks if something happened, and the other answers that he doesn't know either, and President Zombie just started acting like that after he ate his meal. Ah Gu was shocked when he heard President Zombie mumbling and speaking. Ah Gu pulled his collar and asked if he put anything weird in his food. But the man said he didn't know as the president said he was hungry, so they made some spicy scrambled eggs for him. Ah Gu said that it's not good as the king can't eat spicy scrambled eggs. The man asks what will happen if he eats it. Zombie is sitting in front of the window. He seems to be smiling with a menacing look as if looking at something. It was explained that chili is a stimulant to the king and he will be stuck in his berserk mode for at least one month. While on the other hand, Blackie and his comrades are still waiting for Inspector Chen to come. Blackie answers the phone, and Agu immediately says that their king ate spicy scrambled eggs, but the situation is not good. Blackie was shocked and said that he had disposed of all the chilies already, and Agu said he didn't know how they got it either, so he asked what they do now. Blackie said it's useless even if he asks him as he doesn't know what to do either. He asks Blackie if he doesn't think the king will kill the inspection team while he sweats from nervousness. Blackie answers that it is very likely. That same day, Inspector Chen told them they should go as there was nothing else to inspect in this place, and they should look elsewhere. Inspector Chen notices something above. A truck is falling down the sky. The truck fell to the ground and made a wreck. Inspector Chen was hit by small debris from the wrecked ground. Zombie lands on the truck and appears in front of them. Inspector Chen was shocked and wondered about the truck that had fallen from the sky. Zombie is in his berserk mode as he gazes at them with a menacing look. Zombie calls Inspector Chen and says he will now take her on a city tour. Some of Inspector Chen's team were unconscious and shocked as they looked at Zombie. They wonder what was that just now and who the hell is that. Zombie is on top of the fallen truck in front of Inspector Chen. He is staring at her with a scary and menacing look. Inspector Chen is surprised and asks who he is. Zombie asks how she could forget him so quickly and introduces himself as Zombie, the person she has been looking for. Inspector Chen and the inspection team were shocked that Zombie was before them. Inspector Chen said she could have sworn Zombie didn't look like this. Zombie said he just took off his mask while standing as though he was ready to attack anytime. Inspector Chen was startled and told him not to come any closer. Zombie said Inspector Chen came all this way, so he especially prepared some gifts for her. Zombie offered her some of the finest canned spicy eggs that were brought by the staff. Zombie told Inspector Chen not to worry as they don't eat people, which made her sweat and nervousness. Zombie picks up Inspector Chen along with him. He told her this place is a school zone, and there's not much to see here, so they should change the venue. Zombie jumps higher from the ground while he takes Inspector Chen with him. The men were surprised and shouted for Inspector Chen as Zombie dragged her. They fly in the sky while Inspector Chen is nervous about being dragged by Zombie. The man is shocked and wonders how Zombie jumps so high while the other tells him to stop gawking and chase after them. Blackie saw Inspector Chen in the sky while the other said she was with the king, so they should go now. Inspector Chen is screaming as they fall from above. Zombie lets Inspector Chen take a look at their city. Zombie explains that this is his city and it is over 2 million square meters in area, and they are still opening land for development, while Inspector Chen is struggling from hanging in the air. Zombie continues to explain that they have numerous white-collar workers, publicly listed company, and construction workers. There are all kinds of occupations, and they are still planning for more. They can generate billions in tax revenue for Guang Prefecture every year. Inspector Chen cries, says she gets it and begs Zombie to put her down. Zombie continued dragging her and said they should discuss law and order next. Zombie explains to Inspector Chen that they have always obeyed all the traffic rules and regulations, and no one can violate them. The truck driver was shocked as his leg fell off. Zombie is crossing the street while explaining to Inspector Chen when the truck approaches him. They were hit by the truck and sent flying while Inspector Chen screamed. The truck was also sent flying from the impact of the collision. The man notices something and glances over there. He saw the truck go flying toward the skyscraper and screamed in surprise. Blackie suddenly appears and is caught on the truck driver from the top. Inspector Chen shouts that Zombie just killed him. But Zombie said no, and it is impossible. 
He said all his subordinates are peerless powerhouses and will never let the citizens die. They are waiting in the middle of the crossroads. The men run toward Inspector Chen. Zombie throws Inspector Chen towards them. Her subordinates immediately caught her. Zombie said he knows why Inspector Chen came here and will let her go back alive today. Zombie walks in front of his subordinates and tells Inspector Chen that this city is his and no one can stop him as he lets himself clear with her. Zombie warns them that they can try cutting in if they think they have already lived long enough. The inspection team was shocked as they felt threatened. That day, in the middle of the crossroad, the man told the other that they should go back first as his legs were numb while they carried Inspector Chen with them. He is scared and wonders what is with the guy named Zombie and asks if a human can do this. He looked at Zombie and compared him to their department head as even more inhuman. Zombie gets on his way. He still wonders who said that Zombie was weak and cowardly in the report, as they need to fire that dumb person. Zombie told them they could leave before he changed his mind as they don't provide free food here. Inspector Chen calls on Zombie's attention. She said that she would admit that Zombie has done a decent job managing his city, but as a president, other than being able to manage a city, Zombie must also have a certain level of combat power. Zombie's subordinates looked at Inspector Chen with an angry face. Inspector Chen explains that only with enough strength can Zombie protect an entire city, and she still needs to see if his true capabilities are enough to protect this entire city. Zombie's subordinates held Inspector Chen and covered her mouth. Blackie seems concerned while Inspector Chen struggles to talk. Zombie stops in the middle of the road. He asks Inspector Chen about what she said. Zombie smirks as he hears that Inspector Chen wants to see what he can do. Zombie's subordinates are trembling in fear as they hear that he agrees. It is a bright and sunny day. They went to the seashore. Ah, Gu said he has a bad feeling about this. They stand behind Zombie's back, waiting for him to do something. Inspector Chen wonders why did Zombie bring them here. Zombie's shadow appeared as a demon face. Ah, Gu called Inspector Chen, whose face is confused about what she's seeing. He told Inspector Chen that whatever happens next is all on her, and it has nothing to do with them. Inspector Chen glances at Zombie and sees his menacing gaze. She is wondering about what Zombie is doing. Stones on the ground suddenly float, so he wonders what is happening, seeing the rocks flying. Rocks are also flying around Zombie as he begins to do something. His eyes are closed, and he seems to be concentrating. He opened his eyes as he transformed into his human form. Inspector Chen and his team were shocked upon seeing Zombie. They wonder what happened to him as he transformed into something suddenly. Wave whips the shore. Zombie orders the wave to stop. Inspector Chen and her team watch Zombie as he shows his power to them. The man seems scared, says he can feel the air has changed, and wonders what Zombie is trying to do. The strong wind is swaying Inspector Chen and her team. The wind got stronger around Zombie. Agu luckily caught the man so he wouldn't scent flying from afar. Inspector Chen falls to the ground as the strong wind blows her. Inspector Chen was confused and saw that Zombie disappeared in front of them. He asks where did their president go. Ah, Gu brought them a telescope to see. Inspector Chen takes a look at it and screams in surprise. She is seeing a planet. It is beyond the outer space. Zombie is on a planet that is light years away from the Earth. Inspector Chen was dumbfounded as she wondered how is this even real. Zombie got a serious look on his face as he jumped out from that planet to go to another. He jumps from that planet to go to the moon. And the moon is also a light year away from Earth and the other planets. Inspector Chen and the others were shocked and said that Zombie was too abnormal and that he was not human. Zombie stretches his hand and paw. He made a sign with his hand and clenched his fist. He sways his fist to the back and punches in the atmosphere that made a big invisible impact. Inspector Chen's team and Zombie's subordinates are shocked and shout that it is not good. Zombie punches the atmosphere from outer space, aiming towards Inspector Chen's direction. Blackie and the others are all shocked and shouts to move now. Inspector Chen's skin face is winded as the impact from Zombie's punch landed in their direction. Zombie's punch greatly impacted the earth as it landed on the ocean. The impact made a big tsunami that went through the city. Zombie's subordinate made a way for them not to be flowed by the water. Inside their office, President Violet and Dawn stumble from the impact. President Violet wonders what that was. The emergency alarm speaks and warns them that a level 12 tsunami has been detected. President Violet and Dawn take a look outside. They saw the level 12 tsunami coming towards the city. They wonder if the world is going to end. The alarm continues to warn that a level 12 tsunami and a direct threat to human civilization have been detected. The system automatically activated the level 1 defense. The tsunami is surpassing the defense. Someone suddenly came in the middle of the raging tsunami. 
Zombie landed on the ground coming from outer space. He asks Inspector Chen if she has seen enough with that menacing look on his face. The ocean water circled like a big whirlpool. Inspector Chen got really scared as she faces Zombie while surrounded by ocean waves. Zombie stands in front of her with a fearful face on his human form. It was a bright sunny morning that day. Zombie along with his company see the Inception's team department from their city. Inspector Chen is still dumbfounded by the fact that she saw Zombie's monster form. While the others said that there's no way Zombie is a human as even monsters are more human than him. The car where they ride departed away from Zombie and his crew. Agu asks if did they go overboard and wonders if will they try to confiscate the city from him. So Blackie said that he has a feeling they won't while sweating profusely. Inspector Chen went insane after returning and Zombie's city was given a silent approval. At the same time, on the other side of the planet where there's a big hole carved in the middle, some masked men are working inside, at the laboratory where experiments happen. He said that Zombie is too abnormal, while the other said that he really doesn't understand how he killed this guy. He said that Professor Jamie's case is really such a shame and to be able to create a monster of this level, he was basically trying to create a god. If only only Professor Jamie was still working for humanity, they wonder how far would they have developed by now. He said that they should not think about that and asks the other if does he think that this thing could still be alive. So he answers that it is impossible as there are no vital signs from it at all. Someone is mixing a liquid from the tube to a glass of another mixture. He remembers what Professor Jamie told him to just do as he tells him to mix CHR-47 and some secretions from the main vessel. He followed to mix then in a ratio of 7 to 1 and the zombie king only has its consciousness destroyed and the physical body is intact, so they still have a chance of reviving it. Professor Jamie told him to wait for a chance to inject the solution into the body of the zombie king. He left the room and said he's going on patrol now, so he said that they are 3,000 meters underground and asks what's there to patrol. The man gets closer to the table where zombie king lies. The two men got shocked when he suddenly injected the mixture he concocted earlier. He stabbed on the zombie king's neck who's still lying unconscious. He was suddenly slammed to the wall that got cracked from the impact. He was aggravated and asks what he has done. The zombie king suddenly opens its eye. Moments later, a large explosion happens and people are shouting. He heard it and is wondering what happened. The emergency alarm kept ringing that there's a warning. A movement starts to happen instantly. Zombie king gets up suddenly from a long sleep while the whole place is being covered with smoke. Professor Jamie orders him to kill everyone and bring them out of here. He told the zombie king that he will make him as strong as zombie. Hello guys, if you're new to our channel please hit the subscribe to be updated on our man war recaps. A plane is heading towards the big hole where Professor Jamie and Zombie King imprison. Someone is kicking the plane's window with full force. They successfully opened the door in the mid-air way. The passengers got winded inside while someone with a gun told them not to move. He told them that if all of them behave no one will get hurt, and points a gun to the pilot and threatens him not to try anything funny as they will let him go once they are done. The plane continues to fly mid-air while in the middle of a hijack. The Blood Queen arrives on the airplane. She said that they have early warning systems in place in a radius of 100 kilometers and this is their only option to get in. The man told her that they have a self-detonating bomb on Professor Jamie and asks if does she thinks that they should come up with a better battle plan. The Blood Queen is thinking of a plan. She said that there's no need as it's just some little tricks from the humans and if she can't do something like this, how can she still be their queen? All of them jumps from the plane, while the queen thinks that the only way to deal with those who rely on violence is to be even more violent than them. They all jump straight to the hole with the intent of killing all of the people inside. They saw people in the air who are planning to go inside the hole. He knows that it's a jailbreak and orders everyone to prepare to defend. The Blood Queen's troops successfully go inside of the hole. The guards shoot all of them. They all manage to dodge the bullets fired by the guards. He orders everyone to stay calm and don't panic as they still have their 30 presidents with them here. The Blood Queen's troops have landed on the way inside the hole. They wonder what's going on and if it's a jailbreak. While on the other hand, the Blood Queen is observing something. She is at the first floor above, while the others are on the 320th floor below. Some men are on the 500th floor. The Zombie King is on the 2999th floor below, and Professor Jamie is on the last 3000th floor beneath. On the 3000th floor beneath, someone is getting beat up and slammed to the wall. Zombie King passes by him and made his exit. Zombie King said he hates Professor Jamie and asks what makes him think that he would save him as between him and Zombie. It is more important for Zombie King that Professor Jamie dies. Professor Jamie seems satisfied for what he heard, while his assistant seems concerned about it. Professor Jamie tells Zombie King that after fighting with Zombie, 
Does he really think he's undefeatable by anyone else by him? Professor Jamie reminds Zombie King that he is his creation. And although he is just an ordinary human, if Professor Jamie wants him to live, he will leave and if he wants him to die, he will die. Professor Jamie threatens him not to try play tricks in front of him as he is too young. Zombie King got agitated for what he has heard. Professor Jamie tells him not to worry and as long as he help him fulfill his dreams, Professor Jamie will end his life by himself. Zombie King smirks and said that humans are indeed 10,000 times scarier than other living beings when they're crazy. He asks Professor Jamie about what he said that he could make him stronger and if he is telling the truth. Professor Jamie promised Zombie King and said he never go back on his word. Inside the hole were guarded by several men and Zombie King and Professor Jamie have been imprisoned. The Blood Queen's troops are fighting every person. They fought with each of them by the Queen's orders. Moans from the pain can be heard inside. They ask who are them and why have they come in, while guarding the entrance inside. The Blood Queen with her pawns just stared at them for a while, and never said a word. The Blood Queen took a step after she said that she doesn't want to waste her words on them. She tells them that they have two choices, hand over Professor Jamie to them and they will live and if they don't she will let them experience true power. He immediately charges at her said told her to keep dreaming. The Blood Queen seems annoyed at him. Several of them surrounded the Blood Queen and asks if does she thinks where she is at to order them to release Professor Jamie. It is still in the middle of the day while the ambush happens inside the hole. Someone's metal arm got decapitated and thrown on the ground. They ask what happened just now as they didn't see anything at all. The other guards are moaning from the pain and seems not on their right mind. Some guards plans to open fire at the Blood Queen. While the Blood Queen just stared at them with a stern face, they all shoot their gun to the Blood Queen. The bullets they shot didn't even go through the Blood Queen's body. She just poses in front of them not caring about the bullets coming in. A bullet even goes at her eye, but it just folded from the impact and didn't pass through. She smirks as she belittles the human technology, as so-so. She shoots a fire beam at them that made a large explosion. At the same time on the lowest part of the hole, where Professor Jamie imprisoned and tied to a self-detonating bomb. He wonders as they say that the bomb will explode as long as someone goes near it but it didn't go off. Professor Jamie said that there is no such thing as a perfect system and once the power is shut off, there is a two-second window before the sensors are back online. Zombie stops in front of them. He asks Professor Jamie that Zombie King is already so strong and asks if are they really going to make him stronger, as with his attitude, they would probably get in trouble. Professor Jamie said that there's no other vessels better than him. They get out of the prison. Zombie King saw something in front of him. He saw several humans are lying on the ground. The man got his arm decapitated and is moaning from the pain. He and Professor Jamie got shocked and asked what happened here. The people are lying on the ground while the area is covered from the smoke. The Blood Queen walks in front of them. She called out Professor Jamie's name. She told him that someone who couldn't even touch a single hair on Zombie's body after he entered his second phase is not suitable as his vessel. They are all shocked from what she said. Zombie King also got startled for what he heard. The Blood Queen asks Professor Jamie to use her body instead. She stands confidently in front of them. Zombie King suddenly appears in front of her that made startled. She immediately counters Zombie King attack with a punch on his face. Professor Jamie and his assistant got shocked. While the Blood Queen troops just watched them, Zombie King got punched on the face by the Blood Queen. The other saw it and was surprised. The Blood Queen's attack made a big impact. She throws the Zombie King at a fast pace. The Zombie King passes through a wall and made it crack. He landed on the wall and made it crack from the large impact. Zombie King was aggravated as he felt that was as strong as Zombie's attack and wonders how could this be possible. Zombie King saw something from the metal. He gets down from the wall. Zombie King plans to punch the detonator bomb to blow up the place. He wants all of them to die with him. The boy tried to stop him and said that this is nuclear. The Blood Queen just stood there watching. The other shouts that it's not good as he watches Zombie King punches the detonator bomb. Zombie King punches through the bomb, while he said that he knew those guy was not reliable. The bomb exploded from bottom to top. The Blood Queen raises her hand above, then move her hand below. The bomb who was about to explode earlier, was reverted back by the Blood Queen, thanks to her power. Zombie King got shocked. The same goes for Professor Jamie's assistant. The other men that are guarding the place also can't believe for what they saw. The detonator bomb got squashed by the Blood Queen. She uses it to smash Zombie King on the ground. Zombie King lies flat on the ground after. They can't believe for what they saw and with the power that the Blood Queen has. The Blood Queen said that with just that little bit of strength, how dare Zombie King call himself a king. The Blood Queen raises her fist. She got Zombie King from far afar to fly back to her. She choke him and asks to tell her how did Zombie kill him. 
Zombie King got annoyed while struggling. Zombie King got suddenly seemed scared of the Blood Queen. She looked at him with a stern face. The Blood Queen scared Zombie King with a menacing aura. Zombie King got startled by her look. He found out that she and Zombie are both monsters from the previous civilization. Zombie King screams in pain. The Blood Queen squeezed his neck and told him to know his place. The Blood Queen looked at him with a serious face. She let go of Zombie King and drops him on the ground. He lies on the ground and seems not breathing. The Blood Queen stands in front of the dead Zombie King. And just like that with the circumstances he went through. The pitiful Zombie King who was just resurrected was killed once again by the Blood Queen Red. The men got quite after seeing the Zombie King died by the hands of the Blood Queen. Professor Jamie and the assistant can't believe for what they had seen. The Blood Queen calls Professor Jamie. She asks him if she is good enough to become his vessel. She looked at him with a serious face while waiting for an answer. Professor Jamie is quiet and can't speak for a moment. He smirks and answers her of course. It is good day at Zombie's town hall. President Violet told Agu to move and don't block her as she has an important matter to discuss. Agu told her that she can't as now is not a good time to meet the king. But President Violet insisted that it is an emergency and she has no choice. She asks him to take her to see his king now. Agu said that she can't as it is too dangerous. President Violet wonders about it being dangerous and said that she does not know what he is talking about. President Violet bursts in Zombie's office and said that she has a piece of bad news. Zombie greets her while sipping on drink. President Violet got shocked when she saw Zombie. She got startled and asked since when did Zombie talk like that? Zombie asks President Violet if she doesn't think that it's more interesting to change things around every once in a while. And Zombie asks why has she come looking for him. President Violet tells him that Professor Jamie has escaped. Zombie said he knows and insulted them as a bunch of trash could never even dream to stop Little Red. President got surprised and asks how did Zombie know as it only happened 10 minutes ago. Zombie said that Little Red used her bloodline power, so he naturally felt it. President Violet wonders about the bloodline power Zombie talked about. She said that she needs to report this information to the higher-ups. Zombie holds President Violet closer to him and tells her that since she is here already, don't be in a hurry to leave. Zombie said he hasn't been able to mingle with a human peacefully in a while, and tells President Violet that they should have some food and he will show her around the city. President shouts at him not to dare try anything funny like show her around his city. She said that she will let Zombie know that she already know what he did to Inspector Chen. Zombie didn't care about what President Violet said and continues to sip on his drink. President Violet said that she doesn't have time to be playing with him right now as there's an emergency, so she needs to go back. Zombie asks President Violet if she's not at all interested about how he uses high bloodline power. President Violet got shocked and stopped for a moment. She looked back at Zombie and asks if he also has a bloodline power. Zombie looked at her with a menacing and scary look. President Violet got startled for a moment. She tells Zombie that she will go on with him. In the middle of the day at the hospital, the medical team are taking the two men to resuscitate. The doctor said that he is still breathing. He stared at the man for a moment and got quiet. He got closer to him and asks what does he want to say. He told him to call the department head. Professor Jamie and his assistant went to hide somewhere. The Blood Queen lies there while they examine her body. Professor said that it's incredible as this is his first time seeing such a stupendous body, and it is completely unscientific. He asks if they are not conducting experiments randomly, and if can his genes really be used to improve their queen, so they better not hurt her. He told him to relax as Professor Jamie's research is at the pinnacle of all human beings. Professor Jamie said that there's already been a successful case before, but they were all enhanced by Zombie himself. Although the Blood Queen is not a human, there shouldn't be any problems from what Professor Jamie can see and now, they only need Zombie's genes. He asks Professor Jamie if he is not expecting them to go to Zombie to pull one of his hair. Professor Jamie said that he is not dumb enough to send them to their own demise. They got quite and hesitant for a moment. She asks Professor Jamie how will they get Zombie's genes as Zombie's not just going to gift it to him. The Blood Queen just look at them with a stern face while listening at their conversation. Professor Jamie's assistant laughs and searches something in his coat. He showed it to them and said that something as simple as that can't stop them. The both of them got shocked and asks how did he get that. Professor Jamie explains that there is a human who got zombies genes and to see if she had actually turned into a zombie, she underwent a full body examination. He said that he had one of his people draw a vial of her blood, so they thought that humans are scheming when they heard him. He seems delighted that having spies within the enemy is super useful. It is evening in the middle of Zombie City, and the buildings are lively with many lights. The chef brings the food in front of President Violet and Zombie's table. 
President Violet seems to found something out and said that zombie's power really doesn't fit its name. She asks what if she can't turn back, will there be any side effects? Zombie made a smirk upon hearing her. President Violet told Zombie to tell something. Zombie turns back to his normal form before even speaking. President Violet got agitated and asks if he can't finish speaking before turning back as she even gave up on a very important matter to go on a date with him. President Violet nags that Zombie can't just change a face and pretend to not know anything so he should take some responsibility. President Violet shakes Zombie to turn back now. Zombie said that he doesn't want to, plus he didn't force her to come as Violet willingly did it herself. President Violet asks the chef where are the chilies and orders him to give her a kilo. The chef says that all the chilies in the city have been confiscated by department head Blackie. Two months later, it is a sunny day at the hospital. He told her that this is the second time he has come to the hospital to see her. He said that he asked to send the message before he lost his consciousness. She told him to relax as she used their satellites to send the message as soon as she got wind of what happened. She even labeled it as a red level emergency. He lies on the bed with an oxygen to support him. She said that he is all really useless as there were so many of them and a voice activated nuclear. And yet Professor Jamie was taken away by a single woman. He said that their opponent this time was different. The nuclear obviously went off, but she somehow managed to suppress it and brought it back to normal. And she's not someone from this era. She said that she knows and she already sent the message out, so the department head should have already received it. The clouds are winded in the sky. Several metals equipment are stored somewhere. Someone said that who would have thought that there was a city buried under here. And their technological advancements are not low either. It's a shame they got destroyed. Someone tells on the radio that they got it and understand. They report to the department head that there's an emergency. They saw a man standing from afar. There's a body of a person that seems to be burnt while sitting on the ground. The burnt body just lies there under the discovered underground city. He told the department head that there was an emergency about Professor Jamie who was caught recently and has just escaped. He glances in a direction and seems to be shocked. He stuttered as he wondered about it. He was told that the body was the remains of a person from ancient times. He explained that this corpse has over 134 fractures, as if it was broken by some kind of a monster. He glances around and seems to be observing his surroundings. The department head explains what's scarier is that all the remains here were burnt to the limit, which is also why their corpses didn't rot even after a thousand years. They are basically empty shells, and they are of no value to research at all. He said that there seems to have been traces of a big battle here. He seems amazed at their level of technology. He wonders what kind of monster could have done this. The department head said that there was nothing else to find there and asked for the emergency he told him just now. He said the department head that the Beyonders Academy recently recruited a new president who caught Professor Jamie. He explained that for some reason, Professor Jamie, who had just been caught, managed to escape again. Many presidents were also hurt during the process, and right now, the HQ is in a state of emergency. He told the department head that their available combat power was severely lacking. After hearing all of the reports, the department head said to him that they should go. The man suddenly wonders about something he saw. The ground seems to be emitting some kind of smoke. They notice that the equipment underground appears to be working all of a sudden. The man was shocked. The same goes for the department head, and he glances around. They all look in the same direction and notice something. A hologram hooded figure suddenly appears in front of them. The man was shocked to learn that the technology underground can still function after a millennium of degradation. The hologram figure stands behind the burnt body and says that this is his first time seeing a human with such a strong physical body. The man told the department head to be careful. So, the department head asks why he is panicking as it's just a projection. The projected figure seems to be getting static in front of them. The hologram figure told the department head that he could make him even stronger as long as he bows on his life to protect human civilization. The burnt body didn't move while the hologram figure stood behind it. The department head said that it is only natural to protect human civilization so there is no need for the senior to remind him. He told the hologram figure that he just wanted to better understand the ancient humans. So, he asks the hologram figure how did they end up getting annihilated. The hologram figure projected another one over him. The two men look up and wait for it to show something. The hologram figure shows them a picture of zombie. The hologram figure was quiet for a moment while showing them the picture. He flinches and asks the department head if the hologram figure is for real. A thousand years ago, the Earth did not look like this, with only two large continents. The Earth of that time was separated into seven great continents and eight great oceans, and there were over 100 countries. They were glorious. For the sake of increasing humanity's power, they gathered all of their resources. 
and have long figured out the technology needed to build starships. Their technology level achieved an unprecedented height. At that time, they even fought aliens, but even their advanced technology was nothing in front of them. As for the monsters hidden deep beneath the ground, they are not worth mentioning. The hologram said that this zombie was the only one they could not win against. The man asks the hologram why while stuttering. The hologram figure told them it was because of him, pertaining to zombie's picture on the projection. Hello guys, if you're new to our channel please hit the subscribe to be updated on our manwa recaps. The two of them suddenly got quiet after hearing what the hologram figure had said while looking at zombie's picture. The man asks the department head if does he think that the hologram figure is tricking them as this guy doesn't look like he is strong at all. The department head told him that the ancient people would not joke about something like this, and asks him if he has ever thought of the reason why they have been fighting with the zombies ever since they were born. The man said that the reason why they built so many academies was to resist the zombie, and despite them constantly suppressing them, they aren't able to completely eradicate them for some inexplicable reason. So, he wonders if this guy is the reason why. The department head asks the hologram figure how does he think they should deal with such a terrifying monster. The hologram figure said that his time is limited, and he is nothing more than a shadow of the past, surviving by turning his memories into an AI. He told them that back then, they were only focused on improving their technology, but now, they walk a different path from them. The hologram figure said that he never thought that the physical body of a human could also reach such a high level, and told the department head that he had shown him hope. A door is suddenly opening. The hologram figure said the department head that with his physical body, in addition to their technology, they can defeat him as he shows them a golden gauntlet. The department head was seemed to be shocked and asked if this was the technology of the ancient people. The hologram figure told him to remember that no matter what race appears on Earth, the zombies are their greatest enemies. The man seemed nervous and hesitant, but the department head told him to keep it. Department head thanked the hologram figure and said that they would not disappoint him. The hologram figure finally disappeared behind the burnt body. The department head told him that they should go as the rest of the equipment here is useless. The man asks if they are going to find the guy on the screen just now. Department head said no as they needed to deal with Professor Jamie first. He said that with how big this world, finding a single zombie is not an easy task, as it is like searching for a needle in a haystack. It is a bright and sunny day. President Violet is talking to someone over the phone, and she told them she got it. President Violet told Zombie that the department head was coming back and he called everyone for a meeting, so she told Zombie that he also had to go. Zombie is startled and wonders why he is also included. Zombie thinks about the department head and wonders who is that. Some time later, at the laboratory, Professor Jamie is watching his experiment and waiting for the parts a bit more. He laughs deviously as his experiment finally gone to a success. Blood Queen is inside of the green water of Professor Jamie's experiment. Blood Queen floats inside while Professor Jamie is performing an experiment. They are waiting for the Blood Queen's experimentation. He said that the entire Blood Tribe only had a single coin left. As the steward of the Blood Tribe, he won't be able to feed all the members even if he works 10 different jobs a day, as even this coin was earned by him begging. Landling burst into tears when he said that he wanted to die. Someone tells Landling not to be depressed and asks if he has forgotten who they are. He tells Landling that they have the skills and persuades him to do some side occupation. Landling told him not to play around and asked what kind of side occupation they could do. So, he told Landling they should rob a bank. He said that on his way here, he saw a bank. He saw that everyone inside was slow and clumsy, like snails. It takes them 30 minutes just to withdraw some money, and this is his first time seeing such an inefficient bank. He told Landling that with their skills, they could settle the matter in 10 seconds as long as they were quick enough they wouldn't be able to catch them even with a rocket. He said that they would run once they got the money and promised Landling that with their speed, they will be fine. Landling smiles deviously as he is persuaded by him. It is a good sunny day at the Guangzhou province headquarters. The man salutes as he tells the department head that all the presidents have gathered and they can start the meeting. Department head wears his helmet to get ready for their way. They go on their way and ride a car. Zombie and President Violet along with the other are waiting for department head's arrival. On the other hand, the Blood Queen's experimentation is still ongoing. Meanwhile, someone with a pig head is standing in the middle of the street and seems to be waiting for something. The man, together with Landling is sitting beside the street while observing something. Landling glances around the place and watches as everything goes the way. A vehicle arrives and Landling says that it is slow as he seems to be bored from waiting. The man inside told Landling that they could set out now, so Landling got in the vehicle. Landling asks how are the preparations, and he tells them that they must not have any accidents while preparing his gun. 
Someone with an eagle mask told him not to worry as they had scouted the place. They explained to Landling that it has the smallest amount of people, and they laugh in arrogance while saying that when it comes to robbing banks, they are professionals. On the other hand, Blackie is having his coffee while looking out the window at a high place in the building. Blackie smiles when someone tells him that the financial reports of February are out. Landling and his companions wear head masks and go on their way to rob the bank. They went inside the bank to finally do their plan. The bank that Landling and his companions are going to rob is revealed to be Zombies People's Bank. The staff said that they have finished all the calculations, and their current assets are valued at $435.5 billion. Blackie told him to go through the accounts again as they must not make any mistakes. Blackie said that as his majesty's subordinates, they cannot afford to make even a single mistake with the city's finances. The man understood and conformed to Blackie's order. Landling and his companions are inside the bank and tell everyone not to move and that they all better behave themselves. Landling bursts into laughter as he takes all the money, saying they are rich. Blackie sees a smoke and asks what's going on over there. The car runs and jumps at a fast pace while Landling waves the money, saying they will never have to live a life of poverty anymore. Someone told Blackie that something was not good, as someone just robbed one of their banks. Blackie got startled as soon as he heard the news. The car where Landling and his companion ride stopped somewhere. Landling is happy as he thinks they finally have money. Someone called Landling in a terrifying aura. Landling took a look out the window to find who was calling him, and he suddenly felt something. Landling saw Blackie standing at the top of the building and seemed to be looking towards their direction. Landling sweats profusely in nervousness as soon as he saw Blackie. Landling curses at the man and hastily asks, what was the name of the bank he made them rob just now? He stuttered while saying that he didn't know as he couldn't read. Someone beside Landling told him that the name of the bank was Zombies People's Bank. Landling was dumbfounded as soon as he heard the bank's name. He sweats profusely while looking out the window towards Blackie's direction. He was startled as he saw something that got him scared. Blackie is looking at him with a menacing and murderous look. Blackie is standing at the top of the building and black things are coming out of his hand. Landling and his companion were startled as they saw Blackie is aiming for them. Landling asks him what is he waiting for and tells him that Blackie is the most mysterious subordinate that Zombie took in around 800 ad. Blackie said that he doesn't care what they or their queen are thinking. Blackie jumps from the top of the building while clenching his fist aiming at them. Blackie in his mantras look told them that if they want to live, they better return the money. The ground below where Blackie stands began shaking. Blackie jumps so high that the impact can be felt by the whole building. The cars outside got carried away by the impact, so they flew in the air. The employees inside the building were also stopped from working as the impact shook them greatly. Blackie gathered all of the vehicles near the building. Landling and his comrade are startled as they think that this is too exaggerated. The driver told Landling that the money they stole this time wouldn't be enough to repair this car. The man watches what is happening and says that it's over as he sees that Blackie has completely lost his mind. Blackie stands in the middle of the daylight while chasing the money that Landling has stolen. Landling told his comrades to split up to go back and say to the queen that they had caused trouble. Landling stands over the car and gets on his fighting stance while saying that he will hold Blackie back here. Blackie tells them that no one is allowed to live, while Landling says that their position is both as stewards, so he wants to see just how much stronger Blackie can be. Blackie suddenly comes and punches Landling while telling him that he is not qualified to be on the same level as him. Blackie's fist digs on Landling's face as they fly in the air. Landling's two comrades called for him as they tried to run away. But Blackie sent them flying in the air while calling for help. It is a bright day at the Guang District Headquarters. President Violet and Don along with the other people have gathered inside. Department Head stood in front of them, and he was greeted. Department Head told them that he had received the message about Professor Jamie's escape, but before that, there's an important matter he must announce to everyone. Department Head clears his throat first before making the announcement. His comrade stands beside him waiting for the announcement. They showed them the golden gauntlet that they had received from the hologram figure. They saw it and began asking what is it, while the others wondered about it being a golden right arm. Department head told them that this is a piece of technology from ancient times. They were shocked to hear it. The others were surprised to have learned that it is an ancient technology. President Violet flinches upon hearing the news, and the others seemed amazed. Department head said that this was something he found in the deepest part of a canyon. He explained that by the time he got there, any useful information about the ancient civilization had completely degraded. He laughs and tells department head that with the ancient technology, Professor Jamie and the perverted streaking woman will not be worth mentioning anymore. Department head said that they do not need to use this against Professor Jamie as it will be saved for an even bigger threat. 
Department head told them that according to the descriptions left behind by a projection of the ancient people, there is an even scarier monster living on this earth. He said that the ancient civilizations were wiped out by this very monster resulting in their disappearance. They wonder about the monster. President Violet asks if he is not kidding and if he is saying that there is a monster here on earth that could wipe out the entire ancient civilization. Department head said that it was correct and the ancient person emphasized that they must treat this monster as a threat of the highest level. Department head said that it was a monster that wiped out an entire civilization, so they must be extremely careful. President Violet asks if does a monster like that really exist and where is it now? Department head said he doesn't know as the ancient person didn't say much, so that it could be anywhere right now. He told them that they have to be vigilant. Zombie asks department head how do you use this thing? Department head explained that although the ancient person didn't say anything, you should be able to tell just from looking. He said that he has tried it already, and all you have to do is wear it on your hand and press the button in the middle. Department head is in the middle of saying that they need to find this monster and eliminate it, but he suddenly stops. He seems to be realizing something. He looked at the person beside him and was startled as soon as he saw him. Department head was quiet for a moment while looking at him. Zombie smiles at him and wonders what he is staring at. Department head curses in surprise for what he sees. Department head immediately goes to the gauntlet, while the others wonder what is wrong. Zombie was quiet for a moment, clueless about what was happening. On the other hand, Lamling is flying in the air. He crashed at the headquarters where the presidents and department heads had gathered. They were all surprised when something suddenly crashed inside the headquarters. The place got smoke from the impact, while department head got the gauntlet. President Violet wonders what is going on. The place got covered in smoke from the impact of the crash. Lanling crashed inside and seemed to be knockout. On the other hand, someone is coming towards them. Blackie landed somewhere by following Lanley. The headquarters building got a large hole from the impact. Blackie stands at the top of the building while looking at a direction. Lanling struggles to open his eyes and asks his majesty, Zombie, to save him. Someone asks who he is, but they don't know as they have never seen him before. President Violet sees Blackie and recognizes him as Zombie's subordinate. Zombie sees Blackie and wonders about what's happening. The man gave a warning as he verified that the other party was a zombie. Blackie stands at the top of the building far from Zombie's headquarters. The others rush towards Blackie to apprehend him. He said that he was too brazen for a zombie and asked if does he knew what place this was. Blackie shouts at him that this is none of his business. Blackie kicks him hard in the face. He took a step and turned to punch another man. The men who charged towards Blackie were all sent flying by him. The man was sent back flying by Blackie inside the headquarters. He wonders what that thing is, while the others wonder why they are always the ones getting beaten up, as even though they are all presidents, they seem to always act as cannon fodder. Dawn was surprised and said that Blackie was in another league compared to the one that had a chainsaw for hands. The man, together with Lanling got buried in the wall by Blackie. Blackie floats in the air while black things are coming out of him. He wants to kill all of them inside the headquarters. Dawn wonders what are the black things, so President Violet tells her to stop and not to touch them. Zombie charges towards Blackie with his fist ready to punch. He punches Blackie hard in his gut. Zombie punches Blackie hard in his gut, and the impact can be seen in the air. Blackie irks as he feels it hurts. The people inside the headquarters have been sent flying by the great impact. Dawn and President Violet crash into the wall. The man told the department head about the new president's strength, so department head knew as he saw it. Department head wears the gauntlet and says that the strength of a president is like an ant in front of him. He said that the ancient people were right as he saw that Zombie was even stronger than he thought. Zombie and Blackie landed somewhere. Blackie coughs from Zombie's punch. He asks what Zombie, his majesty, is doing here, and Zombie tells him that he cannot kill them. On the other hand, department head used the gauntlet, and it began striking lightning. Zombie told Blackie that this is the headquarters and they are the ones who gave them the city. Zombie seems to be noticing something. A black spot started to appear in front of the sun. The black thing starts covering the sun. The man asks the department head what is that, but he says that he is not the one who did that. President Violet is wondering if it is a complete solar eclipse, while the others are in shock as it becomes completely dim everywhere. The sun got covered, and it seemed to be a complete solar eclipse. The citizens have gathered outside and wondering what is going on. Blood Queen is flying in the sky looking over them. The citizens saw that there was a person up there and wondered why did the sky suddenly went dark. Department head just stared and observed what was happening. President Violet asks who she is, while the others recognize her as the woman from before. Blood Queen laughed deviously and said that she was invincible. Several people have come. They have come for Lanling. Lanling is buried in the wall while crying and begging to be saved. She ordered the others to get rid of them and save Langling. 
They attacked department head, but he immediately countered them and gave them punches. The headquarters building made a crash from the impact. Blood Queen saw one of her people sent flying and crash at a building. She stared at them with a serious look on her face. Department head said that things were about to get chaotic, so he told them to evacuate the city and leave the rest to him. Blood Queen told him to mind his own business. Department head charges towards her and tries to land a punch using the gauntlet. Blood Queen got annoyed by his sudden attack. She countered a kick at department head. They all got shocked and wondered how is that woman so strong. Blackie told Zombie that they are fighting. Zombie blocks Blackie and tells him that it is none of his business. Department head jumps so high above the sky toward their position. As they are fighting, a lunar eclipse was starting to disappear. Department head landed on the ground while wearing the gauntlet and it can be seen that it starts to shatter. He was angry after receiving the information that Zombie were the high threat for them so he wanted to get rid of Zombie. The Blood Queen notices him and whines about being audacious of the department head. Violet, Lanky and Dawn was confused about the department head's action after what he said about getting rid of Zombie while department head was launching an attack. He starts to charge an attack while wanting to settle all their fight at once. However, the Blood Queen moving towards them while agreeing to their fight. Meanwhile, Zombie is watching them from afar and seems to be wondering at something. Blood Queen flies towards Department Head as she said that that is exactly what she wanted to do. Both Blood Queen and Department Head charges towards each other. Blood Queen comes rushing with her fist ready to smash Department Head, while Department Head's fist with gauntlet is also ready to strike Blood Queen. Department Head landed his fist at a fast pace. Dawn and the others got winded by the impact of their colliding punches. Department Head's fingers got smashed by Blood Queen's one single punch. Department Head was sent flying to a far place. He screams while being carried in the air. Department Head landed on the building and got it cracked. Department Head tries to get up while coughing from the impact of his landing. Blood Queen looked at him with a stern look as she stands from afar. Department Head curses at this ancient technology and thought that this thing is a complete sham. Department Head said if he had known, he would have just done it himself. Blood Queen said that Department Head is the human with the strongest body she has ever met in the past thousand years. And had it been 1,000 years ago, with that broken piece of tech, the outcome of their battle would have been uncertain. Blood Queen said that it's a shame as she looks over at Department Head. She clenches his fist and said that she will have to put Department Head to rest. President Violet suddenly appeared behind the Blood Queen. President Violet comes encircling the Blood Queen. She suddenly got distracted by her. President Violet stands at the other building and told her that she thinks she got the wrong opponent. Blood Queen curses and asks who is someone that goes there. President Violet stands proudly and told the Blood Queen that her opponent is her. President Violet's eyes glows red that looks like zombies. She was shocked to see it and wonders what is that. The Blood Queen also got shocked and wonders about it. Meanwhile, she is calling Lanling while flying in the air. Dawn suddenly comes and get a hold of her head. They crushed at the top of a building. Dawn is also in her zombie form while grabbing the girl's head, while she is asking Dawn who are them. Blood Queen glances around and notices them. Dawn is dragging the girl along with her, while the girl is telling her to don't think they can get away with this. The three of them stands at the top of the buildings. President Violet has seemed to be also transformed into a zombie judging by her looks. President Violet is standing at the top of a building while holding her sword. Meanwhile, Department Head is still struggling from the impact of his landing earlier. The guy said he lost consciousness just now and wonders what did he miss, while the others saw President Violet and thought that something is wrong. The girl curses Dawn and told her not to look down on her. She snatches away his hand from Dawn to escape. The girl immediately jumps away from Dawn. Dawn smirks while looking at the girl. She said that she is not some small fry and told Dawn not to dare treat her like a pipsqueak. Dawn laughs at her and told her to prove it. The girl charges towards Dawn with his fist ready to punch. Dawn immediately countered her attack and kicks her on her jaw and mocks her if this is the best she can do. The girl wobbles from Dawn's kick. Dawn laughs as she started to crawl on the ground and making it cracked. They both jumped to the sky. Dawn managed to punch the girl on her face. They got shocked and wonders when did Dawn become so strong. The girl stands upside down while cursing at Dawn. She managed to stand at the cliff while using her one hand. She seems to be struggling while holding her post. She can't handle it anymore and got let go. She landed and uses her blood clone to make several copies of herself. But Dawn seems to have already know of this concealment technique. Dawn charges towards her and managed to kick her in the guts. She dissipated her concealment right away. She moaned in pain and wonders if Dawn is really a human. On the other hand, Blood Queen seems to have projected something. Meanwhile, President Violet is warming up her hand with her sword. She stands proudly from afar and sways her sword backwards. President Violet's sword sways impact have made a cut towards the buildings of the city behind her. Even Zombie's headquarter got sliced, and the people inside got shook from the impact. 
They thought that this is too exaggerated and he wonders if Violet was always that strong. He refuses to believe as he thought that it does not seem right, as he wonders why her condition reminds him of something. Blood Queen seems to have understood something when she saw Violet. She said that it turns out that she is also someone who has been strengthened before, but she told Violet that she is no the one she is looking for. Blood Queen says she is looking for zombies so that she can avenge the humiliation from back then. Blood Queen closes her eye, then she opens it again. She seems enraged as she said that she has endured thousand years for this moment and told Violet she can easily torture her to death with her strength. Blood Queen told Violet that she is not her opponent, and suggests her to step out of the way. Meanwhile, President Violet seems not to care for what the Blood Queen says and still stands from afar. President Violet said that Blood Queen is right, as her current strength is no match for her, and even if she used stimulants, she won't be able to beat her. However, President Violet told her if that power is all that she is relying on to beat that petty fellow, she will have to disagree. President Violet wants to show the Blood Queen something fun. Blood Queen wonders about what Violet said that is fun. President Violet touches her face ready to show the Blood Queen what she is talking about. She wants to show her second form. President Violet's face skin has started to crack and disappear little by little. President Violet seems to be transforming to her second form. They are shocked and wondering what is she doing now. President Violet started to transform as her body began to react. The Blood Queen seems shocked and speechless while seeing President Violet. President Violet got encircled by pink smoke as she started transforming in front of the Blood Queen. The people inside the headquarters got also winded by President Violet's colored smoke. Blood Queen got eye widened as she saw something. President Violet's face transform into a horned zombie face. She got a long and sharp horns on her forehead and another two at each side of her cheeks. The headquarters is emitting smoke, while the people inside are all shocked and can't believe for what they are seeing. The Blood Queen was shocked and startled for what she saw, while Zombie and Blackie were also surprised to see President Violet's transformation. Dawn seems also surprised while the girl was shocked to saw that President Violet can still change forms. Blood Queen's eyes are shocked as she wonders that there's such a thing. She seems agitated as she reminded of something happened again and again. President Violet asks Blood Queen if she is contemplating her life, so she reminded her as Blood Queen also feels like there is no need for useless words between them. The Blood Queen conjured something on her hand. She charges towards President Violet along with the weapon she conjured. President Violet touches her sword. Blood Queen is attacking her from the above while telling her that she is right. Blood Queen attacks President Violet while saying that only the weak use words. President Violet holds her sword and slashes her hands to wipes her blood on it. She used her blood to enhance her blade. She enhanced it into a red blade cleave. Blood Queen was suddenly petrified and her face splits into half. President Violet sways her sword while Blood Queen is still far. President Violet made several slashes using her sword. She cuts through blood cells and made a mess out of them. President Violet cuts till Blood Queen was minced into pieces. They are shocked to see what President Violet did. While Landling and the girl cries for their majesty's fate, President Violet got rained by the, the Blood Queen's pieces. She still stood there and seems to be waiting for something. He reported that it seems like President Violet has destroyed every cell in the Blood Queen's body. He can't believe and asks what kind of joke is this. She stared at President Violet seriously as she thinks of something. Department head was also speechless for what he saw. President Violet said she knows that she is not this frail and wonders if could it be that she thinks she can sneak up on her. The Blood Queen's cell is restoring, and the blood began recollecting from above. The blood that dropped beneath President Violet have also goes upwards. Blood Queen's minced body began recollecting over President Violet. Her hand got built up again from the bone to the skin. Her body seems to be restored. Blood Queen stands naked in front of President Violet after her whole body got in one hole again. They were shocked and continue to wonder if the two of them are still human. Zombie notices that Red is about to get serious. Zombie told Blackie they should change the place to watch the fight. President said that Zombie, the petty fellow told her that the Blood Queen is actually an undying old monster from over a thousand years ago. She guesses that she really can't just her with normal logic. Department head heard what President Violet and he can't believed it. He suddenly got up while his hand still broken wearing the gauntlet. She got annoyed at Zombie and told him that it is dangerous and he should get out of here. Blood Queen puts on her dress and is speechless, while President Violet just looked at her with a stern face and seemed to be waiting for her to say something. Blood Queen puts her hand up and made the sky dark. She stands firmly as she seems to be doing something with the sky. She told President Violet that they are not yet done. President Violet got on her fighting stance with her sword and said that it is good. Zombie told Blackie that this place should be safe. She comes after Zombie and calls him. Blood Queen jumps so high above. She landed on the ground and began swaying her conjured sword. She then sliced the building into pieces where President Violet stands. The building got slashed into pieces and fell. 
President Violet jumps from the building. She cuts through the building and faces the Blood Queen at a close range. Blood Queen managed to strike President Violet on her face, and President Violet raised her sword. She jumps and slices through using her sword. They were shocked to see something, while Zombie seems amazed by what he is seeing. It seems that President Violet managed to cut through miles in the city. Luckily, the Blood Queen manages to dodge this attack in midair. She got frustrated after almost dying from Violet's attack. Everyone was amazed by what they saw and even Lanky couldn't believe what she saw. She was so flabbergasted as she noticed that the Blood Queen was still alive after all those attacks happened. Somehow, the department head was confused about what's happening because the gloves won't come off. However, something flew at one of the buildings. It turns out that Violet had landed on one of the buildings in the city. All of a sudden, the Blood Demon Queen approaches her to make another attack. She kicks Violet down to her chin and it connects. While Violet flew away, she rushed towards her to make another attack. Blood Queen charges up her attack with a red aura in it. After charging up her attack, she swiftly throws the charged attack toward Violet. The other was surprised to see how powerful the Blood Demon Queen was. Violet bounces at the tall building after forcefully pushed back at her back. She then slams again from the building using telekinetic power by the Blood Demon Queen to pin her down to the building. After seeing Violet from the wall being pinned down, she holds her up after having a relief seeing she can't fight back. Lanky and the others were so shocked after what happened at Violet even though in a different form. After being pinned down, Violet seems affected after receiving the multiple attacks from the Blood Demon Queen. However, the department head was struggling from the gloves as something was happening from it out of nowhere. He had no idea what was happening. He began cursing after the glove did something into his body. Out of nowhere, he heard a voice telling that this guy was going to borrow his body first. He panicked as he had no idea of who's talking to him so he immediately looked for it and he couldn't believe that he did something impossible. He saw the ancient person that gave him the information about zombie and also the gloves earlier. He irks as he can't do anything about it. On the other side, Violet's consciousness came back again, accepting the fact that even though she transformed, she can't win from the Blood Demon Queen. While the Blood Demon Queen watches her from afar, she told her that even though she can't hurt her during their fight, Violet then jumps down from the building. She then ironically said that the Blood Demon Queen can't also hurt her while standing on her feet like nothing happened. Lanky begged Zombie that she also wanted something from him to make her more powerful like she did to Violet as Zombie was the only person who did something to Violet. Zombie immediately rejected her because of a reason of being too violent after being morphed with his genes. Suddenly a large explosion happened that shocked the whole city. Zombie, Violet, and Blood Demon Queen got confused from the sound that they heard since they had nothing to do with it. Even the others were shocked when the large explosion happened. Just a sudden, a golden hand starts to rumble from outer space while stating he's finally revived. A large foot starts to land on the earth. The figure was so large that even a building can't reach the figure. Everyone starts to panic while the other has no idea of what is happening. They were speechless after seeing the figure drop in front of them. The building that Zombie and Lanky standing up in starts to crumble into pieces as the figure landed its foot from the ground. However, Zombie was planning to do something since he had no idea of what was happening after all the scenarios happened. He then starts to jump every piece of concrete to help him maneuver his position. Zombie then starts to pick up everyone at the same time. After picking all of them, he throws them away from the area to save them up. Zombie starts to investigate the whole area to check what was really happening since he had no idea. After jumping into the scene, a huge hand came up to approach him out of nowhere. The colossal figure had caught a zombie with its huge hand. It then swayed its hand after catching him up. Meanwhile, Blood Demon Queen flew away with a force along with Violet who's still fighting her. The colossal robotic figure began to take a deep moment to emphasize the situation then suddenly he laughed maniacally. However, the head department was asking what the Ancient did to him. It turns out that the Ancient One was trying to trick him as a pawn while telling the head department that he must sacrifice himself for the sake of humanity. While the incident happened, everyone was still watching them from afar. One of the chiefs had no idea of what was really happening on Earth that made him scared, along with the others who can't believe what they saw in front of them. It turns out that the department head transformed into a god figure. They began to be amazed by what they saw. It turns out that Zombie manages to overwhelm the gigantic finger of the huge figure. Even the person inside the plane can't believe what's happening. Zombie holding up the huge monster's finger flawlessly. However, Blood Demon Queen and Violet jump into the action towards the possessed head department. They started to make a move to launch an attack at him. Somehow, because of its godly power, it manages to block their attack with a powerful force field. Suddenly, something flew towards them. It turns out that they got held captive from the Ancient One that causes them to can't move. The Ancient One stated the audacity to attack him by Violet and Blood Demon Queen. Somehow, the huge robotic figure starts to peek at Zombie while holding his finger as he feels something weird is at him. 
It turns out that Zombie turns into his rage mode again after all. Zombie turns his whole body to make a momentum. As he twisted his whole body, the huge robotic finger started to twist along with him. It came toward its body that made him scream in pain. The Ancient One was staring at Zombie's doing. He then starts to run toward the Ancient One while maniacally laughing towards him. Suddenly, the figure tries to stop him. The Ancient One was happily to be revived and he was waiting for a millennium to get back alive. Violet and Blood Demon Queen was struggling while being tangled by the Ancient One. Zombie once more stopped the hand of the huge figure from stomping him. The Ancient One began to challenge Zombie for a rematch and demanded him to show his true form. Suddenly Zombie transform into a human form while giving a death stare at the Ancient One. Zombie got silent for a moment while thinking. All of a sudden he lifted its arm with a powerful force. Blood Demon Queen got shocked as he saw Zombie lift an unbelievable force. The robotic figure then starts to launch a powerful attack. Meanwhile, the Ancient One was cursing Zombie for looking down at him. Zombie keeps staring at him menacingly. Lanky got scared seeing these monsters fighting each other. However, Zombie starts to run again towards the Ancient One. The Ancient One starts to call something. He summoned other more robots to fight along with him against Zombie. The chiefs felt embarrassed after realizing that the ancient people's technology was so strong that they felt like they were cavemen in front of them. Unfortunately for Ancient One, Zombie easily manages to destroy these robots without an ease. At this moment, Zombie was not showing any emotions anymore. More robots have been summoned to fight Zombie. He then began to rush toward these robots. With just a single punch, he killed all the robots that blocked his way. Because of the powerful punch that he made, he also managed to land a force that caused half of its body to get destroyed. The Ancient One still keeps taunting Zombie to use his full strength and assuming that he might be still looking down at him. Moreover, he began to summon another group of colossal robots. Everyone began to panic as they saw a bunch of colossal robots to summon. They said that this was the last night before the end of the Earth. However, Zombie still looks so calm after all these things have happened. Because of that, the Ancient One began to get more angry as Zombie was still not using his true form unlike their last fight before he died. They were so shocked seeing Zombie being approached by a fist of the colossal robot. Its huge fist connects to Zombie. It causes a wind force that makes everything on its way to fly away. Zombie was thrown away due to the colossal robot's attack. That causes him to land on the moon. But still Zombie showed no reaction after that even though how dangerous the situation was, he remained calm. Meanwhile, the department head consciousness talks to the Ancient One for expressing his disapproval of what he caused in order to kill Zombie. Just a moment, the huge colossal landed on the moon. It tries to crush Zombie at his position. Fortunately, Zombie manages to get out of the situation while the Ancient One wants to eliminate Zombie at all costs. He escaped from the situation. Then Zombie rushes toward the colossal robot's head. Zombie charges his fist. He then landed his powerful blow at this colossal robot. Because of his powerful attack it resulted in destroying half of its body. Ancient One was speechless after seeing Zombie this powerful even though it's not full potential. The head department told to Ancient One that in the report Zombie was vicious after becoming the city's president. He then looked at the city. Head department stated that the city was under Zombie's care and just as good as the other city not by only generating tax revenue and lastly he never hurt humans. In fact, he also helped the other humans multiple times. Because of this, he got mad for not believing what he was saying. The colossal robot falls right in front of Zombie. Ancient One was asking the head department if they didn't want peacefulness to exist. However, Zombie are just staring at him without making any movement. He then smirks while Ancient One asks himself if they have peace by looking at Zombie. He doesn't want Zombie's race to exist. He demanded the fate of the entire human civilization to rests on its mood while Zombie are just starting the Earth from the moon. The Ancient One wants to eliminate Zombie's entity for being not one of them. Suddenly they saw the colossal robots regenerating its body and new material was building it up. It transforms as divine punishment and it becomes a lot bigger with a divine sword in it. Multiple divine robots were approaching Zombie from the moon. They put their sword at the moon. Suddenly, they electrify Zombie on it. Zombie looked severely damaged from it. All of a sudden, he just spoke about the meaning of strength. He stated that just because they are bigger, it doesn't mean they have it more while he was walking toward them. Ancient One was shocked as Zombie tried to approach him up. Out of nowhere, Zombie snaps his finger. It results in a mass destruction of all divine robots. Along with this, a shockwave had happened at the moon. It was so powerful that even the Earth reached the shockwave from the snap that Zombie did. Because of this, Lanky decided to call everyone to bring all the citizens to the evacuation centers so they immediately split up. All of a sudden, Zombie teleported in front of Ancient One ready to charge his fist while the Ancient One got shocked. Zombie's punch connects at Ancient One Fist and he gets thrown back to the earth while a blaze of fire covers him up. 
Zombie goes back to Earth after he punches the Ancient One that also landed from the ocean. Suddenly as Zombie goes down to Earth, he immediately reaches the floor and splits the floor. However, Ancient One was still underwater and looks severely enduring the pain of what Zombie did to him. Meanwhile, everyone on Earth was rushing to help every citizen as soon as they could. As Lanky runs while carrying a baby, she immediately notices the floor that is going to split beside her. She was shocked by what she saw, because she saw Zombie holding the floor while trying to split it out. They immediately panicked while Ancient One was unaware of what is Zombie doing. Time to time, Zombie start to split apart the floor. Everyone panicked as they felt a 20.0 magnitude earthquake. Zombie was almost there to split it up. He then smirks without any remorse after splitting the floor. A huge fault line can be seen from the direction of Zombie headed. Because of fear, Lanky didn't notice the floor that made her slip from the fault line. She then fall from it. Fortunately, one of his comrades catches her hand to save her. The fault line was so big that it resulted in splitting almost half of the earth. He told Lanky to hold on. However, she can't believe what she saw again. The ocean splits up revealing the Ancient One's position. Then Zombie punches him up into its abdomen. Ancient One flew away from one of the mountains. Ancient One coughs in pain as he receives the powerful blow. Head Department teases him of what he meant earlier about Zombie but still the Ancient One was still determined to eliminate Zombie. Somehow he noticed something approaching him. A tsunami was going at the city. Along with this, Zombie's new appearance reveals meaningly he got more buffed. Head Department got shocked as Zombie transformed again. Violet is still on her own, while trying to survive the situation. Blood Demon Queen also got startled as she saw Zombie new form because from their last fight she didn't see this form before. The Ancient One got more excited as Zombie finally showed the form that he faced before everything was destroyed. He then flew to face Zombie. However, Zombie are just looking at him and waiting for him to recover the Ancient One. Blackie thinks that Zombie lost his mind, so he immediately run away from the area and he was so sure that the Ancient One was a dead guy for sure. Ancient One charges himself and is so excited that he finally sees Zombie's form again after a long time and he warns the head department that his body will suffer a bit. Zombie have no reaction from it. He then raises its hand and something. Suddenly a force hits Ancient One by just moving Zombie's hand. Zombie clenches his fist, and it result of Ancient One's body crumbling like paper. He can't believe what happened. A ray of beam can be seen from the area. Ancient One's body shattered into pieces that led him to his defeat. He still can't believe from the result of their fight even becoming in that form he still can't win at Zombie. Finally, the head department's real body but unfortunately he got donut on his abdomen. Chiefs peek at their binoculars. They saw the head department's situation so they assume that he is already dead. Blackie had a thought that they promised the won't ever lay a hand to human civilization. Just a moment, Zombie snaps his finger once more. Suddenly a blood from Zombie's DNA forming at his donut's body. Head department was falling from the sky. Zombie made a snap to heal him up, a blood becoming to form from his chest. Suddenly, a heart was finally formed. Everyone can't even believe what they saw. Even the blood demon queen and his comrade was startled by what Zombie was capable of. Violet was also one of the that can't believe what just Zombie did. The head department got confused about what happened after having his chest regenerate. He then turned around. He then saw Zombie from afar. He then felt disgust from himself after judging Zombie after all. It was the time that the human head department head finally understood Zombie and still got confused of why ancient people went to such great lengths just to get rid of him. It turns out that it was the fear that Zombie exceed their limitations and have a control over them. Zombie was finally calmed down while seeing everything around him. Everyone are just watching from afar. All of a sudden Violet jumps in front of him immediately. Out of nowhere, Zombie came back to his original form and asked Violet if she used the bloodline power as of now. Violet shows a sense of relief because of Zombie doing after lending his power to her. However, she still got mad at Zombie after their home was gone after what Zombie did. She was mouthing Zombie that if he could just only one-shot him. Nothing going to happen like this and he just spend too much time from fighting over him. He reasoned himself that he just didn't want to scare them up too much. Blood Demon Queen was in deep fear after seeing Zombie this powerful unlike the last time they met before. Because of what Zombie did, the event caused the southern continent to shift by 130 kilometers and it completely changed the climate of the earth and created the new deepest trench. Two months later, since the humans were able to evacuate in time, there weren't too many losses and the zombie architectural firm was solely responsible for rebuilding the several provinces that were destroyed. Meanwhile, the human head department was observing something on his tablet. It turns out that he was reviewing Zombie's forms. After knowing why the ancient people insist on killing Zombie and after facing such terrifying strength firsthand, 
He was thinking what he could choose to do next. Head department calls one of his assistants to buy a few trays of high-quality eggs. It is because he was going to visit the new chief of H-City. At the same time, at the Blood Tribe's new city construction, Lanling ordered his employees to move faster because he spent so much money hiring them. All of a sudden, someone asked Lanling where did his money get from that make him startle. It turns out Blackie was one of the reasons because he gives him a loan. He took Zombie's advice that they shouldn't fight otherwise they will keep coming after their bank's money. So he decided to just load the money to them at a high interest rate of 20% and in exchange they can slowly pay it off by working for them. They were speechless after hearing all these reasons. Somehow, Landling suddenly had a thought about their queen but they had no idea and assumed that she was in her room. Blood Demon Queen can be seen in her room look so frustrated. She never expected that Zombie have an even stronger form. She also didn't expect that even back then. With the stimulant, Zombie only used a small portion of his strength to face her. When she saw Zombie's new form and killing the godlike ancient human, the Blood Queen finally understand that she would never catch up to Zombie and began to unwillingly shed tears. The next day after the incident an alarm clock was ringing from Zombie's room. However, he accidentally destroyed it after being strongest Zombie at the Earth. He had a few flashbacks while he was doing his things. He remembered his past where he was started before becoming the strongest Zombie of all time. This was Zombie our protagonist who become different from his race, and he just woke up. His name literally from Zom from Zombie and Bai from Zombie which ironically funny from his looks. His age was undefined and also he doesn't know how did he die but the only thing that he remember on his summer day was. While he was still studying he got bitten from his classroom and got turned into a zombie without knowing the zombie outbreak that day. At first he was an only ordinary zombie and the one that you see in the mob was him who's following the horde of zombie wherever it goes. In order for him to survive and not to get turned into a fuel and not to become a perpetual motion machine, he did something unexpected. He began to train himself and abstain from human flesh and only ate protein powder for three meals a day until he succeeded his goal. After all those sacrifices and hard work, he became invincible, where he was the strongest creature living in Earth, and no one could ever stop him. Time to time he become a lot more stronger and gain another form where he can turn into a maniac zombie when he eats a spicy food or getting excited from the fights. Also he attained a human form that has an ability to destroy everything, whatever it stops from his goals. Lastly a full form of a human where he have a godly strength that no one could ever stop and at this state he can surpass everything. But he was tired of fighting in order to achieve peace so he began on helping the humans and through his efforts, he solved countless problems for mankind. Just like on how he did from the zombie king or the ancient people in order to change the people's perspective on zombie. Because of all of his efforts he finally achieved his very own city. However, he began to thinking of becoming too strong where humans may feared by his threat and keep trying to get rid of him. While he was busy, someone rang his doorbell in front of his apartment. He had no idea who was this person was, so he asked who is this person. Zombie was surprised as Violet was there to tell him that he was two hours late. After hearing this, Zombie immediately take action to prepare himself. Meanwhile, at the Bayonders Academy, a lot of people gathered for a ceremony to assess the growth of the academy and to acknowledge these people that they had in turbulent times that caused troubles and challenges. However, Lanky calls everyone to introduce Zombie as a leader of their academy prosperity. Zombie now arrives in the stage while everyone cheering him up for being the new chief of the Bayonders Academy. Everyone greeted him up immediately after the introduction. Because of the respect that they had from Zombie, they immediately bow their head to show respect even though Zombie was a zombie. Unfortunately, Zombie had no idea on how he was going to start the ceremony so he tried to greet them up and asking if they are hungry because he bought some eggs for everyone. Because of that, everyone felt the awkwardness of Zombie's speech. On the other side, the previous chief got asked by the other person of being tossed aside so he explained that it is because of Zombie's strength. Meanwhile, the department head was busy drinking his coffee. Suddenly, Inspector Chen was rushing toward the office while inquiring he was in emergency. As she got inside the department head chief's office, he immediately asked her and she replied that they were in a big trouble. It is because, the President Zombie was calling at her phone. Department head got startled as he heard about this news. Afterwards, he answered the call from President and talk about the incident earlier. Department head mentioned that he is going to submit the report urgently because he wad no time to make a report, and he swore that he wasn't trying to hide. Inspector Chen immediately asked about the situation, and the department head replied that the world knows about the incident involving the humans. She got confused how did this happen without telling anyone. So department head told her that they cause a big commotion, and even the other side of the earth felt something happened. As Inspector Chen checked the news, it said that the southern continent underwent a huge battle that's suspected to be caused by the ancient humans. After all this event happened, 
There's one more even they had to think. It is the exchange meeting that was about to start and all of this even happened all at once. Out of nowhere, he asked Inspector Chen about the eggs that he asked to buy. Luckily, Inspector Chen had them. Meanwhile a sunny day at Zombie's home at H-City. Department head goes at his apartment while carrying a bunch of eggs since this is Zombie's favorite for protein. Department head felt hesitant, but he had the idea that there's probably no problem if he was going to ask him to do his job. So he rang the bell. Suddenly the door opens and Violet was there and both of them got so shocked seeing each other. The department head got startled as he saw Violet wearing and made costume with a cat headband while carrying a cake at Zombie's apartment. He screamed from the top of his lungs as he saw Violet wearing this kind of clothes and assuming that there's must be something from her and Zombie. Violet was so shocked as she heard that department head assumes that there's something happening at Violet and Zombie so she immediately explained that this is only a misunderstanding. Somehow, Lanky was also there wearing the same outfit as Violet, and this time she had a bunny headband while holding a strawberry cake. The department head was so shocked as he saw both of them wearing the maid outfit, and he thinks that they engage in debauchery in front of him. Lanky wasn't thinking of what was department head thinking until she heard the word of how wild are the two of them. After hearing those words, Lanky got startled that department head actually thinking something unusual because of their outfits. Ader seeing all of this, department head got an idea to make a reason that he had something to do so he was going to head back from the headquarters. Both Lanky and Violet rushes towards the department head, explaining that they were only here to celebrate Zombie's promotion and the reason they dress like this because of losing from their game. Department head thinks that this was nonsense so he asked how could they possibly dress like this for a party since he never seen either of them wear things like this. Violet had no words anymore so she asked the department head to come inside in order to believe of what they are talking about. As he entered, he saw Zombie playing cards while Dawn was looking delighted while watching Zombie winning. The previous president was against Zombie from this card game and he was seriously wanted to win against him. Zombie was startled as he picked something at Zombie's deck. As he observed, he saw the celebration of Zombie for passing and becoming the new head of Bayonder's Academy. Department head felt a bit of disgust as he saw this new things from their city. Meanwhile, a bunch of fruits was flying around the room. All of a sudden a sequel of slices from a sword got into the fruits before landing into the ground. It turns out that one of the chief caused this actions to show off his skills from everyone. After slicing all the fruits and vegetables, he immediately put it into a plate to serve it into others. It turns out that he was making sushi from these fruits and vegetables. Somehow, he notices his department head looking at him speechless and had a curiosity of why he was doing this action. He suddenly panicked and reasoned himself that Zombie forced him to this kind of action and he was scared of department head to think that he was doing this willingly. Department head make a few cough before calling everyone. He was glad that everyone was in one place already because he was going to tell it everyone that he had an important matter. Head leaders including Zombie sat into the room where they discussed that department head wasn't actually the leader of the humans. Department head immediate confirmed this and after answering Zombie's question, he thanked the other chief for giving a bowl of sushi. He also added that the region has many provinces that spanning thousands of kilometers. Because of curiosity, everyone take a deep look at department head since they never saw the real identity of him because of the mask that he never took off. While taking his mask off, department head introduced himself as the provincial head of the Guangzhou province. Due to disappointment, they turn around and the department head got confused of what are they doing. He then explained that Zombie might think that their planet currently has two continents and also a two country. He then added that they are incontinent and the other continent. He explained that a long time ago, in order to survive, both of their countries cooperated to eliminate the zombies but other than that period, while there has been cooperation on the surface, they constantly fighting in the dark. So to control public opinion, the two countries have begun to exchange meetings for the peace and not to eliminate other races. Zombie was still confused of what was the exchange meeting. So Violet explained further that this was an international sports exchange between the academy and also part of a global military exercise, and she added that this was held once every four years and one of the champions was the leader of Guangzhou. Upon hearing this, Zombie had to think that this was pointless after all. Lanky also mentioned that the last round was a competition on who can kill more zombie and one of Guangzhou provinces killed more than 8 million zombie. Upon hearing this, Zombie felt shocked deep into his bones and he can't believe that this was possible. After all this problems came in, Lanky advises that Zombie must carry this weight since he was the chief right now. Zombie made a sarcastically reaction while thinking Lanky really think he was a human. However, department head tries to calm them up since they are not the only person who opposing this event because they won't do such thing. Out of nowhere, Zombie asks about the meaning of federalism and monarchy. 
On the other side of the country B, a plane was departuring to its destination. As they landed, two women figure arrived into someone's office. It turns out that this was the country B headquarters and they had some documents about the incident that includes the ancient one. A guy told to his visitors to take a look at the picture because this were sent all over the country as so they immediately took a good look about the picture that he was saying. It turns out these person was twin with the same style and fashion. They were shocked after seeing these picture because they recognized that this was technology of the ancient civilization. The guy informed them that the intelligence department suspects that country A has already started to grasp into the ancient one's technology which make country B look so bad once country A can fully control this power. He also added that their president of country A will have a visit into country B for the next month so he demand the sister to handle this since they are most capable subordinates into these issues. He wanted them to join the event and investigate the situation clearly without any issue. Because of the sister's participation in the rebellion, their king had some options so they don't need to worry since they can handle this properly. It turns out that this guy was the prime minister and both of them agreed for the prime minister's favor to handle this such things. On the other side, a sunny day somewhere at the country a someone was doing a solution called CHR 47 and they began the experiment into something. It turns out that this was Dr. Fay and he was doing some experiments in order to win at zombie. On the other side, Jamie initiate the experiment while he was asking from the other assistant their status. Their assistant starts to command them that he was already ready. However, they actually doing an experiment into someone who got burned after the incident earlier. Jamie calls for Fay since they were ready to initiate the experiment. It turns out that they were doing experiment at ancient person's body who's all over 1000 years old and its corpse becoming dried so Jamie hesitated if they can actually revive him. But although this was the situation of Ancient One's corpse, he was dedicated that he can actually revive him because he really think that he can achieve anything when it comes in field of biology. Without any hesitation, he calls for them to start the experiment. The experiment starts and they were watching from the lobby while the experiment was progressing. Jamie was hesitant if they can really revive the ancient person because of its status. Because of the powerful figure of the ancient person, he had an idea if they actually revive him, it will be a real miracle and big help for them because of its technology. The experiment executes from the dried body of the ancient person and it seems nothing was happening. However, a large sound happened that make the whole room to shake a little bit. They were speculate at the body of the ancient person inside the experiment room. Suddenly a cough can be heard and Jamie was gladly to hear that they actually revived the ancient person. Unexpectedly, an unknown figure got revived with a bald hair on top and curly hair on side that seems not an intellectual person. Jamie screams so loud, because he didn't expect his appearance and so different from what they saw at his suit. So he assumed that this wasn't the ancient person and he think that the mighty ancient figure go away while they were busy from the experiment. Jamie rushes at him and immediately choking while asking if where the ancient person go, but he explained that he was the ancient person so he demanded Jamie not to kill him. But still, Jamie was still furious at him after looking so different because the ancient person he knows was so handsome and he doesn't have a single bit similarity from its form. He explained that he was an engineer and he doesn't have a single bit idea of how to fight and as a mecha armor designer, he just wants to make himself look cooler because he was so ugly as an old man. Dr. Fay looked so disappointed to think that they revived the wrong person because of how the ancient person looked. He immediately felt the disappointment so he got mad immediately. As he was about to leave, the ancient person immediately calls him to have some conversation with him. Dr. Fay immediately turned around after hearing the ancient person calling him because he hits Dr. Fay's interest. Jamie somehow felt something interesting when the ancient person tries to calls out for Dr. Fay. Because of this, Dr. Fay approach him while asking what are they gonna talking about. The ancient person saw their difference from their starting points but he wanted to work with Dr. Fay against Zombie. However, Dr. Fay disapproved his proposal about working together because ancient person was already defeated by Zombie twice and he also had disappointment from him after thinking that he was stronger than the Blood Clan so he wanted to leave immediately since he had more research to do with. Ancient person replied him that they've been already researched zombies genes a thousand years ago, and still their current method wasn't working and other than this, zombies ability was endlessly powering up. Dr. Fay got his interest about this issue so he listened more detail at him. Ancient person knew that they were the smartest people in this entire world so he think of teaming up is the best way to win against zombies since he was overpowered. By using Dr. Fay's expertise in biology and a grasp over Zombie's body they had more chance winning together than all by himself. He added that using his unsurpassable knowledge in engineering and knowledge of how to use Zombie's genes since he knew him at the first place, he had an idea of making of their own new Zombie, but on their side. All of them can't believe about of what they heard at him even Jamie, 
and the assistant had a grasp of hope that they could win this time. The ancient person was waiting for Dr. Fei's approval to work with him after all these information that he proposed. So Dr. Fei had a deep thought about this idea so his efforts and time won't get into waste. After deciding, Dr. Fei agreed to his suggestion so he reached his hand for approval of their cooperation. And they both now going to work together. However someone was mad for making a guy act as the president bodyguard. It turns out that Violet was so mad at department head for losing his mind on sending Zombie as the president's bodyguard. It is because, he can kill the president due to uncontrollably power of Zombie while Zombie felt anxious about this idea. But department head was helpless too because the president was about to leave the country be soon and he was scared that the whole world will know the truth about the ancient people's appearance into their existence. That could lend into danger. Both Lanky and Violet was speechless after hearing these words from department head. So they have no other choice since the president was already asked for a few experts from their country as bodyguard. He also tries to approach Zombie's ego for always prioritizing the human's life so if he agreed, the president will no longer going to identify him. However, they can't reveal Zombie's real identity since this was dangerous for many people to know that there's an actual zombie from their government officials so he advises him that the Guangzhou province's councils will answer for him as of now. So he bid his trust of not losing the face of their province which is the Guangzhou and after all this explanations he leaves. Meanwhile at the Bayonders Academy head office, Blackie and the other got summoned by Zombie for an important detail. Zombie asks one of them if someone was willingly can help for the role of becoming the bodyguard of the president, and he needed two helpers with him. Because of Blackie's business in his job, he reject because they were close from the end of the year so the financial inspections will come and he can't afford to lose some time about this. Along with the others, they can't help him because of their appearance and also they wanted to help the peacekeeping department. Somehow, Lang and Fur introduce themselves from Zombie that he can rely on them for being a good bodyguard for the president. So Zombie finally decided on who's going to come with him. After the meeting, they go outside to wait Violet and Lanky before departuring with the president. However, Lang and Fur felt someone just came in so they immediately take action from it. It turns out that Lanky and Violet was already arrived so they immediately approach Zombie. Lanky was so happy, and she also mentioned that they were acute dogs while Violet felt some disgust about these creatures. Without any hesitation, Lanky teases him. All of a sudden, she got shocked as this creature spoke to her while cursing Lanky to death. Luckily, Lanky manages to get out of the situation, but she was so shocked about this revelation. She was so startled as she heard the dog can talk but Violet told her that these was zombies Lackey, and not an actual dog. After that, Violet calls them out to move on their next location which is the president's office. They are now inside the ship to move to the president's office however there are more people inside of the ship waiting for them. They were actually waiting for the Bayonders Academy to arrive and some of them seems didn't like them. One of them approaches Zombie and whining about taking for so long to arrive that he assumed they gave up on their mission. He then looked down at Zombie after getting confused of replacing the previous chief with a nameless nobody like Zombie. He also came closer while suspecting the high trust of the president of the Guangzhou province because he knows that he can beat 10 weaklings like them as he said but before finishing his words. Zombie punched him so hard on his face because of his ignorance and looking down for them. After punching this guy because of ignorance, he asked what was he saying earlier. Violet felt embarrassment of Zombie's action after punching the guy without any hesitation. While the other can't believe of what Zombie capable of after their comrade lose consciousness by a single punch. Lanky smirks and so proud of what Zombie did from this guy. After a few hours, they finally arrived and Zombie immediately goes through the president's office and he was so speechless while being their representative. He was so nervous since this was his first time meeting the president. The president told stated that he was recommended by the department head of Guangzhou because of his capability and a perfect role for a bodyguard. So he tries to ask Zombie if there's any danger how could he protect the president on his current position while sitting. Zombie confidently answered him that there's no any real danger to him because he knows what he can do. Because of this answer, President laugh at him because of Zombie's confidence after all so he believed that Zombie can do this job as a bodyguard while Zombie was confused of what he was talking about. Meanwhile on the other side of Country B Ruin City, there's someone figure from afar sitting tight like waiting for something. She was a beautiful girl who seems powerful. Suddenly a figure calls her out and mentioning Big Sis as their call sign. She immediately move away from her position after being called out and preparing herself into something. Someone was reaching her equipment. It turns out that this was a muscular zombie who wear a mask while saying that the zombie army was ready for their plans. The zombie's name was Ashi and she thank him so much for his hard work so she demanded to him that leave the rest to her. It turns out that they were in a location where zombie lives in a ruined city 
and the girl was so mad from the human on fighting each other like Zombie said earlier because it was nonsense. Ashi replied that he doesn't know since he's not a human after all but he thinks that this must be caused by the resources. A group of undead army was waiting for the girl's announcement before engaging to their plan. She thinks that humans probably doing this due to selfishness, and nothing other than that. After this, she calls all the zombie army to prepare themselves. She was sure that every has already heard that the president of country was coming over them so their mission was to kill the president. Even though many people will make a question of what they doing this but she admit that there have been many troubles that the zombie outbreak did but zombies were never a worthy opponent for humans. Because of their technology, humans have already invented the method to control the zombies a long time ago. She was so mad for some reason like why the military exercise still continue to be conducted to eradicate zombies. So she assumed that the country and B are hiding the fact that even zombies can have their own consciousness, and their method was clearing zombies in internal strife as an excuse. Because of this many innocent people were kept in the dark and countless families were ruined because of this internal strife. Along with this are countless zombies with consciousness were be kill in cold blood on merciless. They believe that in reality humans and zombies could have coexisted all along. They scream on top of their lungs for their desire to unify the entire world where country and B will live along the zombies and without any discriminations. She then gladly that everyone understood their mission so she felt some relief. Everyone raises their arms and yell about their coexistence. On the other side, Lanky, Violet and Zombie was sitting on the plane while waiting for their departure from the country B. Everyone was waiting for the president of country A for the exchange meet as for their country peace. The reporters stated that the president of country A is coming to their country for seven day visit, and they reported that the scene was already filled by sea like people. They also stated that their president will be staying in his hotel and meeting with the prime minister of country B on the next day. However, a kid was watching the television felt amused of what's happening on their current situation. Somehow, his parents was calling out for him because they are now going to it but he doesn't want to eat at this moment because of wanting to see what the president looks like. They were glad that they will saw this big event. However, they are now dropping off soon since they are currently on top of country at the twin sister was waiting for them to arrive to protect the president as soon they land since this was their priority, as Prime Minister tell at that. However, they were talking about their unknown sister might take action. The other replied that with her personality they believe that she won, to even let the plane lane before trying to shoot it down. Meanwhile, at the crowded city and country a two-persona was a gathering for their preparation in order to send the president of country to hell. Suddenly, Ashi felt something on his body that made him tremble without any reason. He immediately asked Ashi if he felt any pain somewhere in his body and he felt worried because they can't afford to make mistakes at this time. On the other side, on the plane, there's something terrifying and familiar at the same time. There was a guy on a hoodie that waiting for their departure. The guy notified the others to continue even though Ashi suddenly felt something uncomfortable. Finally, their plane already landed at the country A's capital airport. Outside the plane, many people have gathered for the grand landing of the president of country B, and they were excited about it. While the reporter was busy talking about the peace, the president suddenly came out. Unexpectedly, it was Zombie who disguised as the president's bodyguard of country in order to avoid any conflict. However, the people from ruined city suddenly demanding to stop the assassination after seeing Zombie as the bodyguard of the president which one of their race. The sniper was confused by the sudden stop of their mission which he clarify if he felt something. However he used awareness enhancers to focus better that's why he don't feel anything weird from his current state. Even one of the revolutionary leader Wasa startled as they saw in Zombie as the president's bodyguard so they call everyone to hold on. Then she told to everyone to stand down as she realized that this wasn't the president that they are targeting. Zombie was on the spotlight and everyone was so shocked as they saw Zombie being the president's bodyguard. The media spread the news to everyone. As the citizens saw this, they immediately felt disgust and wondering if who was this. Some of them was speechless, and some are can't believe of what they saw. This was the first time Zombie got introduced to the world for the first time and because of this everyone can't believe that a mere zombie can be a bodyguard. With the undercurrents happening in the background, what will happen to Zombie who has gotten involved? The twin was confused of what was Zombie doing because they had no idea that an Zombie could be like this. As they saw the information, Zombie was listed to be the president's bodyguard and both of they felt so weird. Meanwhile, the department head's plan was successfully happening which their plan was making Zombie as perfect shield from the assassination of the president. And because of this no one ever dared to attack him. And if they did, it's only a death wish for them. The department head ordered Zombie to look around and block in front of the president when he comes out so the snipers can't get a clear line of sight at their president. 
However, Zombie was confident that even the department heads missiles, he can catch it and they doesn't need to worry about a single bullet. He was scolded for being high ego because the president was an ordinary person unlike them who had stronger body. And while they are busy talking, the president finally coming out. The president came out from their airplane and everyone made a warm welcome for him. Zombie immediately bow his head to show some respect for the president. After the departure, they demand to let the president to rest for a while since he was tired from the travel and the interviews will be made in the next day. One person was greeted him from the governor of the Hattie state. Violet immediately called Zombie to stay alert as she felt something would happen, and because of this Zombie reacted on what she said. On the other side, the leader of the revolutionary was wonder of sensing the oppression at this moment, and she was confused if she is only imagining. Zombie looked so serious because he was dedicated to show his intention even though he's only a mere zombie. The sisters were surprised as they saw the screen with the image of Zombie who got outside the plane and they were wondering if why does their big sister didn't take action. Her sister replied that she doesn't know and felt disappointed after losing their best chance to assassinate the president of the opposite country. After this, they decided to go for their car with the listening device because they wanted to rush before they do something since they have the ancient people's knowledge. Then the representatives called out the president immediately as they want them to notify him for his private transportation car. As Zombie going with the president, department head immediately warned him for letting the president to have another car and this made Zombie confuse. After sending this information at Zombie, he immediately called the other team to cut off the communication. Somehow, one of the sisters got confused of not bringing the bodyguards of the opposite country's president. So they were wondering if how much they are confident of military strength for letting their president to transport alone. Furthermore, they also noticed Lanky accompanied with them and stating the last exchange meeting where she got beaten and injured so hard so they assumed that they can't organize a bigger security force than their national strength. Suddenly, one of their comrade from monitoring team yelled that their target was unexpectedly taken another car, and not the car that they prepared for the president. She immediately took the microphone to ask the other team if where did the president ride in and demanding a clear information. Unfortunately for them, their communication was cut off by communication jamming devices which result of losing contact from the other team. She slammed the microphone from the table due to her anger and frustration of having a possibility of failure for their plans. Department head stated that from now on, there's no one allowed to approach the president, and they were also planning to split their way to avoid any possibility of predicting their next move. The leader from the assassination group got so shocked as they saw an unexpected scenario that a zombie race manages to be a president's bodyguard. Because of this, the sniper calls her out asking if they are going to continue the assassination. She immediately calls everyone to listen at her carefully. She commander her team to stop from their assassination. However, the communication still cuts off and this result of misunderstanding for their plan that if they are going to kill the president or not. Along with this, he also stated that his gun was also broken. Because of this, he got mad for not having capability and having rubbish weapons for their assassination and thinking that this assassination would be done if they annihilate them all. So, he decided to take out his military knife and assuring that their big sister would take a rest after this. He was planning to kill all the representatives of the opposite country to finish their plan for the assassination and planning to report the credit for her. The previous head chief indicate that the president and his company was already on board now but he was wondering why they are still needed to be cautious after cutting off all the communication, and department head replied that even though they had all their secrets, they still have more troublesome from the unresolved underground organization. On the other side, Zombie was already on the car and moving towards to their location. Suddenly, the president calls him out while asking if he was an actual zombie. Because of this, Zombie got confused after he was asked by the president out of nowhere. The president asked Zombie if he's willing to protect him at all cost. Zombie immediately replied that he will protect the president. All of a sudden, the president laughs and he trusted Zombie. But he then asked another question on Zombie if Zombie was going to destroy their race in order to rule the world. Zombie then rejects this assumption because he wasn't interested of destroying the world by using his power. Somehow, the driver of their private car was heavily sweating after being anxious of their topic. The guy who's monitoring the situation stated that they cannot reach Ozio because of the communicating jamming. Ashi and the other guy felt discomfort of the situation after realizing that the convoy they made had been installed a jammer to avoid their contacting Ozio. Suddenly the twin sisters runs toward the situation after having an ominous feeling so they want to immediately go to the scene to avoid any delays. Few minutes have passed, they are now at the city of Country Vi. Suddenly their convoy stopped out of nowhere in a clear area. It turns out that Lanky and Violet was inside of these vehicles, and they were confused of sudden stop of their convoy because this wasn't on their plan. 
However, Lanky heard something outside their vehicle so she was confused of what was happening that causes them to stop. It turns out that Asayo had fainly doing his own plan to kill all of them on his own to finish the assassination even though their big sis told them to stop but since he doesn't have any communication device, he didn't receive this order. He then landed on one of the convoys to start the engagement of their conflict. Because of how strong he was, many people flew away. Lanky and Violet manages to escape and they were confused of what just happened because they are not aware that this could possibly happen after their successful plan. Suddenly they notice something in the smoke which resemble of ominous powerful creature, and they were startled of its powerful attack. However, someone landed one of the tall building, and because of the powerful force of their landing, they made a loud explosion. It turns out that this two individual was the twin sister that warning Violet and Lanky from Azayo being dangerous guy. Azayo was contemplating from his posture and wanting to outburst his hatred toward the foreigners from the other side of the world which made it a little bit racist. He wanted to show the power of zombies of country be he did made a big sigh after introducing himself toward Lanky and Violet. Lanky was so shocked that a zombie was also powerful in this country, and one of the sisters introduced that this zombie boss was under the control of her sister. Suddenly, Ozio casted a black emanating energy from his hands. He called this as corpse oil, and he throws it towards the position of Lanky and Violet. Suddenly he put out his lighter and pointed the flames towards his dagger while planning to attack them. Lanky was so surprised of what did he actual did. It turns out that Azayo used the preheated dagger to inflame the corpse oil, and now it was rushing toward them. Fortunately, they manages to dodge the wave of flame that Azayo made to rush toward them. Suddenly one of the sisters shouted that they must not touch the flame since it was inextinguishable. However, Violet notices the sister which he called as snow and rain and she was wondering of what are they doing at their area. Unfortunately, Lanky seems in a bad position where she can't escape from the large from that Azayo made. Because of the frustration of her position, she can't do anything than cursing around her situation. Meanwhile, inside one of the building, Ashi and his comrade takes a rest for a while after what happened to him but still he was concerned about Azayo because they assumed that he probably continued to deviate from the plan and causes further destruction. After resting for a while, Ashi finally feel better now so he stated that he can take care of himself now. On the other side, Zombie was relaxing for a while after a tiring situation. However, Ashi and his friend noticed something unexpectedly. He suddenly saw a zombie in a convoy which the same of their races so he got confused. After realizing, he was startled the reason of stopping their mission and also wondering that also a zombie was escorting the president of the opposite country. Meanwhile, Asayo and Lanky was fighting at each other and little did she not know was Asayo was already planning to throw a grenade at her. After putting out the pin, he throws it at her and Lanky was caught off guarded from what he did. Asayo throwed a smoke grenade that she didn't expect. As the smoke fade, she was so shocked of what she received. Asayo manages to cut her in half while she was distracted from the smoke. Violet, Snow and Rain was so shocked after seeing Lanky's situation. After slicing her in half, Asayo landed a powerful punch at her that made Lanky flew away from their area. After finishing Lanky, he demanded if someone was next that willingly dare to fight him more. Lanky's blood flow around her body after being sliced up by Azayo. Violet was so shocked of Lanky's situation after realizing that she could probably die after receiving such injury from their fight. Snow and Rain suddenly decided to help Violet. And as we observe from their features are they look the same that made us think they are sisters. Azayo was startled as he saw three swords surrounding him out of nowhere. It turns out that the twin sister was the one who causes this and wanted Violet to run away with Lanky to immediately put her in an infirmary. Because of this, they had no choice other than resorting to use force so they decided to wild their swords out. Even though they resorted into force, they still didn't want to kill Asayo and they demanded him to leave the area immediately to lower the destruction and conflict. But still Azayo stood on his ground because he still wanted to kill the foreigner and show how powerful a zombie are. He decided to punish and give a lesson to the sisters even though they were sister of their leader. Suddenly, he slices his hand while stating that they must not blame him after for not warning them in advance. A black circle enveloped around his position that seemed he was casting another skill. It turns out that he used another corpse oil that surrounded him in violet. Snow and rain was startled of what he was doing. After this, Azayo throws the lighter on the ground. Violet was so confused of what was he doing after all. Just a moment, his body envelops into the fire from head to toe. He suddenly transform into something unexpectedly. Azayo transform himself as flame flower after putting himself into the flaming corpse oil. Snow and rain was startled after seeing this. 
Azayo stood while showing himself turning into a powerful zombie that has flames like Ghost Rider. Snow and Rain was confused of Azayo can still transform while Violet was in silence. She was speechless after seeing this incredible transformation. Azayo was proudly stating that the sister haven't seen this before because of thinking too much of themselves that made them think they are invincible. Suddenly, she shouted Violet for still staying at their area even though they are buying some time for her to run away with Lanky. Suddenly she was casting her transformation from Zombie's gene that can make her a lot more powerful than before. Out of nowhere a voice talk out that wanting Violet to step back after being the spotlight last time. Unexpectedly Lanky raises her body even though she was heavily injured after being sliced up. Because of this, Azayo, Snow, and Rain was so startled seeing Lanky still alive after receiving a huge amount of damage than a normal human can't survive. Violet was fully transformed while Lanky standing on the top of a car. It turns out that Lanky also received the zombie's gene that can enhance their ability. Snow and Rain was speechless after wondering of what was this. While standing, she told Violet to let her experience this addictive genes of their great chief since this was her first time having this. Violet let her fight alone with zombie's gene and demanding her not to waste much time. Snow and Rain was confused of when Violet had this power and wondering if they are still humans. However, Ozio felt something familiar, but he thinks that this wasn't the same kind. On the other side, Lanky was waiting Ozio to attack and trying to tease him up. Because of this, Ozio got triggered and assuming that Lanky was probably bluffing around with her transformation. Suddenly a large explosion happened that Ozio made. After this he casted another skill to attack Lanky. He used flame flower that shoots a blast of flame towards her. Unexpectedly, she inhaled the flame flower without any hesitation. She manages to dispel the flame flower without any problem. Just a sudden, a speed of light kicks him without finishing his words. Lanky was so fast that manages to kick him up without him noticing. Azayo didn't expect this powerful kick that made him flew away. After Lanky made a powerful kick, Azayo flew away but he manages to take control of his momentum. Suddenly, their communication devices works but he ignored it because of wondering if a human can actually kick can exert. Their big sis told Azayo to respond immediately after hearing her out. But Azayo perceived to fight Lanky after realizing that she's a worthy opponent. Lanky stood up firmly after the encounter against Azayo. Meanwhile, inside the building there's someone got arrived. It was Zombie and the President. He immediately asked when was the communication restored but department head ignore his question and notify him that Violet and Lanky seem to have encountered some trouble. Along with this inquiry, department head asked him the president already arrived at their destination so Zombie already told him they arrived at their destination. Department head inquire him to check Violet and Lanky's situation since they felt something was happening at their situation so Zombie agreed to him that he is going to their location. Zombie and department head's call ended immediately afterwards. He then moved towards the location where Lanky and Violet was to check their situation after having some delay for their arrival. On the other side, Lanky stood up while holding her sword and waiting for Azayo to attack her. Earlier that day, Dawn was inside the tube where Zombie's DNA for experiment to improve her zombie state. When she got out, she immediately noticed Lanky also inside the room and confused of what is she doing. It turns out that Lanky was so desperate to get strong so she doesn't care about anything while holding the injection with the DNA of Zombie. She's so jealous of Violet for surpassing her even though they were same department head so she decided to get greedy since she doesn't want to allow things like this to happen. Dawn warned her that their research haven't completed yet, meaningly they don't know what could possibly occur to her body. But still Lanky was so obsessed with the power and got greedy so she still insisted to use the injection that has zombies DNA to improve herself in no time. So, that's how Lanky received her power to transform with zombies DNA like Violet and Dawn like the earlier episode. She looks so mad because she can't control Zombie's DNA. Violet told her to control her emotions since it was too dangerous for her to get in rage. On the other side, Azayo got in flame with excitement since he can't get this intense battle for a long time. Snow and Rain got startled of what they saw and how much powerful they are. All of a sudden, Lanky starts to build a flame from her mouth to start their fight again. Azayo keeps teasing her while his flame starts to get bigger and bigger. She blows a breath of fire toward Asayo even though we know that Asayo's body was built into fire. Asayo, Snow and Rain was confused at Lanky's action since Asayo had a body of fire then seems useless even though Lanky gave him a breath of fire. He got confused as this action seems doesn't have sense at all. While Asayo was busy to think what was Lanky's doing, she immediately jumps above him while he was off guard. She then punched her with a powerful force that made Asayo flew on the ground. Because of the force that Lanky landed at him, he got into deep hole while irking the pain that he received. 
Time to time, Lanky starts to get crazy as she felt an immerse power that made her feel so powerful, and having a great feeling with it. As Azayo stood up, she curses at her and asks her of what kind of human is she to acquire an immense power beyond him. Violet keeps telling her to control her emotion because if she continues to become like this, she will become irrational and completely crazy just like what Zombie said to her earlier. Rain got startled after hearing this. However, Lanky seems so absorbed by Zombie's DNA that turns her into a real crazy bloodless zombie. Snow and Rain keeps getting flabbergasted seeing Lanky being crazy. Lanky starts to walk crazier, and she wanted to eat Azayo after losing control on her own will. He began to panic as Lanky unable to control herself. Ironically he began to get mad as a human was going to devour him as zombie so he asked Lanky who the hell was the zombie between them. All of a sudden their captain starts to call him out again to about the mission immediately to avoid any unnecessary circumstance. It is because something extremely terrifying is heading towards him at the moment, and if he doesn't leave immediately, he will be sure a double dead zombie. Just a sudden zombie came up from above starts to landing from their area to stop the bad situation. As he landed, a large explosion pops up due to powerful force from his landing. Azayo still insists to continue their fight since there's still no determined winner on their fight. Suddenly someone caught him to stop his stupidity since their captain told them to abort the current situation. They immediately leave the place as soon as possible to avoid the encounter with Zombie. However, Lanky looks so determined to fight them and because of Zombie's DNA, she's unable to stop herself and began to be a maniac and merciless zombie. Even though Azayo got pulled away from the area, he still insists to fight since there's no determined winner, but he warned him that if he keeps insisting, he'll lose his life in no time. Out of nowhere, Lanky blows up a powerful blast from her mouth toward Azayo's location. Because of how powerful was her, she was unable to control this power and even Azayo and his comrade got confused of what she was doing. Lanky's blast a powerful blue flame all around the area that causes multiple damages in different buildings. Luckily, the guy that saves Azayo casted the transpose immediately to avoid the attack. Snow and Rain was still amazed of how powerful and unhuman power Lanky has. Because of how powerful her attack, both Rain and Snow flew away. They realize that they have no time to dodge so they lose his hope. It is because one of the building was going to land towards them. Violet warned them to take cover immediately since Lanky lost her control and she wasn't expected that the residual power was even stronger than she expected. Suddenly, the building then going down towards snow and rain got cut into half with an encircled force into it. It turns out that Zombie arrived at the area at exact time so he manages to save snow and rain from falling debris. Snow and rain can't actually believe of what just happened while looking at Zombie. Rain was so speechless while looking at Zombie. He was covering himself with a hoodie. But just a moment he looked at them to check their condition but this time, he was in human form. On the other side, Lanky was still out of control with her powers and starts to destroy everything that on her way. Zombie starts to glare at her with a cold emotion. Rain was confused of what he was doing so she watches him. Zombie starts to raise his hand towards her position and planning to aim something at her. Lanky's body keeps on throwing up an overwhelming power that she can't control. To meantime, she felt something while being an uncontrollable beast. Just as sudden, her mask suddenly got pierced into pieces. After breaking the mask, her power starts to decrease, meaning Lee zombie genes from her DNA starts to fall off. Rain and Snow was confused what just Zombie did after raising his hand at her. Violet immediately took action to check Lanky's condition after losing a grip of herself. Luckily, Lanky get back to herself unharmed after what Zombie did to her. Rain and Snow look back at Zombie and they were so shocked. They were startled as they Zombie turned back into his zombie form just as sudden. They were speechless and confused at the same time. Violet immediate runs toward Lanky to help her out while scolding her to control her emotion, but Lanky reasoned herself that she got too excited. Rain was confused after seeing a handsome man for a moment so she had no idea that Zombie could transform. Rain also agreed to her that she also saw a handsome guy earlier. They saw same guy at the moment so they agreed that it wasn't an illusion after all. They thought that it happened because they were single for too long. They still keep thinking who was the guy who saw them so they start to overthink of it. Zombie tries to approach them up to help them and report the situation after the incident. Zombie, Lanky and Violet immediately go through their vehicle to go back at the president's place and report the things that happened earlier. Suddenly Rain thought that they were already have grasped of the ancient civilization's technology after being so powerful that exceed their expectations. Both of them starts to report to their imperial that the opposite country's president was already arrived at the hotel. After taking the information, they decided to go back to their headquarters as soon as possible. 
However, Snow calls Sayo Jai to help her out to find out the role of the guy who's wearing the hoodie which she didn't know. It was Zombie. Sayo Jai immediately affirm her order so he goes for the research. Meanwhile, someone landed on a building. It was the Azayo and his comrade who saved him earlier from the fight against Lanky and Violet. Azayo was so mad for stopping him from his fight without a victory. But the other guy insisted that he save his life and if he didn't took action, he would have been killed. He told him that they already missed the best chance for an assassination because of this person because he felt in foreign aura means there are two powerful zombie bosses have already entered their territory. Azayo got confused about this one. Meanwhile at the airport, their plane was still at the airport. Unfortunately, zombies pet mistakenly identify as pets so they put into the cage at the airport. Lang was so eager to get out from the cage since he wasn't comfortable inside of it. Somehow, someone tries to stop him from getting wild. It was Lanky, she tries to calm him to avoid getting exposed by the country bee because if he did something wrong, Lanky will tell everything at Zombie which is Lang's boss. He suddenly remember the punishment from one of their comrade who got tied up for a month without getting a parole as a punishment of getting out of control. Lang immediately acts like a police dog as he got scared of getting in the same place of one of his comrade as Zombie's punishment. Even though how he felt embarrassed, he can't do anything than to follow Lanky's order that he had to act like a dog for their mission. Snow and Rain thinks that Sayo Sayo and Lang was in special dogs for them so they complimented them for being unique. Violet and Lanky felt awkward since they knew that Lang and Sayo Sayo wasn't really a dog from their country. Therefore, Snow and Rain felt the same vibes as they are looking at Lang and Sayo Sayo. If you are new to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe for Manva recaps and make sure to leave a comment if you want the next part. Violet and Snow extended their arms to notify them that the meetings of their officials are going to start after two days so they were expecting a pleasant cooperation with them. Snow felt relief after knowing Lanky and Violet was a good person for them so they decided not to expose their source of power after the incident they encounter earlier. Snow asks Rain about the professionals that she hire for their country for their other plan as she look at the time. She replied that she was expecting that the person was already arrived at their headquarters. Two days later, the meeting of the officials had began. The country A's president formally began his seven-day visitation meeting. The reporter also said that the president of country A was already arrived at their biggest mall of their country. Many people waiting for the country A's president, as he was going to inspect their business models. The president of finance group expecting him to sign their huge business contract with them so he tries to gossip at the president of country A. On the noon, they began to show their technology companies to make an inspectation for the president of country A. Lastly, at the afternoon, he was going to visit the Majesty Queen. Everyone taking a picture as they were admiring the president of country A so much since this even only happened once a year. In the evening, the president of country A will have a round table conference with the prime minister to discuss the official matters around their world. Time had passed, Violet and Zombie felt a relief after the conference and she felt gladly since the conference cooperated with their security measures or else. Something would give them a tiring trouble. On the other side, Snow and Rain was looking at the screen with a picture of Zombie while assuring that they really saw Zombie turned into a handsome guy from the incident earlier. Suddenly, the guy that they are waiting for came up as they demanded by the Prime Minister to cooperate with them. Rain was so glad as this guy came in. This guy was Kiwi, the department head of Country B which has an ability to extract someone's memory. He approaches them to ask whose memory is he going to extract to as part of his mission. They pointed out Zombie as they are going to primarily targeting him after being unique from the others. They felt that this guy is a huge threat for their country after the conference also they felt Zombie being too mysterious after having no intel on him, and he also among the important personalities from the country A. Even how much they investigate. They can't find a single information at him and they were suspected zombie as a part of the ancient civilization. Huey was confident since he already understood his mission so he pick up a capsule. He suddenly press its button while saying transform. Smoke pop up in on his position while Snow and Rain was waiting for him to show up. All of a sudden Kiwi transform into a president of country A. Their plan is to become a doppelganger of their president to gather some information about zombie and the others. Snow and Rain smirks as they thought their plan is too perfect. On the other side, Zombie and Violet was on the vending machine to buy some drinks. Violet gives Zombie a drink. Out of nowhere, Violet wonders about how long does Zombie live but like we said from the start, he doesn't even know since the zombie apocalypse happened. Violet tried to guess if Zombie probably alive for a thousand years. Because of frustration of thinking Zombie's age, she decided to ignore since this is pointless for her to think about Zombie's age so she leaves while Zombie said that he's going to sleep after all. 
However, Ashi and his comrade was spying them since they want to assure that Zombie wasn't really a human when they saw him for the first time. Behind Zombie, Ashi decided to peek Zombie while he was leaving. As Zombie leaving, something was about to happen. Ashi was startled as he saw something bizarre at Zombie. He felt king of the zombie's aura that made his whole body feels horrified as he saw an immense power hidden from Zombie. Because of this, Ashi didn't think twice and immediately grabbed his friend to leave the area as soon as he felt the killing intent of Zombie. While Zombie was moving towards to his room, his phone rang. It turns out that Violet calls him after being summoned by the president that made Zombie confuse of why Violet still not sleeping. It turns out that this person was Snow and she was impersonating Violet's voice and ordered Zombie to come at the room 6 minutes 14. Meanwhile, Lanky and Violet got summoned at the same room while Violet was confused of what was Lanky doing on that room. She mentioned that she was also called by the president after looking for them. Zombie also opening a door somewhere from the building. As he opened the door, he saw someone. Zombie doesn't know that this guy wasn't their actual president while the fake president was happy that their plan come through. Violet and Lanky starts to wonder about Zombie so they immediately call him out but unfortunately, they can't contact Zombie. It turns out that Rain acutely jammed their communication, and their goal was to find out the secrets to the origin of Lanky and Violet's power from Zombie. As they got inside the office, they saw the president on his chair. The president was busy playing Tetris on his gamepad while Lang and Zio Zio was inside the cage. Violet and Lanky immediately approached the president if he needed something as he called them out. The president said that he needed to take a pee that made both of them disappointed for calling them because of he needed to pee. Violet and Lanky had the same thought of disappointment after this. Therefore, they managed to get the president into the comfort room. Both of them having a thought getting inside to avoid the president from possible danger situation as he was alone. However, someone was inside the comfort room doing their business. It was Ashi and his friend. The guy was confused of Ashi suddenly run away after he was the one brought him here so Ashi replied that he just wanted to confirm something if there's any opportunity for the while his friend curious of the scary guy that he was talking about. All of a sudden, the president whistled while he was peeing, as they were busy doing their businesses. The president made a forbidden rule in a comfort room which is complimenting others' dick. Lanky and Violet's patience starts to worn off as the president took so long just to pee from the comfort room. All of a sudden, a large explosion from the building happened that made them shock. This was caused by Ashi and his friend while carrying the president outside the building to kidnap him. They were excited as they think that they hit the jackpot from taking the president. Both of them were so fast to escape the area as soon as possible to avoid encountering the bodyguards of the president. They are so joyful as they have the president without getting caught. Violet and Lanky somehow heard the noise so this time they are now decided to check the president. Lanky thought that the president probably doing something that causing such noise while they were peeking out. As they got inside, a shocking revelation that caught them off guard, they saw a huge hole that leading outside the building. They immediately panicked as they realized that the president got kidnapped by someone. Everyone got alerted as they are now going to lock down the whole country after the president got kidnapped. They are rushing before the media find out what was happening. They are trying to call Zombie but due to communication jam, they still can't manage to reach Zombie and also they had no idea where he is. Violet starts to get frustrated. As they began to panic, Lanky decided to transform to save the president but Violet stopped her because of what happened last time she transformed. She's concerned of Lanky being out of control again and since Zombie was gone, there's a possibility that no one can stop her rampage and might kill the president. Even herself, she doesn't want to lend on Zombie's genes since she can't guarantee the safety of people around her while being in rage state so they must find another way to save the president. However, Violet got some idea as she saw the cage. It turns out that she was going to use Sio Sio and Lang's ability to find Zombie and the president. Lanky was hesitating to do this but Violet was sure that they can use them. She tried to use a thing that belongs to the president to trace them out but Lang wants to let them out first. Lanky still had no idea of what kind of creature are them and also she doesn't believe that these monster can find the president. All of a sudden, someone grabs Lang's collar. Zio Zio pulls Lang's collar as he began to rampage. Violet and Lanky were startled as they saw Zio Zio's action. Zio Zio used Lang to destroy the wall from the building to escape. Violet and Lanky caught off guard so they tried to protect themselves from the smoke. Zio Zio was so hyped up after being freed from the cage so he charges himself to jump so fast. He prepared himself to lunge himself. Because of how aggressive Zio Zio, they assumed that he wanted to escape from them but it turns out that he was going to chase the kidnappers. Violet was startled of what just happened while Lanky got confused if this was less risky from her transformation. Ashi and his friend noticed that someone was approaching them in a fast speed. 
Lang warns Zio Zio that if he doesn't want to die, he must leave the man behind since he was concerned of Zio Zio's uncontrollable rampage. Ashi began to feel anxious as Zio Zio rushes toward them. He was so that the country was raising zombie bosses so he knew that he messed up. Therefore, they increased their speed to get back at the headquarters as soon as possible. Lang Ang Zio Zio running at full speed in order to chase Ashi. Violet and Lanky wanted to chase them as soon as they can since these monsters are running from full speed. As they were chasing them, they can't reach them as they were running too fast. The revelation gets intense as they reaching the headquarters at the ruins. Ashi and his comrade are almost close in the ruined city. Meanwhile, at the ruined city, the zombies was curious of the noise that coming towards them. Just a moment, Ashi and his friend finally arrived while carrying the body of the president. His comrades was curious of what is happening but they realized that Ashi was holding the president. Ashi immediately ordered them to make action since they were chased by the troublemakers. Just a second, Zio Zio and Lang are also arrived at the ruined city. Everyone got startled as an outsider came into their territory. They assumed that Zio Zio and Lang was in zombie boss of country while the other zombies are watching them. Lang warned them to hand over the president to avoid war since both of them knew what zombie can do if this thing happened. He sarcastically laugh at this since the humans didn't start a fight yet their race will start first so he is Lang if why did he choose to help humans. Lang differentiate themselves from them after not staying with the humans. Ashi observed the qualifications about the topic that they were talking. The leader of the ruined city have a dream for future survival of their zombie community without any help of humans. Lang laughs at him sarcastically. He remember the time where zombie walking from a ruined place after the war. He explained that his first half of his life was just like an ordinary beneficial bird. He was originally a little crow mix in with the community where they cleaned up corpses and garbage for humans. They even preyed on pests and reduced the risk of contagious diseases to humans. A long time ago, he hate humans not because of their prejudice but because of envy that made him to dream to become a human. He dreamed of having the same pair of feet like them. Also he wants to be like them who possessed by consciousness and wisdom and become a higher being. However, at the war between humans, he became a corpsey bird after being exterminated by humans. At the same day, he meets zombie after the war where he looks so unpleasant. He seeks someone surviving after the chaos from the earth happened. His lower body and the wing are all gone that seems he had a limited time to stay alive. Zombie picked him up and naming as Lang. He took his body while reminding him that hatred and destruction are not solutions in life. As zombie leave, he put him in his pocket to save his life. His stated that his life had facts proof since their plan had more significance than the people of Ruin City. Somehow, the leader of Ruin City had fully decided that they can't actually agree in one agreement. Just a moment, Lanky and Violet finally arrived while they saw Lang's body on a smoke. Azayo goes back to his flaming flower form while stating his will to fight for their dream. Smokes had spread through Lang's body while he was busy talking at them. Violet and Lanky were so shocked as they saw something about him. They saw Lang Beak had gone and changed into a humanly figure. It is because on the past, Zombie healed him. He also know that Lang wanted to become a human or some other kind of creature so he did his will. Unexpectedly, he turned into a human after all this time but he choose to be loyal on Zombie as he owe his life to him. The revelation of Lang's true identity left Violet and Lanky in shock, especially considering Lang had been disguising himself as a dog under Zombie's care for a considerable period. The others around them were equally dumbfounded. Unable to reconcile the image of a seemingly wingless zombie attempting to pass as a human. Lang, undeterred, stared at them, silently observing their reactions and listening to their disbelief. Azayo, however, couldn't tolerate Lang's display and, feeling irritated, took immediate action. He launched a powerful, concentrated fireball toward Lang, fueled by a determination to eliminate him. Lanky, realizing the danger, promptly warned Lang about Azayo's lethal capability and advised him to be cautious. As the fiery blast approached Lang, he stood unwavering, seemingly unfazed by the imminent danger. To everyone's surprise, Lang executed a swift spin, creating a cyclone that dissipated the oncoming flames. His unexpected agility and the ease with which he dispelled the attack left everyone astounded, further deepening the mystery surrounding Lang's true nature and abilities. Panic ensued as the wind pressure from Lang's dispelling of the fireball attack proved overwhelmingly strong. Faced with the unexpected display of power, everyone hurriedly evacuated the area, seeking refuge and hoping to locate their president. Despite the chaos, there was an underlying sense of trust in Lang's abilities to confront the menacing monsters. Azayo, undeterred by the previous encounter, swiftly closed in on Lang after being blasted away. Attempting to seize the advantage, Azayo launched himself at Lang, but the formidable zombie quickly gained a grip on his foot. 
In a counter move that left everyone in shock, Lang delivered a powerful blow to Asayo's abdomen, leaving an indelible impact. The magnitude of Lang's strength became increasingly apparent as he continued his relentless assault on Asayo. Buildings crumbled under the force of his attacks, and the citizens of ruined city found themselves tossed away, unable to withstand the sheer power unleashed by Lang. The once disguised zombie was now revealing his true strength, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. Azayo reverted to his original form, unable to withstand Lang's formidable attacks. While Agui found the unfolding events exaggerated, Lanky and Violet were left speechless, struggling to comprehend the extent of Lang's power. In response, Agui rallied everyone to charge and attack Lang with their full force. Agui, utilizing dagger art, initiated an assault on Lang. However, to everyone's astonishment, Lang stood stoically as the dagger art approached, his body proving harder than rock, impervious to penetration. Agui, recognizing the futility of his attack, used the dagger art as a distraction, leaping at Lang with a lunging strike. Despite Agui's efforts, Lang effortlessly dodged the attack. In a sudden turn of events, Lang unleashed a blast of force that sent Agui flying, leaving him disappointed and defeated. The sheer power displayed by Lang left everyone in awe, struggling to comprehend how a seemingly ordinary animal had concealed such incredible strength for so long. Meanwhile, Violet and Lanky successfully located the president within Ruined City, adding another layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative as they grappled with the realization that Lang was a force to be reckoned with. As Violet and Lanky raced to rescue the president, they encountered a formidable obstacle in the form of Ashi, who held the president in custody. Agui, determined to protect Ash, rallied everyone to thwart Lanky and Violet's attempts to take the president. The zombies from Ruined City joined the fray, leaping in to stop Violet and Lanky from reaching Ashi and the president. The chaotic scene unfolded as the zombies worked collectively to hinder their progress. On another front, Zayo Zayo, who had been standing on a pole, underwent a startling transformation. Wings sprouted from his back, and his hand morphed into a colossal appendage. In an unexpected turn of events, Zayo Zayo transformed into a monstrous zombie, expanding to cover the entirety of Ruin City. The enormity of this monstrosity shocked everyone present, revealing the true power of Zombie's pet. With Zayo Zayo now towering above Ruin City, he stepped forcefully on anyone attempting to impede Violet and Lank, becoming an unforeseen and formidable force in their path. The unexpected transformation heightened the intensity of the situation, leaving everyone stunned at the power unleashed by Zombie's once seemingly ordinary pet. Amidst the chaos, Agui found himself unable to comprehend the unfolding events. He began to suspect that both Zio Zio and Lang were ancient aberrant species, creatures of immense power from ancient times. If you are new to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe for Manvo recaps and make sure to leave a comment if you want the next part. Lanky and Violet, still confused by the sudden transformations, recalled that these creatures had lived in cages, not appearing to pose a threat, which led to their release. The unexpected transformations of Zio Zio and Lang, previously confined in cages, hinted at the existence of formidable powers held in check by Zombie. Ashi, witnessing the colossal form of Sayo Sayo, recognized him as one of the legendary level aberrant species. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Ashi decided to change allegiances, opting to aid everyone. In a strategic move, Ashi directed his friend to hold the president captive and activated a consciousness enhancement device, amplifying their strength. The sudden shift in dynamics added a layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative, as the once confined creatures now showcased their true potential, and alliances within the group began to shift in response to the escalating threat. Recognizing the overwhelming power possessed by Lang and Zio Zio, Agui understood that they were no match for these ancient creatures. In a desperate bid to level the playing field, they decided to enhance themselves, acknowledging that even with superior numbers, they were outmatched. As Lang and Zio Zio leaped into action, showcasing their immense power, the reality sank in for everyone present. It became evident that these creatures were not ordinary zombie bosses, but rather ancient and formidable entities. The acknowledgement of their true nature raised the stakes of the confrontation. Amidst the chaos, Ash's friend reached the headquarters and promptly notified their big sister of the troublemakers. Despite the anticipated threat, the big sister was already aware of the situation. Realizing the danger, Ashi's friend rushed back to Agui and Ashi to lend assistance, as they found themselves in a perilous situation against the powerful opponent. Ashi, aware of the impending danger, sprinted toward Agui to aid him in the face of the formidable adversary. The unfolding events hinted at an escalating conflict with the ancient aberrant species, and posed a significant challenge for the group. 
The responsible individual activated the enhancement consciousness, empowering every zombie in Ruin City. Algui and the other zombies began to feel the effects, experiencing a transformative improvement in their fighting capabilities. This unexpected enhancement caught Lang off guard, revealing that the zombies in Ruin City had been concealing their true potential by utilizing human technology. However, Zio Zio remained indifferent, loyal to zombie and unaffected by the advancements made by the Ruin City zombies. In a swift motion, Zio Zio swung his hand, unleashing a powerful force that sent every enhanced zombie in Ruin City flying causing widespread destruction throughout the city. Despite their enhanced capability, the zombies were no match for the might of Lang and Zio Zio. The shock was palpable among the inhabitants of Ruined City as they witnessed their enhanced zombie army being swiftly annihilated by a single strike from Lang and Zio Zio. The outcome of the confrontation underscored the overwhelming power possessed by the ancient aberrant species, leaving the once hopeful residents in dismay as they grappled with the harsh reality of their defeat. Despite Agui's attempt at a sneaky attack, Lang effortlessly countered it with his swift reflex. In a swift motion, Lang slammed Agui to the ground, leaving him incapacitated and coughing up blood. The formidable duo of Lang and Sayo Sayo showcased their overwhelming power, effortlessly annihilating the entire city without encountering any resistance. Ashi, having arrived on the scene, saw the devastation and quickly signaled his friend to initiate a new enhancement to empower him. As the enhancement process unfolded, Ashi lunged towards Zio Zio. However, Zio Zio, keenly aware of Asha's approach, noticed something unusual about him, a deviation from the normal effects of the enhancement process on zombies. The unfolding events hinted at a potential revelation or change in the dynamics of the situation as Asha, empowered by the new enhancement, confronted Zio Zio. The mysterious anomaly surrounding Asha's enhanced consciousness raised questions about the true nature of this confrontation and the potential consequences that lay ahead. A surprising revelation unfolded as Ashi transformed into an aberrant monster, mirroring the colossal form of Zio Zio. The two powerful creatures stood firm, ready to engage in a fierce battle, both representing their respective races in the modern world. Zio Zio, intrigued by the existence of another of his kind on Earth, momentarily let his guard down. However, Ashi took advantage of the opportunity and lunged at Zio Zio with brute force. The clash of colossal monsters began, each determined to assert their dominance. On the other side, Lang confronted Agui, who, despite his weakened state, persisted in fighting for the dignity and perspective of his kind. Agui questioned Lang's motives for choosing to help humanity over their shared race and species. Lang, focused on retrieving the human president, landed a powerful punch on Agui's face, expressing his singular goal of ensuring the continuation of their race. In the midst of the confrontation, Zio Zio and Ashi engaged in a fierce battle of their own. Ashi, exerting full force, attempted to halt Zio Zio's advance. In a moment of warning, Zio Zio conveyed the urgency of bringing back the president, implying dire consequences if they failed to do so promptly. The unfolding events presented a complex interplay of motives, alliance, and the imminent clash between colossal aberrant monsters, raising questions about the fate of both humanity and their extraordinary counterparts. As the battle between Zio Zio and Ashi intensified, Ashi initially thought he had managed to overpower Zio Zio. However, Zio Zio, undeterred, regained his composure and seized Ashi, choking him with a firm grip. Violet, witnessing the unfolding chaos, began to panic as she observed Zio Zio preparing something ominous. Much to the shock of everyone present, Zio Zio charged energy into his hand, akin to the iconic technique from Naruto, and unleashed a powerful racing and like force on Ashi. The formidable attack left Ashi incapacitated and bewildered, realizing that even with their enhancements, they were no match for these colossal monsters. Holding Ashi up like a helpless doll, Zio Zio demonstrated the vast difference in power between them. From a distance, Violet and Lanky could only watch in awe as the colossal monsters engaged in a brutal display of force. Amidst the turmoil, Ashi grappled with the realization that beings as powerful as Zio Zio and Lang had become prisoners of the human race seemingly serving them like loyal dogs. Zio Zio, finding amusement in Ash's confusion, questioned why he didn't simply destroy humanity. With a hint of nostalgia, Zio Zio began recounting the origin of his story, transporting the narrative to a desolate place on Earth. This time, he was a little zombie in the alien family, and the alien's race are not like the walking dead because they have their own consciousness and food but the only thing they didn't have was their own territory that they can live on peace. They scattered in different places, and they were even hiding. As the humans came and using their technology, these people destroyed their home. Zio Zio's home got destroyed by the humans' technology.
For the sake of the phrase those not of our kind must be exterminated. All their forebears died in the battle and not a single one survived. In order to protect Zio Zio, his parents decided to hide him beneath the ruins to let him escape from the hunting of the humans. The humans called them as monster but in their eyes, they had no idea of terminology of human. He even witnesses his parents being slaughtered that cause him to hate humans more than any creature so he seek for revenge but he also hate himself for his own cowardness and lack of strength to protect his race. He peek outside and saw a human technology reporting that the abnormal species have been cleared and not a single zombie-like alien species on Earth are now annihilated. But somehow, one of the human technology noticed that there's still one more left alive around him. That time, he thought that his life was going to end like that. But he got startled as someone attacked this human technology that wanted to kill him. As he see, he can't believe that this guy is one of his kind. And it was Zombie, his mighty savior that has the same race as him. Thank you for watching. If you like this story please comment next part. I hope you like our today's story. See you next time goodbye.